Better than me. So, hopefully we are live and we will see who yeah. is in the chat or who shows up for the chat. And uh, probably take a few yeah, minutes there's... here for people to pop in. There's that Yahoo with the, with the funny hat in the chat. Yeah, I don't know. He took the hat off in person, though. Here, <laughs> we, we got Gustavo joining us. Hello, guys. Hello, can hello. You yep, yeah, we can hear you. Good, you're good. <laughs> A drunk wedding photographer. I'm here early for once. Mm. <laughs> Mike Farwell, hello. We'll spend the first few minutes until we get a, as we say, not to not to talk like John Ishi. We're gonna until we get the body count up. We're gonna just uh, say hi to everybody. And speaking of John Ishi, John, oh, you're gonna be late. That's all right. Just pop in when you can. Ava, nice to see you. Jeff and Leslie made it. Jeff, Jeff, you're here on time. Holy cow! What you, what did you do, man? Your wife, did your wife, kick you in the in the behind or what? That's maybe, not normal. Maybe he fell out of bed or something. I think right? he's, he's he's just trying to screw with me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> he's Everyone's like, got a hobby. Yeah, yeah. Robert Daniels, how you doing? So this is uh, this is our seventh live stream which is uh, seven more than I planned on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Chuck is is progressing um, for those that are on. Um, so that's a good thing. And uh, Maribel, his wife, and Chuck will probably come on uh, at some point in time tonight for a little while. I David talked to her uh, today. I texted her and and talk to her a little bit. Oh, it's Leslie's birthday. Oh, okay. Now, you know, getting me out of her hair was her present. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Wayne. How are you? Morning, all. See, yeah, you're in that, you, you know, you and Roy are in that totally different interplanetary time zone here. We can't forget about John either. He's over there, too. Yep. <clears throat> Yep, everybody. Uh, hopefully, uh, Chuck and Maribel uh, will will come on tonight. She uh, implied to me that they would, so uh, I'm sure they'll pop up in a little bit. Terry Gardner, how you doing? So I I made up a little list of things that we could talk about tonight, and uh, mm -hmm. but I'm I I like to wait till we have 25, 30 people in here. Uh, we're getting there. We got 22, so we'll. We'll just use stall tactics here for a few more minutes, and um, and I appreciate every I appreciate all you guys on the panel that come on have been coming on every week to help out. It's a big help. Uh, it makes a big difference for me. It reduces my stress level drastically. As long as you guys don't get out of control, and then it can go the other way. <laughs> 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 And and if I'm real bad, my wife would probably come up. You see a cane like in the movies going around my neck and pull pull pull, exactly. me, off, pull me off screen, you know. <laughs> J Rod's here. That's great. It's good to see everybody. The gang. Uh, again, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know you you can't, as we all know, you can't take anything for granted. So. If we see each other every Saturday night, it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. You know. Getting out much better than the alternative. Yeah. But uh, John, yeah. David, John saying he loves your background as always. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got to try to like, you know what it would be cool is if you could have like a UFO that landed in the grass behind you. That would be kind of neat. And you could say uh, you borrowed it from the U.S. government because they keep talking like they they that they have one. I don't know. When that Borealis, did we? 
<laughs> well, what, what, what I can do is um, put a video in the background. Mm -hmm. And um, and I got to blame uh, Robert Silver and Jeffrey for for getting me going shooting video. <laughs> Robert Silver, he had his bit and he was going on about which which uh, road Mike to get. And uh, and so that <clears throat> I made the mistake of going on the, on Amazon and ordering it. And then after it uh, and um, Chuck is here. Then after yeah. it arrived, it, yeah, it, uh, I phoned up Jeffrey and he told me how to set up my cameras. And so I just don't know. But one of these days I'll get something worthwhile. But now I got to get editing software. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. That's that's fun, expensive, and irritating. Everything you don't want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Very different. Hello, Chuck. Hello, hello, everybody. Say hi to Chuck. It's great that you're here again to join us uh, for a while, anyway, until we bore you to death and you decide to go to sleep, while we uh, continue to bore the rest of the world for a few more hours after you leave us. <laughs> and he pulls out his hair after seeing what we've done to the channel. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to we're trying to keep your your name in good standing and not. Uh, and not cause too much damage, but you know, you know me. I I sometimes open mouth, insert foot, so uh, you never know, never know what I might say. The um, well, we're up to twenty five people, so um, I want to I want to thank somebody here. I got to look down my list here of things. I want to thank. I know he's not on here. Well, first off, I want to. Uh, apologize for those that live in the different time zones that were, you know, frequented Chuck's live stream on Wednesdays. And I just can't do two live streams with my, with my schedule, with my, with my own channel and other responsibilities. I mean, I, I don't mind doing Saturday nights, but I, I do feel bad that there's a part of Chuck's audience that, uh, is basically being ignored, and I, I feel bad about that. Now, Andy Miller was was nice enough to make some comments on the uh, live stream after the fact last week, um, which was great, and I and I did uh, comment back to him. So I encourage people, um, even that are on the show right now, is if you. If you think of something that you want to have discussed the following week or you have a question or you had a question that we may have inadvertently not picked up on because, you know, we weren't doing our due diligence looking at the chat like we should, I apologize. But feel free to leave a message, you know, in the, uh, the replay there uh, of the live stream and say, hey, you didn't answer my question, guys, or, you know, can you make sure you talk about it next week? And, and we will do our best to remedy that that problem. Nothing uh, with a Z or an F in it. <laughs> so I do thank uh, to Andy for leaving the comments. And uh, I am glad that there are some people uh, over in the UK or Germany that do uh, watch the stream after the fact uh, when they're awake. Um, I don't expect them to get up at three in the morning uh, time frame to uh, to watch us crazy people here. And um, you better speak for yourself, Jeff. Well, I'm, I, I I unfortunately have hung around with you guys long enough to know that I'm not the only crazy one. <laughs> but uh, the let's see. Um, a few, a few, a few notes and, and, you know, obviously, I mean, I don't consider this, uh, mm -hmm. this channel, a rumor channel and, and I don't think Chuck did either. I mean, you know, it'd bring up, you know, bring up some stuff that's popping up in the news, obviously to, to generate some conversation, which is nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I find it interesting that, you know, um, let's see, um, there were several people today that came out with ZF 
Nikon ZF videos, and of course they're referencing referencing all the information that's on Nikon Rumors. So it's like Nikon Rumors should should get a stipend from all these channels that take his information and create content on their channel because that's all that's going on right now. Because mm. um, uh, I'm trying to think, it wasn't the matter when the other the other Matt um, had a video today. And Mr. Wayne too. And and Mr. Wayne did did one as well. And Mr. So Wayne, so Mr. Wayne at least took the time to point some arrows and stuff at some of the buttons and try to be a little bit more uh, decisive uh, on his guesstimates anyway of what things were. So um, I did comment on his video as well. So Wayne, Wayne, thank you for doing what you did. Um, it's interesting because you go to Nikon Rumors. And here's here's a case in point. So they have a big big headline. Boom. Nikon Japan has confirmed the new 180 to 600 lens to ship on August 31st. But then you go down three inches down on the screen and it says B&H lists it with a 930 ship date. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know what, uh, you know, we should just get a, a betting contest going on here. Okay. Is it going to be 831? Is it going to be 930? Is it going to be uh, who knows? Right. So, Patience. Yeah, it, it's just you, you. Yeah, you get you get it when you get it. Hello, Maribel. I, I see you there typing in. Um, Actually, Jeffrey, what we should all do is get a bingo card, and we put all of these different. You can fill out your your spots as to what it is that you want in it, and and, and see who gets bingo first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whoever I, I guess we'd have to kind of come up with a prize, right? You know, whoever gets the closest, we'd have to we'd have to think of some kind of a prize. Um, Z Wade was Z Wade was on last night, and uh, and I, I couldn't stay on very long last night, but he had an he had an interesting uh, topic. Hello, Mirabel, nice to see you, and obviously nice to see Chuck. Um, and I'm glad Chuck's uh, having a chance here to say hi to everybody. That's what it's all about, my friend. Uh, we all miss you. We all wish that, that you were in the seat. I'd like to be in one of the smaller squares. That would be pref preferred, personally. Well, uh, you can move us around. <laughs> yeah, I could. I could like. I could screw with, with the screen pretty good and like just really, really mess everything up and <laughs> move everybody around and. Yeah. <laughs> The, po the power in my hands is incredible, I tell you. Now I know how Chuck feels. The power, just that power that you have. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm getting a big head, bigger than usual. Um, it looks bigger at the moment. It looks bigger at the moment, yeah. <laughs> I'm in the bigger square, yeah. <laughs> See, it makes no sense that, and that my egg-shaped head is in a square box. <laughs> Yeah. Should make uh, a competition here, like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> head bobbing. And just punch each other, punch ourselves. <laughs> exactly. you know? Um, you know, it's funny. I don't know if it did any of you guys watch Gray's uh, Gray's last live stream. Yes. And yes. what I what I thought was really oh, now now Roy, you're funny. I'm following you, man. You're on Gray's <laughs> one night, and you were on uh, Z Way the other night. And uh, Roy is making the rounds like a movie star, man. He's showing up on all the live streams. It was really funny. Multiple annoyances. Yeah. So, uh, but but what I thought was interesting, and it kind of goes contrary to what, you know, Nikon said, I don't know if I want to say a year ago or six months ago. At one time, at one point in time, they tried to, their their management or their marketing group or whatever tried to say that they were going to focus on high-end high end equipment that was going to be their main focus and then they don't and, but then grays makes a comment that nikon considers the z8 and is and the z30 a resounding success and they consider the z30 a main product in their lineup so okay here it is with their cheapest camera uh which is opposite of what they were saying is considered one of their uh, main product in their lineup, and of course, Gray's points out that they haven't sold too many Z30s, but apparently other places have. But um, that that was interesting that they look at 
they look at the Z30 as as one of their main selling points to their brand, which I thought was really, really interesting. They've been pushing the FC as well. A lot of FC sales here. So, so continuing here with the speculation, obviously there is a lot of leak specs, but with regard to um, announcement, do you think it will be next week or the following week? It should be imminent with all that leak leakage. Yeah, I think it would be by the end of the month. Okay. You know, by the end of the month, but you know that the, the, the and, and and it was funny because if if the rumor, I mean, we could go through some of some of the new specs that came out. I'm not going to go regurgitate all of them because anybody can go on Nikon Rumors and just read them all. But, but what was funny was I, I figured I'd throw this in as a kind of a joke, but it's it's let's see if I could find my information here. I buried it somewhere. The um, all right, give me a second. I got. A lot of notes here. Uh, da, da, da. I got a subject to talk about that you're going to be interested in, Gustavo. All right. Well, I had it in here, you know, that, that micro SDXC card that they're going to put in, you know, this second slot or what have you. I found out, and I didn't realize this, you know, when, I, when they talked about that, you're, you're doing one of these like, oh, no. And... Uh, but amazingly enough, they actually make a one terabyte card in that size, which is the largest one that they do. But they have a one terabyte card in that size. And, and B&H right now, or in the middle of the week, B&H had it on sale for 109 bucks. So wow. there's a bunch of people out there that are interested in the ZF, and you're going to want to get that small SDXC card. Buy it now. See if it's still on sale at B&H. Get the one terabyte one. You never got to worry about anything else ever again for that slot. And it's only $109. So uh, rush, out, rush out and get it. And I'm pretty yeah. sure it was SanDisk because I think they make most of those anyway. So um, it's a couple of two terabyte CFAs too. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's, that, it's, that was interesting. Great. Well, you know, in a way you think, Gee, uh, are they smarter than we think they are? Mm. <laughs> they fit it in, and you can still fit one terabyte of storage in there. But you know, I'm not sure how fast those cards read and write. But yeah. off the top of my head, but uh, uh, obviously, uh, Jeff, we, that means that the announcement of the C six uh, three and C seven three is going to be next year, correct? Which you predicted uh, many weeks ago, correct? Because it's, well, this is the last camera of this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's next year, although Grays or someone, I think, was saying they were – somebody made a comment they thought maybe they would announce one in October, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, it, you know, everybody who's anybody, I'm not going to count myself as that anybody, but, you know, uh, a lot of other people that are much more in the know of what's going on unless they changed their mind not too long ago, they were, they were all being very adamant that we wouldn't see anything until next year and assuming that it would be spring. Uh, exactly. But, you know, they may, Nikon is great at surprising us lately. So, you know, who knows, right? I mean, they could. Yeah, but, but then things make sense, correct? You, you're not going to, if you're going to bring new cameras at C6, Three E and six seven three, you you need to bring this one first because otherwise, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's so, my Z one. I want my Z one. Uh, maybe this year. Yeah, if you do this camera cold. now, if you do this camera now, it fills in your it fills in your dollars for the for the year. Exactly. You know? So like Chuck always said, filling up the lineup. Correct. Yep. Yep. But uh, but and also that means that if the announcement is made next week or the following week, correct? Which puts us in the, your end of September. That means that this camera will be coming to, you know, people's doors for those who want it mid mid October, correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I exactly. Think so that's the end of the year. They'll get it. They'll get it in the. They'll get it in the fall. I think. Exactly. Yeah. They'll get it in the fall, and and you know what? Whether whether I personally would buy the camera. See my my scenario, uh, you, you know, if I if I had, um, 
you know, I, I still at some point need a second body that I feel is good enough for doing the wildlife. Okay. Uh, now if I had those two bodies right now and I had the funds and I'm like, uh, the, uh, the only thing, and I guess I might as well bring up some of the other specs that got released earlier today. Um, some of which surprised me. Uh, it's, it's not looking, you know, all, all doom and gloom, like, oh, this is going to be a horrible camera. It's not looking like that, but the, my, like my, my, my That's personal, right, it's really nice. Yeah, it's my like, personal thing with it is the size of the sensor. That's what I don't care yeah. for. Uh, it's a 46. Yeah, if they did a 33 megapixel sensor and or something but 24.4 and it bsi is great good they're doing bsi but not 24.4 um that that i don't care for they got the xpeed 7 they're talking about xpeed 7 now lcd evf same as the z62 can do 10 bit video which is okay that was a necessity to do 10 bit that should not be a surprise now, what's what's not clear enough is they just say AF 270, 273 focus points comes with features from the Z8 and Z9 with 3D tracking. Okay, but does it have subject detect? Does it have, you know, does it detect cars? Does it detect people? Does it detect, you know, birds? It, you know, what's what's the limitations on the autofocus? They don't that's not enough information to make me sad or make me happy. Um some new autofocus feature that they don't know about, but supposedly there's some new feature. It looks like it's going to be built a lot better than the, I guess, the ZFC. Uh, my understanding is the bottom plate is plastic on the ZFC. It's not metal. I don't mm -hmm. know if nobody could verify that or not, but uh, they're saying uh, the ZF is going to be magnesium alloy body, which is, you know, which is good. Old school. Um, yeah. And, uh, and you're going to have mechanical shutter, electronic front curtain, and auto mode for the for your shutter, which is fine. And at, at that price point, you know, um, Ibis, um, I, I think it's going to be a halfway decent camera. My, for me personally, I just feel bad that um, that if you if you had a larger, higher resolution sensor. You could have satisfied the portrait guys, the wedding guys, and the landscape guys. And with the with the sensor in there now, you're not going to make the landscape guys very happy. And that pixel shift stuff. You know, you know what's funny? All all these all these quirky things, whether it be focus stack, you know, why do you have focus stacking? Okay, you have focus stacking uh, because Obviously, you have no depth of field with a macro lens, so you figure, let's do focus, stack, focus stacking. So you could freeze the bug so it won't move, and you could do focus stacking and get it all sharp. And then, uh, and then, then why do you even have um, the um, HDR? You have HDR because you don't have enough dynamic range in your sensors. So that's why you have HDR. So all all these little trick out trick out things that they're throwing in cameras is really to compensate for the lack of technology that's in the sensor itself. And I would like to see them focus more on addressing some of this stuff in the sensor rather than coming up with, with, with some of these features, which, which realistically, if, if it's a windy day or whatever, you can't use, you know, you could use, you know, you can't use a lot of those features if the conditions aren't right. So it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you have it. People get excited about it, but getting excited about it and then doing a real use type uh, of thing with it, then you, you're probably going to walk away disappointed more often than not. You know, not every time, but more often than not. So just 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 come out with a high, a, a, a great sensor with great dynamic range. I mean, you, you shouldn't have to get a medium format camera to get, you know, uh, was it 16 stops, I think, Roy, with a typical yeah. medium format? 16-bit, 16 16, bit, 16 stops. Yeah. So, come on. Time to, time to put it into a, into a, a camera body that, that most of us use, you know? I mean, uh, medium format is, is not for the faint of heart or the... Or, it's, uh, not, it's not easy either. It's, 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 
it's a longer yeah. workload. Yeah, and it's everything's more, it's so much ex, so much more expensive too. <laughs> With a lens, everything takes ten times as long. But. Uh, but I mean, I think they're going to sell enough of these cameras. I mean, and it looks like they are putting some good things in this camera. I think it's going to be built better than the ZFC. I think it's going to make a lot of, I mean, of, of the niche crowd, you know, it, it's not going to sell like a Z63 will when it comes out or a Z73 when it comes out. But I think it will it will give Nikon another, you know, jolt for, mm -hmm. the, for their uh, sales figures. That'll carry them through until they can announce the other two bodies, hopefully in early spring of next year. Um, so I don't think it was a bad move. I mean, don't put the other cameras out early if they're not ready. You know, just don't do it because, I mean, they, they, they had a few stumbles with the Z8, you know, which, uh, they, you know, they, they've been very good about addressing right away addressing it even though it might have only been a handful of instances and they just didn't pretend it wasn't happening they addressed it right away they pulled inventory off the shelves from the dealers to inspect the cameras and and uh, do what they needed to do and they're going to start uh, those cameras are now going to be getting back into stores this this coming week uh, where they've all been checked so basically if anybody anybody orders a z8 next week you don't have to worry about whether or not the two recalls have been done. No, they will have been either done or or checked to make sure that it's not a problem. So um, I think Nikon handled that situation better than, than most companies have done in the past, and they did it really, really quick. So while it's not it's something – better to be too cautious with these things and yeah, let them fly – you know, didn't make people happy, but you know, nobody wants to send their camera back. But it could have been a lot worse. Could have been a lot worse. Certainly, the flexibility that you can send it when you want to is a great. There is no time limit. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, what comments? Let's see what comments we have about it in the chat. So we're not ignoring the chat. Um, let's see. Randall says he has uh, he has two, I guess two of the uh, the small SD cards. Uh, he has no problem with 4K30 with those one terabyte cards. And um, Randall's in Texas. So you, you want you on uh, you on vacation, Randall? He drove a long time this time, hasn't he? Yeah. Maybe got lost. Yeah, took a, the GPS sent them the, on the wrong road. <laughs> I'm being mean, I know. I can't well, help it. You, you hear those steer, stories when the GPSs first came out. If somebody's mm -hmm. following it, like their life depended on it, they're following it. It says take a right hand turn to go over the bridge, and then they get there. There's no bridge, and they end up mm -hmm. in the water. <laughs> oh man. Is the T okay? Uh, Albert's saying he's looking forward to seeing the, th is the 35 millimeter f 1.2. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm actually interested in the uh, I'd rather that the 135, the, yeah, the 135 1.8. Yeah, that means that we still have two more announcements before yeah. the end of the year if yeah. they stick to the schedule, yeah. Yeah, and Jeff and Leslie are correct. Street photographers and hipsters will be the target for the ZF. And, and it'll be interesting to see because I think the only, right now, I think the only body they're talking about is an all-black body. So it'll be interesting to see how long it takes before they have a silver and black version. And then if they go the ZFC route and they get, well, they call and, they, and they <laughs> offer a different, they offer the, the different colored leatherette. Oh, sort don't of, do that. Uh yeah, I, I I hope they don't get too carried away with that. Uh, don't do it. Don't do Barbie pink, please, on a camera. We need get to buy one of those Barbie pink and send it to Chuck. The Barbie Barbie <laughs> pink, yeah, we'll we'll send the Barbie pink one to Chuck, and uh, he'll he'll hate us for life if we did that. <laughs> exactly. I'll make David ship it, so uh, so Chuck will blame David. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not in the country, so if I ship it, it'll take a long time. 
Yeah, yeah and, and he can't. He won't be able to find you in Canada either, Dave, because you you're around in your in your uh, you're on camping. He won't know where you're hiding, so you're safe. <laughs> Ho hopefully, away from the fires, David. Oh, <laughs> yeah, mm. it, it, it's get, getting to be really annoying. Like BC's back up the the 400 fires, and um, <clears throat> one of them. The, the towns is being evacuated right now. Has my uh, favorite winery in it? Is which, that uh, yellow knife? No, oh, well. it's in um, in uh, Kelowna. No, yeah, in Kelowna. And uh, but uh, and, and yet yellow knife, they they they've uh, evacuated ninety five percent of the of the city up there, and uh, they were. You know, there's one road out. Is uh, they they flew a lot of people out, and uh, they they flew that many people to Calgary that they, they filled up uh, our uh, emergency oh, no, there. shelters. Wow! So, so now they're sending them to Winnipeg. You know they're they're bypassing Saskatchewan. So I just so you, you guys know. aren't you haven't had any any letdown yet. Then it just keeps going and going and going. Well, yeah, and uh, I I heard that uh, that the amount of CO two that we're putting in the air this year from forest fires is twice what our industry puts in in a year. That's right. Yeah. I thought Canada was too green to burn. Well, I'm not going to ask you where you live, Roy, because I know. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. It's it's been way too dry, yeah. And uh, we've been and <clears throat> we've been importing these pests from from the east. Well, actually, I guess it's the west, and uh, they, they've been coming east and they've been getting into our coniferous trees and they've been killing them. And, and so all of a sudden, after a number of years, you get all of this prime firewood or trees to, that are dead and dry. And so, so that they burn. And it's uh, our people that have been fighting the forest fires are too efficient. And so what, what's, so we had all of these small fires that they've been putting out. And after the, if you don't have a fire for a hundred years or something like that, you get too much crap in, in the mm -hmm. forest floor. And when it burns, everything goes. Uh, and you have a lot of, uh, Beetle killed uh, on, oh. on the long pine, correct? Because I remember oh. yeah. it was terrible here in Colorado about f five years ago. Now, you, when you go to the mountains, it, you you don't see those brown trees. But I I, I know uh, people about Jasper and all they were complaining about so many dead trees, correct, in the forest. Yeah, it's uh, I noticed that more than ten years ago having large swaths and it's um and i've got some pictures that i took two years ago uh, <clears throat> of the, the national park halfway between banff and jasper and 50 percent of the trees were dead wow you know, and they're just waiting for a fire because that's the only thing that's going to solve the problem and uh, like in, in bc in the seven up until the 70s and 80s, they, they used to have crews that 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 uh, had all of oh. these fire breaks. <laughs> Oops, whatever. Oh, I lost them. I didn't notice. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the chat, and Mozman was trying to get in. He said he couldn't wait in the green room anymore. <laughs> he's, uh, well, he's packing and unpacking, and he's preparing for the hurricane to hit uh, California. That's yes, true. So he is. Uh, Sorry, uh, Maz. I, you know, I, I took my my head turned left, and I saw your comment in the private chat, and I just clicked on you to put you on when you disappeared. So uh, I apologize for that. Hopefully, you could come back later. I know he's he's in panic mode right now, trying to make sure all his uh, camera gear and everything is protected because he's in a low. He's at the like the bottom of the street, and if they get flooding. Oof. He's gonna have. He's gonna potentially have a big problem. So he's trying mm. to get all 
his stuff in safe containers and packed up so nothing gets ruined. So okay, your priorities, right? Uh, yeah. So the priority is the is we all wish you well, um, Maz man, Tim, and hope that uh, you don't you only get a brush from this storm and you don't get any flooding at all. Let's hope. Yeah, I, I, we were thinking about you for sure. I was thinking about you, Tim. That uh, uh, looking at the trajectory of the storm, uh, that uh, it, it looks that it's turning a little bit to the to the east, which is good for Los Angeles and San Diego. Right? Yeah, because I think he lives he, he lives uh, in Orange County, so he's below San Diego. But it's you know it's, he's he's still in that in that area of concern. So. Yeah. Um, and of course, when you're in the low, and when you're in a low ly lying area, you know where all the water is going to go. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I heard that they were already uh, turning people away from the national parks in the desert area, uh, uh, Palm Spring, and all that area. They're also trying to get people out of that area in the desert. That many inches of rain is not uh, a good thing. Well, I was talking to him on the phone this afternoon. Uh, my wife and I were talking to him, and uh, he was saying he went to, you know, Lowe's to get some, you know, tarps or whatever, you know, prepare. And he says everybody's in there like people in California have no clue what a hurricane is. is <laughs> so they're they're in there, you know, just buying normal stuff. They're They're not even in there buying anything to protect their homes or anything. They're just like, Probably, probably buying microwave ovens and ordering a washer and dryer or whatever. You know, they're just like life is normal. They don't even realize what what may happen there. And uh, I thought that you were about to tell me the opposite that they were panicking. Uh, <laughs> by the time they wake up, it's too late. You know, by the time you figure out you needed a bunch of tarps and some caulking or or whatever, you know, you're out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Sanjit says he got a haircut and a shave. No more gerbils nesting in his beard. <laughs> I, I thought beards were just to store food. Mm -hmm. So if you got yeah. hungry, you could pull out a candy bar and nobody sees you. Do Good it. for keeping you warm in winter, too. <laughs> you know, I said, I say you, you, you have dinner and you're eating bread and you get crumbs in there, you just save it for later. You know, just. <laughs> Oh man, so, so Sanjit, you're gonna have to come on. If you can't come on uh, this week, you have to come on uh, or or send an image of uh, what you look like uh, fully shaven because you're gonna confuse everybody in the audience. Nobody's gonna know who you are now. That, that's gonna be that'll be interesting. Um, the uh, last week, I, <coughs> excuse me, last week I talked about that TT Artisans hundred millimeter two to one macro lens. Mm. Uh, I went and I, I looked it up at B and H and boom, it was on back order already. It was sold mm. out, sold out. Cause it's under 400 bucks. I think I said it was like $389 or something. So Very I'm going to order one of them and try it out see what it's, see what it's like. And uh, speaking of B and H, when I was on their site, poking around, looking at where I shouldn't spend any money, Hmm. Um, on the 14th of this month, they is when Nikon started their um, super super it's super summer sales event time at Nikon. There we go. Uh, stock the shelves are fully stocked, and uh, you can place your order. But no, go on uh, the BNH website, or you can look at a list of stuff. Uh, Nikon Rumors, of course. We'll have posted information about this, and they'll list all the items and what the sale prices are, or just go to the Nikon USA website and look it up. But uh, it's everything from just camera bodies on their own or camera bodies with kit lenses or lenses on their own, and maybe you'll find something there that's a good enough deal to make you want to part uh, and open up your wallet or uh, melt your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, and, and talking about BNH, obviously they have that big event coming on on September, correct? So 
uh, I think it's the 50th anniversary of BNH. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they have a, a very impressive roster of people, including Jeff, uh, Mr. R. Wolf, and Frank Lanting. So I uh. registered. I register. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be in uh, in New York, but uh, last time they were broadcasting, so definitely uh, will be. Well, if they're going to be there. I'm going to register too because they're they're two of my my idols. Uh, I I I would I I would just love to meet them once in my lifetime. I, I would be thrilled to death. Yeah. Um, I mean, art is still. Uh, Fran, Franz does uh, mostly workshops from where he lives in Santa Cruz, California. Yeah, Santa, Santa Cruz, and he doesn't he doesn't do he doesn't appear that he does any you know travel to Africa or anything unless he does it on his own. But he doesn't like offer any of those kind of trips anymore. He he's just stays close to home and he does you know weekend weekend uh, type of workshops that type of thing. Whereas art art is still flying flying high and going everywhere. I mean, his, his schedule, when you look at his work, workshop schedule, you know, one, you know, one month he's in Alaska, the next month he's in, uh, you know, uh, Costa Rica, and then he's in Iceland, and he's he's like, and he goes to Alaska. He always does a, a bear uh, workshops for the bears when the salmon run comes through in Alaska. So he's always doing workshops at uh several times a year in Alaska as well. So he is, he's very active. Um, but, but both of those gentlemen are a plus plus, uh, people for sure. Not, not just great photographers. They're just really special people. If you've really read about them and have followed them, because they did it, they were both national geographic photographers for, for many, many, many years. So one, a cannon shooter, uh, Art Wolf and one yeah. an icon shooter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Franz Lanting. The Franz Lanting last year in the BNH uh, uh, event that was in California. Uh, his presentation were amazing. So he focusing a lot about conservation and using the photography for conservation. And of course, he lived in, in, in that area where the BNH event was last year around Monterrey. And, and and he participated, took a lot of people, uh, participated in some of the, uh, you know, well watching tours and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, art art was well. The, the interesting story about art is that he was into art. He was a painter. He exactly. wanted. To, he started out as a painter. He wanted to be a painter, and then and then as time went on, his vision. Uh, expanded into photography, and then that became his uh, niche. He found his his niche doing that, and uh, and he's not just wildlife. I mean, he oh, sure. he he single handedly has documented more indigenous tribes throughout the globe mm -hmm. than any human being. Yeah. I mean, he has taken images and visited tribes that that no longer exist you know, uh, during his career. I mean, so he, he has a lot of, uh, the guy's published, God, 50 books or more. I mean, mm -hmm. tons of books. Mm -hmm. And Franz has done a lot of books as well. But, uh, you know, art, you know, art just doesn't do nature. He likes to do um, uh, cultural uh, photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then he also does, um, trying to think that where he, he does he goes to one place where he's basically and i can't think of the word where oh he likes to he likes to find patterns in things that's right uh, whether it be color patterns in water or patterns in a tree line or he looks for patterns and he likes to photograph patterns and, and the pattern can be the stripe on a zebra stripes on a zebra or whatever and uh and david said he'll be back in five minutes and but he he basically covers a lot of ground. Yeah, uh, he covers an awful lot of ground. So I mean, if uh, wonder wonderful wonderful, uh, he he did a lot of stuff for Creative Live. I don't know if anybody's ever bought any Creative Live courses or um, gone there because you can 
Sometimes you could view some of the courses for free, and they're not overly expensive. Well, yeah, Art, I, I, Art has a handful of courses that you could purchase, and you know that it's basically in their server, and you just log in, and you it's in like your library, and any courses that you buy through them, you can watch it as many times as you want. And and I I bought every Art Art Wolf course that that he did um, with them. Yeah, and the, and the, the, the PBS specials that he did a few years back, I think those still worthwhile watching for inspiration. I think Jeff and Leslie, uh, Wildlife and Nature Photography mentioned that uh, uh, definitely art is a great inspiration to many of us that aspire to be nature photographers, correct? Yeah, and he, and he still has that... Um... He still has episodes on his on his uh, website. Exactly. So you you could go in and, and view some of those. Um, I actually bought like three uh, three CDs from you know one or two seasons of the episode that he had on television, and they're all phenomenal. I mean, it's just uh, oh man, what, what you know. <laughs> you know, I, I wish, uh, you know, I, I heap praise on both those gentlemen and, and I kick myself in the, in the head for not being uh, loaded with cash, as they say, because there was one year, it was probably, it had to be 10 years ago. Maybe it was more than 10 years ago. National, G National Geographic, you know, they have their adventures, you know, to, to um, the Galapagos Islands and stuff that they do. And they had a Galapagos Island tour that you could have gone on where Franz Lanting and Art Wolf and then another well-known photographer that wow. I think did editorial work and articles for either popular photography or modern photography. And um, why am I thinking George Lepp for some reason? Mm -hmm. But someone, But you had three major names in photography that you could have you could have had the privilege of meeting and shooting with. And, and if I had the money, man, I would have sold my right leg to be able to go, <laughs> to go. <laughs> It'll probably never, ever happen again, but, uh, because years have gone by now for everybody. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen those guys. You know, sometimes you encounter some of those. I, I met this guy, George Lapp. I, I met one time in, in one of the outings here in the Rockies and also, uh, Tom Mangelson. Who have galleries here in uh, in, yeah. in, uh, in Wyoming and Colorado? I, I actually photographed with him side by side in, in Yellowstone, so that was great. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm guessing here. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm guessing because it's been it's been a few years. Now, did was George? I something makes me think that George kind of specialized in do, in stitching photos together. That he did a lot of that kind of work, Is that probably true or not. Probably when, when I when I met him one time here in the Rocky Mountains Nature Photography Photography Club as well, he was on photographing snowflakes. That was the the whole presentation that he made was about photography of snowflakes. But but he's a nature photographer too, yeah. correct? And so because I think he had he had a I think in one of the magazines he had a pull out image you know where where you could you know <laughs> it's folded in the magazine and you could pull it out you know like like this big or whatever you know and exactly. look at it and i think he did a stitched a bunch of images of a monkey that was going across uh, a body of water and wow. it may it looked like it was walking on water mm -hmm. the way he captured it And it was, you know, it was like landing on little rocks that were just underneath the water. Mm -hmm. But the way he captured it, every motion, and he stitched it all together, and it was a phenomenal image. And I forget how many, how many megapixels that file was, but it was, like, absurd. But he, I think, liked to do a lot of that stuff. He would do, um, he would stitch verticals, too, not just not just horizontally he would stitch vertically he would do all sorts of stuff like that and it was like uh it would be cool i wouldn't mind trying that but i'd never be able to afford to print the work you know it would cost too <laughs> much money you know? <laughs> uh, but he was he, he's amazing too i mean there, there's just so many people that oh, you, no. you would just love to get in one room together 
I, I told you the, the, the one that I followed in the 80s and 70s, I don't think he's active anymore, is this guy, John Shaw. He is the kind yeah. of grandfather of all these kind of the pho nature photography of our times. Right? But, uh, but I tell you one thing, for this uh, special uh, B&H event on 6 and the 7, it's... Um, Fro is also invited. So, <laughs> so watch out when you register. Uh oh. So here, here's one of uh, Franz books. Wow. Yeah. Oh, this, if you're ever going to Africa, this is a wonderful book. This and that probably was only in film, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I, I do agree. I. I uh, the, those are the special guys. Yeah, they, yeah, they are. I mean, they're uh, they're actually they're actually one of the handful of people that have actually been able to make a living as photographers. <laughs> that you know that aren't doing fashion and uh, and uh, you know that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> they definitely deserving, correct, of all yeah. the accolades and uh, uh, so I have no problem uh, except that. Yes, they, they, it's a source of, like uh, Jeff was saying, a source of inspiration to many, correct? Oh, yeah. They're, uh, I could talk and all Joe night McNally's about been, Joe McNally's been quiet lately. You don't yeah. see Joe McNally much anymore. No, no. Well, He's you know, I, I think in one interview a while back, and it was a while back, six months ago, a year ago or whatever, he got it. Well, I mean, it might have even been when Vahagen and Chuck interviewed him. I think when Vahagen and Chuck interviewed him, I think he implied that he wanted to slow down and spend more time with his wife and his family. Uh, so maybe he's doing that, but uh, maybe he's finally gotten around to doing that. You talk to Steve? No. Um, uh, Joe McNally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Joe McNally. Um but you know he's uh, David's back with us. Hello, David. Um, <laughs> That's why he disappeared. Uh -oh. oh, Chuck, Chuck, don't look at the screen. Don't look at the, <laughs> don't look at David's screen. He's teasing you. <laughs> you might get a letter bomb, David. You hold that up too long. <laughs> well, he doesn't know. Well, not too sure if he. No, yeah, he doesn't know my address because yeah. it's, it's not in my signature block. <laughs> and hey, I wondered, uh, let's see. Let's, I'm just gonna let's look at the chat for a minute here. And see what see what we've missed. I'm trying to be more diligent. A lot of people talking about the ZF. I I think you know there are going to be people that want it, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think. There's a camera for everyone, and um, and I think it's important that Nikon covers all their bases because, you know, I mean, they did come out with the Z30 and everybody poo-pooed that, you know. But you know what? They can't afford to – you can't forget about people that are early in the game and learning and don't have a lot of money, and, you know, you could say that you want to – you know, sell the high end stuff where you're making the higher profit margins and all that, but you're you have to provide a path for those that don't have the money at this point in time in their life and get them into the brand where they like the brand. And then you know what? Down the road they as they as you know they get older or whatever, you know, they'll have the money to buy your high end stuff. So you you have to have a path for people from the beginning of the process. Uh Till the peak, to till you can get to the peak of the process. Uh, I don't think you should ignore anybody. And um, I like the the look of the pictures we saw. The yeah, last pictures. It looks a nice camera. Yeah, I, I think I think it will be. And and you know what? And if they made the build quality better, mm. then then I think that's important. Is if you know, if you're going to call it a retro cam camera, retro cam old cameras were built like a tank. Yes, right. We all know that. Any any of us that are old enough have had what what one would now call a retro camera knows that they were built like a tank, 
and they lasted a long, long year. They lasted decades and decades. They're still going. And they're still going. No, they will they will keep taking pictures long after your your mirrorless camera or your DSLR has died. <laughs> you know, so as much as everybody likes to pick on film cameras, let me tell you, they were built like built like tanks. Um the um I'm going to talk about a subject that Gustavo. Oh, show us. Wait, let me get Roy on the bigger screen here. Mm. Let me move you, Roy. Still works. Nicker Matt. Oh, that's that nice. No, what? Uh, Nick and F. Nick and F. I got the prism because there's less trouble with no electronics. Yeah. The electronics are the first thing to go in cameras. You know what? I looked. I looked at one of those uh, prisms because I got two Nikon Fs now. And I got one with a working FTN uh, viewfinder, and I got one with a non-working one. And I looked at just the prism. People are selling that prism for more money than you could buy the yeah. camera. Not many just, prisms work anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's two other ones. Yep. Yeah. The electronics and the prisms are the first thing to go. Yeah, but those, but the standard prism that that's not no battery, you know, no metering, which is this one, which is the one you showed first. That There's prism, no I saw people selling that prism for three hundred dollars. Wow! For that, prism. these are the ones they used to buy for twenty dollars. The prism because no one yeah. wanted them. Three hundred bucks. Three hundred bucks. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Not 300 bucks. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'd like to buy one of those, but not for 300 bucks. I'll, I'll give somebody 75, but I'm not going to pay 300 bucks. Um, it's, it's crazy what people are getting for stuff. Um, now, the F3 stuff, is more fun. What's that? The F3 is more fun. The F3's got more toys. Yeah. More gadgets. It's amazing how long they made the, uh, the the Nikon F though, because that came out in '59. No, uh, when did they stop making it? Was it late '70s? The F6 was 2006. The um, now uh, I know Gustavo likes this feature. He's been using it, and I've been fooling around with it a little bit too. Um, okay. And your man, when you're in manual focus now, you know you see that rectangular box, and you see the white bar going across, and it'll tell you how, what your distance is when you're the focused meters. on something, which is like kind of nice. Um, now, by default, it's set up for meters. You, there is a um, <laughs> you can change it to feet. I'm a feet guy. I'm not a meters guy. Not that I don't know how many feet in a meter. Three point two eight one. Yeah, th yeah. I just run <laughs> three point three. But anyway, that's not the point. I don't like meters. <laughs> yeah. So, but here's the thing that gets me. Okay, so now Gustavo, you've been fooling around with the auto capture. Okay, so now I finally read the PDF file mm -hmm. that you know, Icon USA had on how to use auto capture, yes. and it isn't like, uh, as I say, it isn't like the manual was so nice. I read it twice. <laughs> the manual was so complicated. I read it twice. I know the 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 multitude of options in auto capture are astounding. And my advice to any and I did attempt to use it. I did set up my camera uh, on an area. I had my camera on a tripod in my. Um, screen porch i opened up the door i focused on the back um part of my fence in the backyard where a bird typically would land mm -hmm. there in that area and unfortunately mm -hmm. after two plus hours of doing auto capture uh nothing decided to fly and land in the spot where mm -hmm. i set it up mm -hmm. but the my my advice to anybody and my advice to myself included in wanting to do the auto capture is because it triggers on either either uh, motion distance a defined distance or subject detection that start off by picking one because exactly. you can pick all three but start off by picking one exactly. and have your camera set up first before you actually go in auto capture 
if uh, let, let's say you're going to pick distance, so you're going to say, oh, I want everything within uh, anything between 10 meters and 13 meters for it to grab focus on and take a picture. Well, focus manually first to, 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 at the area that you want to make sure that you get a picture of. Like maybe it's an opening in a tree where birds are flying in and out like Gustavo did. So maybe that maybe that was 10 meters away. So set your set your distance between let's say nine meters and eleven meters, okay? And just do distance. <laughs> just do distance. See yeah. how it works. See if you like it. See if you don't like it. If you don't like it, then okay, add another add another scenario to it or change the scenario. And you gotta do a lot of experimenting because it is very time consuming to do. It's very frustrating to do, it's, but it's very powerful. It's Not very true. powerful. And Gustavo has gotten some good results. Like, was it Flickers, I think, that you took pictures of with it, was it? That, that, the, the Flickers of the Hummingbird, correct? Yeah, you did the Flickers coming out of the, out of, out of the tree, I believe, exactly. right? And uh, so those are the kind of those, – those are the places where you want to um, use it. Like if you were using the, the motion – uh, part of it, you can set the direction so of, of the motion. So you basically have um, eight choices. You have up and down, left and right, and diagonally, all the corners. So you could sit there, and some of their examples that they talk about is, let's say you're at a skiing event, uh, and the person goes around one flag, and then they take the corner, and they're going to be basically going from the right hand upper right hand corner of your frame to the lower left hand corner of your frame. You could set the motion so that you only pick up on a subject going in that direction. Somebody else comes at you straight. Somebody else walks in front of your camera left to right. Nothing's going to happen. It's only going to happen if they come diagonally in that direction. So there's so many options to choose from. You, you, if you have a full head of hair after reading the manual <laughs> twice, you get to look like this. Yeah. Sorry, but it, it is very, 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 very complicated. And you could watch Richie's video all you want. It's not. It is nowhere near uh, thorough enough to get you there. It's a. It's like it's like doing a taste test. But, you know, they only gave you a little, little piece and you're, you're really not sure if you like it or not. You know, it's. But but the advice that I can give is simpler is better. Okay. Start yeah. with motion. Then distance actually is rather tricky because, for instance, in some lenses, including Z lenses, you cannot program the shortest distance. Correct. So your shortest distance for the lens, let's say the 800, is right. six meter. Right. The actual dialing only start at 10 meters correct or or, or something i think it was 16, the, i think it's 16 meters for the 800 exactly it's the, so shortest, it's the shortest focusing distance that you can program exactly uh, when you're doing a distance setting it's and the manual meters. doesn't tell you anything of that no the, that is you and you should with a five with a non z lenses like the 500 pf as soon as you engage the auto capture it, the focus goes away, and then you have to manually focus, and then you can initiate it. There is a lot of experimentation, yeah. so so it's very powerful tool, correct? Very powerful. Yeah. I I actually Sanji that is here. Looking forward when Sanji can experiment with that too for his type of work, correct? Yeah. The the but oh, people that like Chuck bought a cross and all that kind of stuff, correct? Mm -hmm. But don't expect that you're going to go to the event and you're going to learn up to capture the day you go to the event. No, no. You you better practice before that. I'm, I hope. I'm 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 hoping I'm not lying when I say this. I am hoping that six months from now, I'm talking six months from now. I hope that I've been able to use it enough to do a very detailed video on how to use it. But I am not going to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to come out with a video next week how to use it. Uh, 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 uh. It may be six months from now. I have to I have to find the right place to use it. I got to experiment with all the different modes. I got to fool around with it. And here's a funny thing. I, I had the – and they don't tell you this anywhere in the manual either. I, I sat there, and I, I'm going through the menu. I go down to the auto capture mode. 
and I, I hit the, you know, the right arrow button and my screen went blank, just went dark. Nothing happened. No menu popped up. Nothing. Ooh. Okay. Absolutely nothing. I did it 10 times. It didn't matter if I got to it, hit the okay button, got to it, hit the right toggle button. It, the screen went blank. The only time it worked was when I decided to pull the rear screen away from the body of the camera, and oh. then like, then the menu came up. When oh. I had the screen flush against the back, okay, I could not get into the menu at all. They that don't tell you that. That doesn't happen to me. I can I can see it both with the viewfinder, and in my and, and I keep that screen flat. So yeah, it did not work for me. <laughs> some setting that you have there, correct? We know the camera complicated. Talking about auto capture, which I hope that because I, I I love to people to use it. I think there is a lot of potential yeah. for us in this community to use it in our different. Is that uh, I got an email from Steve Perry, a commercial email, not a personal email, saying yeah. that he's updated his C8 and C9 uh, book, which is PDF, correct? Yeah. And it would be free for those that bought that before. I know you, Jeff, you yeah. you have it, and I do. And he's going to have all the features from version four of the C9. So he yeah. may go a little bit more in detail as a wildlife photographer on the how to use auto capture. I hope, but yeah. but it's a, it's a it requires some practice. Again, I know David also have been trying, right? <laughs> what a bit. Yeah. Now 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 when you when you I know I wasn't even trying to do it in video mode. I was just trying to do it for taking a picture. Not yet. Did you, did you, what did you use for your autofocus choice? Did you use uh, full frame autofocus or did you use um, wide area large or 3D tracking? What did you use? So, so, so this is the other thing, correct? Remember that you can select which focus point you want to be active. That only work if you pick the full frame, correct? The one with the little squares at the end. If you choose any other, you cannot select the area. So I actually like the C1 or the C2 for whatever size I have program because those C1 and C2 area are the ones that are actually active. So you can go, you can, for instance, if you, if you have, and I can show you that, so you have a, a flower here, but I don't want the flower to move and trigger. So I take the hummingbird here. So I move my area to where I expect the hummingbird to be. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So my C1 is here, although I want because I don't want this flower to trigger the auto capture. So yeah. so so actually that that makes sense and makes it easy to work. But that's not in the manual. You have to experiment with it. Okay. Yeah. So so using the different, uh, uh, for instance, 3D tracking, which is the default now for me. You cannot use 3D tracking because th that now you have only the little square for that the 3D one tracking. Square. Yeah, exactly. So you, so C1, the C1 and C2, the 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 one that you can program the shapes, yeah. those are the ones that for motion detection, those are the ones that I use because I can exclude part of the screen where other things may happen. As I told yeah. you, windy day, a windy day is a bad day for up to capture. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's it's, once again, it's another one of these tools that works great. When the conditions are right, the conditions have to be right, or you don't even bother using it. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 even this morning, correct? I went out. It was a calm day, and, and I have a new plant that that was good for hummingbirds, and I, I went and put it on, and it, it, it was wonderful. But I have been experimenting quite a bit with it. Correct? Yeah, I, I think I think it's something that, and and I tell you, even though the manual. The manual is not inaccurate. It's just a lot of information. And and personally, I mean, I did technical writing. I had to write manuals on how to uh, equipment that I designed, how to how to operate it, how to work it. And I think that you know personally that the manual um, that they have for this, they should have had a lot more pictures in it, yeah. uh, actual pictures. Yeah. Uh, words words are nice, but you need to have some good pictures as well. And they didn't have a lot of pictures in it. And I didn't find anything that they said to be wrong. But 
you they needed to talk more about how to get your camera set up to begin with before you even go into the mode um you know what what you should be thinking about before you even go into auto capture and and they and they didn't talk about it a lot um it's you got to read that manual two or three times and you have to just experiment and just pick one pick one mode and experiment with that one mode until exactly. you feel comfortable with that one mode then yeah. switch to a different mode same thing and then when you know all three individually then you can start mixing and matching but the problem is the more the more scenarios you define if if any one part of that scenario isn't going on it won't work exactly so the more, like a, the more complicated you make it the more likely it is not to work for you exactly it's like a if if taming and programming correct if this and this and that no you you want to be satisfied one of those conditions in order to trigger but roy you made a comment here about uh, uh trap cap trap devices correct yeah, focus traps focus yeah. trap i think this is easier when you i mean once you study it then mm. you can see wow this is so powerful because not only that it it is with you correct it is all the time for those c c9 owners it is with but you only the z9's got it that's the problem most other people haven't got one exactly so yeah. but, well the thing is too if you you're not going to want to leave your z9 out at night where I'm you're not, not watching it whereas a a trap is cheap enough Oh, of course. Where, where, where you won't cry if something happens. You'll but, cry a little, but you won't cry as much if you're zero. But, but I tell you, I tell you one thing, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, I um, if some, if I have some activity in my backyard, correct, my backyard, yeah, and I and my regular crap tap cameras detected, let's say foxes or something like that, I'm going to be tempted to because I have been experimented. How to capture with flashes, correct? Right? So, so I may be tempted to leave it. Maybe I sleep in the in the in the in the front porch, but I may tempted to leave it for a, just to see what I can get, correct? Right? Because certainly it, it is. Um, I tell you that that carcass that I have, which is now gone completely, I I would have loved to have the auto capture. I was thinking about wow, with the auto capture, because you can remember you no longer have to do only. Long telephoto, you can do low angle, high angle, uh, yeah. you know, 80 millimeter, you know, 200 millimeter. It, it, it is amazing. So I just want to say hello to Mr. Pollard for popping in quick. Uh, him and I talked uh, or chatted a little bit uh, text wise earlier today. Um, so I appreciate him stopping by. And I know he's a very 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 busy guy We're i've got a picture for zach wow Coconut hey, that looks, you know what that looks like that looks like the creature and alien it doesn't in your yard one of those uh, you know coconut no, someone, uh, someone sent it to me it's not mine oh <laughs> but but it's a pet or somebody no it's just something that crawled up at the <laughs> crawled up onto their rubbish bin Oh man! So how far in line are you? Me? Oh, I don't get them here. That's up in Queensland. Oh, okay. okay. Look at the size of that thing. Jesus Christ! Oh man! They pull up trees and kill birds. And then I, eat them. I, I think I, I think if I visit Australia, I, I'd lose a lot of weight because I'd be running away from everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jeff, I can tell you that those things can open coconuts. Oh yeah, the, those yeah. are the coconut crabs, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, and that is crazy. If you ever try, if you ever tried to open up a coconut before, it's like oh, <laughs> you you're like ready to get out the chainsaw. Let's put it that <laughs> exactly. way. You know, you're like so they crawl up the they crawl up the tree while the birds are sleeping. Break their wing, they fall to the ground. They go down and eat them. Oh, sure, that's uh... very vicious. Wow. Yeah. Well, isn't isn't that the uh, what's the I'm trying to think where Amelia Earhart supposedly crash landed yeah, her plane? Didn't, eat, they, yeah. didn't they assume that she got they got eaten by those crabs? Yeah, they ate the bones and everything. Yeah. yeah. 
So, so, so they send it to you from Queensland? Mm. Wow. <laughs> I've got an auntie up there. Okay. So what are you doing with it? <laughs> I just sort of put it up for a Zach to <laughs> have a look at. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you need to do some cool setup there to, to do some special wildlife. <laughs> I've got enough wildlife. We had deers in the garden the other day. Never seen deers here. Okay. How'd they get here? They're in the wrong country. They're in the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the wrong side of the pond. Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Immigrants. Im immigrants. <laughs> From the old uh, country, Roy, probably. Yeah. Right? We never see deer here. Those probably are raw deer as well, like you have in England, correct? I don't know. Hmm. Um, the um, yeah. one of one of the reasons I I talked about the uh, being able to change your distance to from meters to feet yes. in manual focus, but here's the thing I wrote to um, oh my god what's his name thinking of another YouTuber and I can't think of it. Uh, Hudson Henry okay Hudson Henry so he did a thing on uh, they were using. Um, he was with another photographer doing a workshop in one of the national parks and they were using auto capture. And um, so I wrote to him and I said, well, I wrote, I wrote a blurb on his, on his uh, website, on his uh, YouTube channel. And then I went to retract it because I finally found it in the manual, like on page 35. Okay. You, you cannot change the distance the default distance settings when you're using distance in auto capture is also defaults to meters. You cannot change that to feet. Okay. You look further in the manual. You can't That's change. A good idea feet. to me. So so yeah. So it makes no sense. So if you want your if your manual focus is sent for feet, and then you go to use auto capture. And you can't use feet. I mean, that's ridiculous. So now you might as well just set set like it. itself for meters and make Roy happy. That's, that's something I'd do to people. <laughs> yeah, that's like a mind game, you know. So I wrote to him. I said, because I wrote, I says, can you change it to feet? And he said, I don't. And so I went to delete it. And he already answered. He says, no, I don't think you could change it to feet. He says, but you live in one of those countries, one of the only countries or the only country that doesn't have the metric system. So. I don't I think, think Nikon, Nikon does it too. Nikon's not going to change it for you unless well, everybody complains. But it is kind of unusual that you you let America me change. One it. other country does feet. That's about it. You, you let me change it in one it. menu. And you don't let me change it in another menu. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. So, so so I officially protest Nikon. I ah. want you to add the ability to change the distance settings in the auto capture menu, please. Wow. <laughs> So, so I'm so, not writing my letter thanking him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roy, Roy's going to contradict anything I say about that, and Nikon is going to listen to him before they listen to me. Well, <laughs> they never I listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> they never listen to me. I've been trying to get them to do Arca Swiss on their feet for their tri oh, for their geez. lenses for years. I don't know what that is. They, so all, they all should have done that. They all should have yeah. done that. Yes. The, but uh, but indeed, the, that, that's bizarre that you can change it for your regular view, you know, manual focus. Yeah. But you cannot change it in the app to capture. Uh, yeah. It, it for me it doesn't bother me because I used to work with both metric and mm -hmm. and imperial system. But uh, uh, but uh, I I can see it's an incongruence, correct? Yeah, it, it's 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 confusing. I don't know why you would do that. Either, either don't you have it one way or the other or both, but not <laughs> not different like that. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that's up to me that they didn't have chance to program that well. But well, I think the simple solution for Nikon is just forget about the imperial system. <laughs> yeah, hey, all you metric guys, you could go home now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it was funny when I hit David's leave and say I got it. David <laughs> left. The uh, when I was in school, they they were they were trying to introduce 
uh, I think it was in middle school. They were trying to introduce the metric system in, in the, in uh, middle school. <laughs> and uh, it didn't go over well. <laughs> and the next thing you know, it's like they, they tried to do it for like two years. And then all of a sudden nobody talked the re- all the rest of the years in school. Nobody talked about the metric system at all. <laughs> they just stayed with the Imperial system. And that was it. <laughs> but um the, the metric system has been legal in the states for longer than the imperial mm. system has, and it that is. is because of your war of independence. You, okay. The French was on your side, and you changed to the metric system to appease the French. Oh, and the imperial system that you use is not the same imperial system as they use in the UK. Your volume measurements are different. Hmm. So you're not imperial, and you're you're definitely and metric is legal in the states. We're, we're just, just special. adopted it. We're just special. Okay. <laughs> slow. I'm, I'm, I'm Roy. You may slow. know that, but the United Kingdom. When did they went into metric? That was in the fifties, or? Don't ask me. No, they're they're still imperial over there. Yeah, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're speed limit signs and a whole bunch of stuff. It is still imperial. They, 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 they're, they, they've got a bastardized system, the same as Canada. I, I, I think so because even Becky and Con, they talk about, hey, mm-hmm. no, now we are in metric system, also there, correct? And the, in, in, and we people well, talk they, about they go back and forth. So. We're lucky we're all metric here. <laughs> it, it's so much simpler when you're all metric. Yeah, just it's easier to calculate everything too. Yeah. Hey, you, know, you know what I'm going to do, Gustavo? All these metric guys, they, they need to be knocked down the size here. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm both because I have to be. But, uh, but, uh, but, but, but I think Roy and, and David, Australia and Canada, they went through the transition, correct? They went through what? A transition between imperial and metric. He is at one point. Yeah, it. Uh... At, at one time, with one of our prime ministers, he had a schedule, and okay. and he published it and saying on this date this was going to happen and and so on and so forth and and then uh, the government changed and and one of the first things that the new government said, well we're going they're waffling on the change, and this was when electronics was fairly expensive and he had the small grocery store, okay, he needed a new scale. The metric scale was more expensive than the imperial scale, but a combination scale, which would measure both, was even more expensive. Now, if the guy needed a new scale, what was he going to do? You know, because for a small grocery store, that is a major <laughs> purchase. You know, and uh, especially when the government starts to waffle. And you just <laughs> <definitely laughs> <good. want> <laughs> My dog's waking up, Gustavo. Yeah, I, I need to do doggy duties here. Come back in a second. No, it's all right. <laughs> My dog's eyes opened up when uh, when she heard the bark. You know, I'm looking down and she's she's sleeping, and all of a sudden the eyes go boop. <laughs> but uh, but but that's one way to uh, to to uh, to change the topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I was on uh, I kind of perused other people's channels which I know you know Chuck was much better at that than me and, and Chuck was usually on everybody's channel as well um, but uh, I went on you know Simon Simon's channel Ordinary Filmmaker and he uh, he commented that the we're going to talk canon for a second here believe it or not but we are a photography community, not just. Is that, is that Canon with two ends or one end? Canon, Canon. We're we're gonna we're gonna. Well, it sometimes they might want to shoot it in a Canon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he said that EO, EOS R5 Mark II. He's they're talking about it being 60 megapixels, with the ability to change file sizes to small, medium, and large for for those that don't want a huge file. And it made me think about the D850, because the D850, if I remember right, you could do that. You could change your mm-hmm. file size. Yep. And, and when, it supports TIFF. 
And, yeah, and they should do that on all these uh, high megapixel cameras just so, mm -hmm. you know, because you may buy a high megapixel camera and maybe you don't have the money at that time to buy a new computer or a new hard drive or whatever, and you still want to enjoy that new camera, it's nice to be able to scale it down a little bit, you know, and, and not everything needs to be 45 or 61 megapixels. Uh, so I think that would be, I wish they had that in, in the uh, Z9 and, mm. and, uh, I don't want 60. It, mega, I think anything over 50, yeah. I shoot too much at F11. So yeah. diffraction is a problem. Yeah. It, it's, it's just a, uh, a feature that's firmware only. It, it'd be nothing to do. I mean, put it back in. Put it back in the camera. Yeah, it, it's uh, just firmware. And maybe what uh, I think what's starting to happen is because of the, the smartphone manufacturers are spending so much money on the firmware for the cameras. They're getting so far ahead of what, mm. what the, the, the real it's camera is. And, and so that now Nikon and Canon and Sony have got to push it to, to catch up, and they got a lot of catching up to do. You know, because, a lot of research went into smartphones. Yeah, because we've got a better sensor, we've got better glass, we've got better everything except for firmware. You know? Yeah. Well, you, you got to remember though, a lot of the firmware in phones and stuff is is the kind of uh, the, the is 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 to change that. In some in some cases, is to change the image into something that's not a representation of what you took. <laughs> well, Nikon's never been big on software, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we, we got uh, that uh, <clears throat> crop ch chat or snap or whatever, snap, crop bridge. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in trouble again. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that's why I figured I would say it instead of you, Roy. But this is where I just go la 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 la. <laughs> you guys start calling it snap bridge, not crap bridge. Yeah, but but uh, I was cold. yeah I was using it today, and um, <laughs> once it starts, it's okay, you know, because uh, when I was when I was using my my Z8. It's because it doesn't have a built-in GPS. I mm. use SnapBridge. Yeah, and uh, and it works. And then I was uh, headed automatically um, downloading my pictures onto my phone mm. that I was taking, which is nice, you know. And then if I'm taking pictures to somebody that doesn't want their picture taken, I can always put it to the cloud, and and when there's explaining to me that they don't want their picture taken and whatever it, it's gone you know <laughs> and then i can delete it off my camera because i got a copy dave david's like a magician i, I don't see any image i don't where, what image what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The crap bridge, it's so slow and clumsy and it's getting better but it's still a pain yeah well, jeff, it, jeff and my buddy yeah, it, right here. We'll, one. Tether it. Uh, Canon, yeah. Canon Connect works a lot better than SnapBridge, at least when he tried SnapBridge on his D500. Well, you've got to try it on cool. your newer cameras. I, most of my Actually, with data, data, it's getting a little bit better. The thing is, you can't push that much data over Bluetooth or, or wireless. Exactly. It's always going to be a problem. I'm going to put up a reminder for those. We got, well, we got 32 people, which isn't bad, half bad. You guys are hanging in there with us tonight. And even though we're, we're I think we're having decent discussions tonight. But let me just throw this up because it will block half my face or half my body, which is okay. It'll, it'll block off the half of my body I don't want to show. Um, reminder, okay, photo. Our photo uh, event, first uh, Saturday of every month. So September 2nd is the day. You can send more than one photo. I should have probably rephrased re this. You, mm -hmm. you can send more than one if you wish to. Um, obviously, as I stated, you know, a dozen times, but for those that are new that might be visiting, uh, I don't have a phone connection where you can call in and talk about your image. So either... 
uh, write a full description of, of what you took and what your settings were and any story behind the image. And I can either uh, vocally share that information with everyone out there, or you can ask for a link to the show and you can come and be on the panel and talk about your image. Uh, or if you don't wish people to see your face because uh, your hair is in curlers or you just did a bad job trimming your mustache, then uh, you can just uh, turn off your video feed and just <laughs> show up on the screen as a blob with your initial in it or whatever, and you can talk about your image that way. But uh, so, you, you know, here we got, you know, a, a few weeks here. So start sending in the photos uh, no later than 12 p.m. Eastern time on September 1st, which is the Friday before the show. Anything after that time will be put into a separate bucket for the following month. Um, I'm not quite as nice as Chuck when it comes to taking images the same evening at the shows going on. Uh, I, I'm just not a nice guy. What can I say? <laughs> yes, you are. You know us for doing this for Chuck. <laughs> but anyway, please send the images in, and and as and I expect, you know, Chuck will will uh, be watching. And and uh, last time we had sixty three images. It was like nuts, sixty three images, and we made it through all of them. And I think we got through all of them by like midnight ish. I think nine o'clock to midnight. I think we went through sixty three images, but we tried to talk talk three minutes or less on each picture and it went okay. And, uh, and what I liked, I think what I liked the most about that first one that, that I personally, you know, did here was uh, we had at least two people that I know of that, have, that had never submitted a picture before anywhere. And they decided to share it on the show. And um, that was, that was fantastic. I hope those same people, uh, participate in next month's show and more. I want to see, I want to see more uh, female photographers uh, come on this show uh, and share their work. Um, I want to see um, some some John some photography that that maybe is extremely um, unique that most of us would either not see or not do. You know, it could be. You know, maybe it's uh, industrial photography or somebody has somebody uh, works in the construction business and gets some very interesting images of um, uh, a skyscraper, a new skyscraper being built or um, someone that's lucky enough to do um, to do projects in, in other countries and, and capture images of you know, the people that they work with in these other countries and projects that are being done in these other countries. Um, underwater photography. Hey, you know, Gustavo and I love the, uh, you know, the octopus shot. Um, it, we, we love the images that Scubarazzi, uh, Scubarazzi sent in, um, you know, and love to see more of that. I mean, uh, I know that underwater photography is, if you want to talk about a niche niche uh, photo uh, <laughs> profession, uh, that's about as niche as you get. But uh, you know, st send stuff in, man, and and we don't we don't judge your images. We talk about them. We share them. If you if you choose to get beat up, we are more than happy to do that. You can request a, a serious critique of your image if, if you want, and and we will haphazardly pretend we're serious and critique your image, but it's more about, it's just more about sharing because we're not here to scare anybody and turn anybody off from photography because we all have either boxes full of old pictures that are horrible that we haven't thrown away yet, or we got thousands of digital files that are horrible that we haven't deleted yet. So um, every time I'm out, I take a bad picture. Okay. I, I, I'm, I am not, walking on water where every image is perfect by any means. Uh, many more get tossed out and deleted than get saved, believe me. Um, so please participate. Uh, that's my, um, my email address. 
And let's, I will leave the email here below for a little while. And hopefully you will participate. Um, hey, other product news from different companies. Um, is Sony is going to announce on August 29th two new cameras. And I know Simon from Ordinary Filmy, Filmmaker, if they do a live type of thing, he's going to kind of like have a show probably talking about these cameras when as they're being announced. The uh, uh, Presumably an A7C2, which is rumored to be a 33-megapixel full-frame uh, Exmor R CMOS sensor, same, now same as the A7 IV. And some of the features of that camera is going to be Improved AF from the A7R5, 5-axis IBIS, 10 frames per second, 4K60 video, uh, s Cinetone as a log file, um, One only one card slot, 2.36 million dot EVF. They call it auto-framing AI like the ZVE1. And I guess what that is, if you take a – and I could, I could be – I'm trying to recollect what this was. I think it's something weird, like if you take a picture of a portrait and the person's not straight or crooked, it'll straighten them out, something like that. And I, I do not, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll up front say, I hate the fact that all these companies, I don't care what company it is, are using the term AI. A, it is not AI, exactly. okay? It, it is not this mysterious brain that is learning and making decisions and taking over your camera. It's only as smart as the programmer that wrote the program. That's all it is. It's not true artificial. That since the 80s. It's not AI, folks. So I wish the camera companies would start uh, stop using the term AI because They're it's... They're implying it's machine learning, which it isn't. It's not. That's right. So... <clears throat> Stop using the term and and because they're all doing it for marketing reasons only. They're exactly. doing it because they think it's going to get more people buying their stuff, and it and it irritates me because it's not AI. It's um, asinine intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're they're going to have lens breathing compensation in this camera. Say, and and it's interesting. And I'm not you know I guess it's hard to say I'm not picking on Sony, but. They'll say same LCD screen as the A7R4, not the fully articulating one of the A7R5, around $2,000. Uh, but then there was another source that said $2,400. Um, another camera they're going to come out with is an A7CR, 61 megapixel, same as the A7R5. Um, and once again, they're saying uses a Bion, Bions, B-I-O-N-Z, Bions, XR, and AI processing unit borrowed from the A7R5. I'm more Calling interested in that 70 to 200 lens I just brought out, one that does close-ups. You know, it's uh, – that. but, but the, the thing is, it's like um, Sony cranks out cameras like Mattel cranks out toys. And I'm not calling a Sony camera, like but but they're but they're just they're just Marketing. they're just stealing parts from different different mm -hmm. camera models and blending it together and coming out with a new model. And God knows how you decide what camera to buy. Not that you don't have choices. You got you got so many choices. It, it could take you eight months to figure out what camera you want to buy that they make. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I need ones out to replace it anyway. Yeah, I would rather have uh, I would rather have uh, six or seven quality cameras that that all appeal to different users than have so many that are so close to each other that you got to read the spec sheet to find out what what is different between this model and that model. That that would just drive me crazy. Not that they're not that they're functionally not good cameras, but I'm just saying it's like. They're not enough a camera company yet. They're getting yeah. better. It's yeah. like the Sony laptops. They used to make good laptops, and they just didn't. Exactly. Yeah, actually, uh, if we're talking about Sony laptops, I don't think Mozman's on here with us, but he was going through his stuff because he just moved, and he says, I found my old Sony laptop, you know, that looked like a, like a Mac, 
I don't know if it was a Sony Vio or something that was yeah, like right. silver. And he liked that. And he really liked that laptop. And he found it going through his boxes. And uh, yeah, and that was a decent laptop. And they don't make it anymore. I just stopped making them all of a sudden. Yeah. Very strange company. Yeah. Um, now, now this is one that Roy probably has done research on a little bit because he, he does have medium format cameras. Uh, Hasselblad just coming out with a with a X1D2 50C, 50 megapixel CMOS sensor, 16-bit color, 14 stops of dynamic range, medium format camera. Of course, it's not what some of us call medium format. It's the new definition Maybe of medium format. Mi mini medium. Should we call it mini me? The me me mini medium format? <laughs> yeah. Fuji, of course, there's large format, which it isn't. Yeah. But uh, but it's, it has the leaf shutter system, which is you know what Hasselblad is doing, uh, one two thousandth of a second sync. That makes two, a big difference. Um, yeah, and it's funny. You work in the studio, you need that. It's funny when you when you brag and you're in the, you got two point seven frames per second. <laughs> That's pretty fast for a medium format. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you're like <laughs> two point seven frames per second. Uh, Dual SD8 UHS two memory card slots, built-in Wi-Fi, USB 3.0 that you could charge the camera, you know, through the USB port. Um, uh, ISO 100 to 25,600. Um, the price with, if you buy it with the kit lens, the 45 millimeter f/4, which in in on a 35 millimeter camera is like a, a 36 millimeter 36 millimeter equivalent focal length. It's four thousand one hundred ninety-nine dollars, folks. So it's a bargain. Um, it's got a three point six inch, two point three six million dot touchscreen LCD, fixed LCD screen. You can't pull it out, rotate it, do nothing. It's just there. You gotta need it with medium format. Yeah, uh, it has their three FR raw format or JPEG files, but I and they have TIFF as well. Um. Has a 3,400 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. Uh, mechanical shutter, one two thousandth of a second to 4,080 seconds. Electronic shutter is one ten thousandth of a second mm -hmm. to 4,080 seconds. Has an interval re interval recording. 4.3 aspect ratio. No video. For everybody who hates video, here's your chance, guys. You could buy a camera that has no video. Go for it. Forty-one ninety-nine. Buy it now. Get on. Get on the list. <laughs> Operators are standing by. <laughs> um, has GPS and Wi-Fi, auto and manual focus, continuous and single autofocus modes. Doesn't need GPS. It's a, it should be a studio camera. Yep. ITTL flash. Um. You know, sounds like a decent camera, and the price, actually, with that lens, that price with that lens is not bad. Very good for a medium format. Yeah, yeah. And it has that, it has that uh, new, you know, newer design that they uh, look that they have in their bodies, too. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice looking camera. So I like thinking. having a removable back, though, so you can upgrade it easier. Now, would you buy the? Now, would you, would you buy the, the hundred megapixel version, the newer one that came out? Yeah, um, with more medium format, that's still fairly. That's probably about the limit of that smaller sensor. Yeah, you go to the bigger Hasselblads, and you can probably go more. But um, that size sensor, hundred megapixels, is a good size. It's about 50% bigger than a full frame. And that's 12 bit or 16 bit? Uh, yeah. What are you saying? He had to send a Z8 back because his computer and or editing software could not <laughs> handle the high burst modes. I did not want to change everything at this time. Yeah, Wayne is reminding us to monitor the chat. I think we've we've been monitoring it fairly well. Maybe not every second, but 
Jeff and Leslie, I will submit an image. Not 100% sure I can make the chat, though. Maybe camping. No, that's fine. Just just send it in. Um, Scott Egan. Hello, Scott. Thanks for uh, popping in. Appreciate it. And uh, Albert, let's see. Extremely high megapixel 30. Let me just put his comment up here on the screen. So, and, and I believe, uh, Jeff, that Joey is in the... In the green room. Joey's in the in the green room. Hi, Joey. Are you gonna wave to me? Okay, we'll let you in since you waved. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me. Hey guys, how y'all doing? We're doing all right. We're doing all right. We're we're trying to uh, satisfy the masses, which I don't know that we're succeeding at, but we're making an attempt anyway. But now we have uh, we nice. have uh, a good Canadian representation on the screen because you know i mean pretty soon you're gonna outnumber, <laughs> you're gonna outnumber us <laughs> oh we're sorry about that then eh? sorry oh, we've got strong beers sorry we've got such an open border oh i'm so sorry yeah when are you going to build uh the, the big wall on the north side you know so we want the wall to keep you guys out i don't blame you <laughs> I don't blame you. I think we're all looking for a way out. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you with the with the hundred, with like a month, at least a month of a, over a hundred degree temperatures where I live. Oh man, I can't deal with I mean, with the humidity. I can't deal with that. I you know, it. it can come up here because on a hot day the temperature gets up to thirty. Up to 30. <laughs> oh, Scorcher. Man. Oh, my wife, my bad. wife would not deal with that. Oh, that's too bad, you know. <laughs> Hundred degrees isn't too bad. It's a normal summer here. Yeah, yeah. Australia, it's like you can feel your skin peeling off. You're like, ooh, winter's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's good night, now. Chuck. Good well, night, guys. Sorry, I we... you guys at the end, but have a good night. You're taking off? No, no, Maribel and Chuck. No, no, no. I'm just saying good night to Maribel oh, and Chuck. Oh, okay. Off, Say goodbye so to Maribel and Chuck, time. everybody. I'm 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 looking backwards you, to see what we missed because Wayne's saying we're missing a lot of points that people were making in the chat. And I thought we were doing a fairly good job, but obviously not. Um, mm -hmm. if he has a different opinion. So I'm trying to go back and see what we may have missed. So I'm asking you guys to do the same and see if Tell we can to join the panel. Pick up on a few things, <laughs> but um, but I don't know. I'm looking through, and you know, we may have missed a few things. We're not going to necessarily hit every single thing that people type in here. We're not we're not that good. Um, but we can dream. We can dream. <laughs> we can dream, and we can always do better. I'm that will not argue that point. We can always do better. Um. Just like I always dream of a Z63, we can yeah. keep on dreaming. Yeah. yeah. Next uh, April. Okay. Next April. Yeah. So hold yeah. on there. Maybe. <laughs> I'm trying. It's hard. <laughs> well, I'll, t I'll tell you, it's tough if you want to. Uh, there's a lot of good deals on used equipment too, and and it's hard to. <sighs> People change cameras too often. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it used to be. Well, I shouldn't say what it used to be. All I can say is what it used to be for me. I mean, I mean, I tried to use a camera until, until basically it was it was well beyond obsolete, and I'd look for another one. But now that's not the case anymore. <laughs> I get a little too trigger happy. Uh, well, and, and, and we're going through this transition, correct? But I think this will settle. So that certainly, Jeff, the way you did it is probably the same. I will skip one generation, correct? So I yeah. went from D300 to D800, correct? D800 to D850. So I, that's what I suspect I will do here, correct? Well, I, I think the thing that's really interesting about the camera industry specifically right now is they're trying to match the consumerism that we have in the rest of the tech space. <laughs> exactly. So cell phones, computers, tablets, there's always something new every single season because there's a market for it, right? So Sony is obviously churning out cameras at the same rate because, I mean, they're not a camera first company. They're a 
tech first company. Uh -huh. So I, we see Canon obviously trying to keep up with that. And I don't think we're ever going to have that with Nikon. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. No, I agree. Right. I, I think it's a totally different type of business. Um, but that's just kind of what concerns me with the ZFC is, I mean, I, that's fine if they're taking an older uh, sensor from one of their uh, older cameras. But when they've got such a gap in the prosumer market for the Z63 folks and Z73 folks, you know, I, I think that's kind of where it's like, okay, no, you don't have the luxury of recycling sensors right now because yeah. you don't put out a new camera every single year. And that's okay. It's okay not to be that kind of company, but you have to recognize that and say, all right, we need to address these gaps in the market we have right now. Because in terms of pro grade, the Z9 and Z8 are top class and very well priced. So if they could come in with a Z63 offering, same sort of thing, 6K, doesn't need 8K, just 6K, open gate, full height of the sensor. A lot of people would be interested in that and keep it right around that like 2,000 to 2,500 sort of range. Yeah. I mean, like that's a compelling offer. Yeah. And there'd be a lot of folks that have a Z61 like myself that don't want to buy a Z62, then go to a Z63, right? Like the only reason I didn't do that is because for me to upgrade from my Z6, I need something that's got 6K capabilities. Otherwise, sure. I'm just sticking with my Z6. Yeah, you want to have, you want to have, uh, oversampled 6k you know 4k 120 capability 10 bit want to have yeah, you want to be future proof yeah you want you want it to be something that you can use uh three or two or three years down the road you're not wishing you didn't spend the money but, you know, but you joey i think that's the way they are going it's just that uh, that's what we were discussing before bringing the the cf after the c63 will not make sense so they are bringing the camera that makes sense for them to keep, you know, the consumers buying the camera. But I agree with you. I, I think just uh, a little bit of patience. But I think April, people like yourself are going to be very happy. Yeah, I, I think I think by the time we get to that point, you're going to have a, well, let's put it this way. Most people are going to be happy. You're going to have a relatively good lineup except some of the um, entry level, uh, the entry level full frame camera, uh, you know, the, the Z50 or whatever that, you know, they need to revise, they need to come out with a, a generation two on some of those cameras after they come out with a Z63 and a Z73. And then you always still have the elephant in the room of where's the pro level APS-C camera. So, and, and, uh, and Ray mentioned there, Ray Powell, the the video only camera, correct? Which Bahagan have been also talking about, it, correct? So, uh, well, video centric. The, the problem. The problem with a. I know Wayne would love to see a video centric camera from Nikon or a video camera from Nikon, but this. But the thing is. Um, Can they if, if they, if they have to create a whole new lineup of cine, cine lenses to support right. that, they, I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can do it right now. I mean, maybe when they complete that plant that they're building um, in Japan that I don't think is, is, you know, another year maybe before it's open or what have you. I mean, I, I think right this second, they, they would not be able to, all of a sudden create a whole new lineup of lenses to, to support. Can't see it happening. I think the Z lenses are pretty close to video anyway, sir. So yeah. They do the job. But it seems like, though, when people bring it up, they when people bring it up, they never – they mm -hmm. seem to sway towards, oh, well, those like those lenses aren't good enough, but they kind of are. <laughs> they are. I mean, uh, but no but focus it, breathing, no focus breathing. Correct. Yeah, they they imply that they're like they're they're like a tear down from say somebody else's cinema lens line, and and I well I don't know, I don't own that stuff, so I can't say one way or the other. But um, but but this has Joe I think, here, uh, Joe in your case, correct? You you are a C six. Oh, sorry, user. one more time, I, I didn't catch that. Sure. Would you would you prefer the Z63 or a video centric camera, given that you do so much video? Z63, hands down. Exactly. I mean, I, I am definitely a video guy, video first guy. But like, 
for my work, like I use my Z6 for photo and video, right? Like I have to have one camera that can kind of nail both. So like that's why I really see Nikon kind of having a good opportunity there is having a camera that just like like the Z8 really kills it for both functions and you're not compromising one for the other, right? So I think selling the camera that way and really like marketing its versatility would appeal to a lot of people that just want to have like a one camera system and maybe can only afford to have one camera exactly. system, right? Like for myself, when I'm out at events and I'm like for my job, I'm taking photos, I'm doing video, I'm coordinating volunteers, I might be speaking. Like there's a lot of like, it's not the only thing I'm doing, right? So having a camera that can kind of nail all of those things really well, I think that's really where Nikon should try to stay. Because I mean, if you look at the S5 2X, it's technically a video centric camera, but it does a really good job at stills as well, right? So you're not really compromising one for the other. So I think the Z6 III ultimately would be hopefully like the Z8, but just a bit more affordable, right? It doesn't have quite as many bells and whistles, probably no 8K, but it has a lot of that transferable um, value in terms of it just being good for both functions. Well, and, and I don't really quite understand why everybody's uh, so hung up on on the, on the video anyway. You got the Z9 that, that does in body 8K, right? Nobody else does that. Period. Nobody else does that Sony hybrid camera. Doesn't. And what? That's not good enough. Seriously, that's not good enough. I don't get it. You know, I mean, if you if you want, do you want Nikon to make a a rectangular bodied or square body camera like a red? Is that what you're looking? Is that what people are looking to get? Is like a, a red camera equivalent? I don't think Nikon's going to go that that direction. I really don't. I mean, maybe they'll shock the world and do it. I don't know, but I, I mean, if it, it, to me that because of the gaps that they still have and a few products that they still haven't come out with, if they were to do something like that, you're 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 looking. To me, you're looking three, four years down the road. You're not looking at anything soon, you know? I mean, I never say never, as they say. Never say never, but I well, don't I think it's... Really they're doing. competing in a space where they have no, where they have ha never had market saturation right. at all. And why would you do that now? I mean, Canon is well-established for having a cinema land right. line. Sony is too. Right. So to all of a sudden say, all right, we have nothing for the prosumer, but we're going to go after the box cameras. It, it just doesn't really, like from a marketing perspective, it just doesn't make any sense because no. there is no demand for it yet. No one's actively seeking this camera from a cinematography perspective. No. If, if you came out with it, you know, you're, it's not like, boom, you flip a switch and all of a sudden you're going to get 20% market share. It's not going to work that way. You know, everybody's already ingrained in those other systems. They've got too much money invested in those other systems. And it's a small market. Yeah. Right. Really like the number of people that actually go after video only cameras, it's filmmakers, indie guys, like there is a market for it, but you're not going to get a, 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 a large profit from that compared to going after the prosumer market. There's a lot more people in that space and it's an area where you have competed before. Right. And I think there is an opportunity for them to uh, address a gap in the market. I agree. Oh, here's a question. What are you guys making money with video? I don't make five cents. <laughs> <laughs> I, make very I do. Mine are only demonstrations of equipment. You know, I don't make any money with video. I don't make any money with images. I mean, I sell a few prints now and then here or there, nothing substantial. Uh, and, uh, and my video and any videos I do are, are basically for personal satisfaction and, and sharing what I like to do with others to try to get people motivated to do the same, get but, out but, there and do but, the same. But think about for the those that are professional, correct? Which is not you or me, yeah, for no. David, correct? The, the, Joe, you can talk about that, but the flexibility that you can provide your clients with video and stills, for me as a client, I, I think it would be great, correct? You have contract with somebody, a single person, and you get everything you need, correct? So, certainly you use Yeah, 100%. Well, and I mean, for me, when I'm out doing my consulting work exactly. just on the side, because like, obviously I've got my main marketing job, but I do a bit of freelance stuff, it's usually just me going, right? So like I bring my drone, exactly. I've just got my Z6 plethora of lenses. So, you know, running more than one camera or, or doing that, I'd have to have a B shooter, then it turns into something completely, I mean, something that would be great if I had the capacity, but like, it's a side hustle for me. Right. And, and I have made 
I do make money um, with my videography um, every now and then. It's not my main source of income by any means. But I mean, I, I think that like you were saying, Jeff, like to say like, oh, like, well, I'm not going to be paid for that. So it shouldn't be in the camera. It's like, no, like don't remove things from cameras. Put as much in it as you can and make it for as many people as you can. Don't niche down into anything because you're limiting your users and you're ultimately alienating part of the market. But why bother doing that? Give someone that could do everything that they need and you're going to have a really great sp space for yourself and your users are going to be very happy to buy into your ecosystem and to stay in it, right? Like I think the Z62 had some okay updates, but really like it, it didn't really have a lot. Yeah. Z63 to Z61 should be a huge jump. And there's going to be a lot of people that are getting ready to leave the ecosystem right now that might not if they release that camera in the next four to five months. I don't, I doubt they will, but if they do. Well, the, the, the Z62, unfortunately, the, the, the second generation, unfortunately, in, in a large part was to, I hate to word it this way, but I guess you could say, so gap so cor cor correct the errors that uh, exactly. that they that they missed out on putting in the original body, like two card slots that everybody got upset about about that they didn't have two card slots. But then it's funny that I talked about earlier tonight about two new Sony cameras that are coming out that have one card slot. So for all the complaining that everybody's had for years, all the blanky blank and moaning, if you know what I mean, about one card slot. Look at all these new cameras coming out with one card slot. Okay, I want to hear you complain about them. I want to hear you complain about their cameras that only have one card slot. Let's be fair. You had no problem complaining about Nikon when they had one card slot. All of a sudden, let me tell you, it's going to be nothing but crickets, as Chuck would say. Nothing but crickets. You're not going to hear anybody complain at all about another brand that only has one card slot. Funny how it works. Oh, CFE, I don't care. You know? Yeah, but I mean on this, on the two Sony bodies that are going to come out with one card mm -hmm. slot, you think anybody's going to complain about that? Oh, perfect cameras, man. Remember, everything's perfect. Nobody's yeah, the A7CR looks, or, uh, the CR looks – or the CR looks interesting. <laughs> you know? But, but, but Joey, for you, for instance, I think the combination that you have, a hybrid camera and a drum – Production wise, make more sense, correct? Because the the shots that you can get with a drum, you cannot get it any other way, correct? Unless you have all those what you call the hero shots, correct? You unless you have a very sophisticated, you know, claim system and all that kind of stuff, you cannot do that unless you have a drum, right? So, oh, hundred percent. Well, and that's to say, it might not be the highest quality shot with the drone, but it's just the fact you're getting that. And you're giving your client that perspective. And especially when you're able to navigate the legality. <laughs> hey, Roy's of it playing with a helicopter. Point. Wait a minute. I thought I saw a helicopter go by. It's not a helicopter? There. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's your Mini 3 Pro. That's awesome. But that's just it, right? Being able to also navigate that space for your client in a way that they feel comfortable hiring you for that. It's either they know nothing about drone policies and they're just like, yeah, go for it. Mm. Or it's the other way where they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm scared. It, being able to do that legally and do it in a way that they feel confident is another way for you to market yourself because not everyone does that well. Uh, Greg Corker uh, puts up, I'm going to put up Greg's comment here. Um, Xpeed 7 implementation in the ZF will be interesting preview into how upgraded autofocus characteristics and other processor impacted features translate to Nikon's less expensive cameras. Yeah, that that is very interesting that they are that they are choosing to put an X X Speed Seven processor presumably in a ZF because when it comes to the AF, they're only saying that well they said it will supposedly have three D tracking and some Z eight Z nine AF traits, but they don't get specific enough as to what those may be or to what pedigree those may be. So you wonder. Uh, what what feature or features in this camera drove them to use the Xpeed 7 or is it more a marketing thing where the Xpeed 6, you know, Xpeed 6 has kind of got uh, from a marketing standpoint beat up, especially when they put two of them in the Z6 II and everybody expected miracles and all these different 
imp massive improvements and changes by doing that, and it and it wasn't massive. Um, so maybe they just feel the the Xpeed Six has a leaves a bad taste in people's mouths, and they need to just start putting the Z7, uh, the uh, the uh, Xpeed Seven chip, and everything. I don't know. I don't know what the what the reasoning is, but you know if if from a marketing standpoint, people hear Z uh, Xpeed Six and they go yuck, then maybe they decided. Let's not give them something to say yuck about. Let's put the Speed Seven chip in. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it could be as simple. They just that. took the pile that was left and burnt them. They're like, all right, no more Z50 re-releases. Let's just yeah, put these yeah. in the bin. And I move think on. it's. I think it's. Excuse my language. I don't think I'm violating any YouTube thing. It's a ballsy move. That's what I have to say. It's a ballsy move. Move. I think. Uh. So now that I'll get banned. <laughs> Just to answer right, sorry, uh, Chuck, question. Sorry, Chuck. Uh, the show is, is will be off the air for the next six months due to my choice of words. Um, Cooley uh, Priestley was asking, do you think the uh, Z8 or Z9 can be a video-centric camera? Uh, I, I don't have experience using the camera physically in my hands, but just looking on paper at what it can do and some of the test footage I've seen of the analog stuff, 100%. It's a very versatile camera, and you could use it as a video first yeah. camera. You throw that bad boy on a gimbal, you're laughing. Like, you could do a lot with that, and it would be awesome. R Roy's got to go and fight a crocodile. He's like, I'm out of here. All right, kid. <laughs> um, I like that background. He's in the national park right now, and he's putting on a safari hat, and he's going hunting. Dan the nog. Um, <laughs> but it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what you just said, Joe. I mean, I, there absolutely you could you could make money with the video features in a Z8 and Z9 without any problem at all. Well, no. I, 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 and Joe, Joey, the 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 fact that they brought with the Z9 that special handle that you can connect it with a cable and put it in your you know in, in your tripod or your set up and, and have all the aperture controls, everything in that hand. Actually, that tells you that there was a purpose of making this a truly video, fully capable camera on both C9 and C8. Right? Oh, 100%. They, and I mean, they were intending it to be used for National Geographic level instances, right? Not just for photo, but for video too, like being exactly. able to go out as a nature photographer and get some, you know, planet earth oh look there's an amazing alligator like level of production quality with video so it's yeah i think yeah like you said gustavo you can make you can make good money running a z8 as your video camera 100 well, exactly wayne, wayne is saying that the i think i think he's saying this in uh, in response to me complaining that they only have one card slot and it's not a top level camera however according to if you want to believe rumors, and I'm not saying I always do, uh, the A the A7CR Simon thought the camera would be selling for around two and a half k, but on Sony rumors they're talking 3,400 US. So if they're actually going to sell that camera for 3,400 US and you have one card slot, I would just I would respectfully disagree that you should feel that a 3,400 dollar camera should only have one card slot. I, I would not agree with that at all. Two thousand dollar camera, uh, marginal, but even even Nikon's getting tricky with the ZF and putting in a a micro uh, <laughs> a micro card to have to technically have two card slots. Um, so uh, I don't know. I I, I think, uh, but like I said, everybody had no one had a problem beating up the Z6 original Z6 when it had one card slot. And what was that price when it came out? That was around maybe twenty five hundred, Joe, when it came out. Yeah, right around that point. Twenty five hundred yep. bucks. So, oh, and honestly, yeah. all right. The, the the whole card slot thing, like I've had my twenty five hundred or my not twenty five hundred, my Z six now for probably about three years. I have never had any issues with an SD with with um, CF Express card, not once. And even with these newer cameras that are coming out that are single card cameras, I mean it really comes down to the quality of the card you're putting in and the right speed of the camera being matched to that. 
as that technology improves, the need for a backup slot kind of becomes redundant, in my opinion. Well, I, I think the two card slots is for um, the, I, I I agree. I I've never I have yet to have you know an XQ, XQD card or an SD card or any of those fail. I, I don't. I'm not looking at the reason for two card slots um, because of poor quality uh, cards. I think I think if you're in in a business where um, Maybe that you need to get you need to get images out quick, but then you also want to have the ability to have a raw file for maybe selling larger prints that have been tweaked a little bit more uh, after the fact. But your client needs JPEGs right away. That's why you might want to need the two card slots because you want to do raw in one, you want to do JPEG in the other, or uh, you're a wedding photographer and you want to just have that redundancy uh, in case something were to fail uh, because you don't get a you don't get a do over when you're doing a wedding. You, you're not. I don't care if you tell the tell the client I've been shooting with these cards for five years. I never had one fail, uh, but I'm sorry. One failed today. I don't have your wedding pictures. Uh, you're not going to be a wedding photographer very long. So there's certain disciplines that I think uh, would have to have the two card slots. Uh, Jeff and Leslie have a good one. I see you're uh, getting ready to crash. Um, thanks for coming on. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. And um, yeah, uh, Jeff, he also points out the Canon R7 at 1500 has two slots. Yeah. You know? but, but you're right, Jeff. I mean, if, if you miss one day the Crocs, or the alligators, you can always go the next day, correct? Right. Yeah. They, no, no, they are not paying you to do that. Right? No. No. So no. what? I think most of the time for me is I have one slot be on the computer because I'm still selecting which one I want to keep, and the other one is in the camera. Uh, correct. That's I mean, correct. I'm using I'm using two slots because I dedicate slot two for video. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So I have one slot. One is strictly still. Slot two is strictly video. So when I get home, I could say, because sometimes I'll get home and I'll say, well, I'm getting ready to, to put something together. Um, but I have a lot of still images in the queue that, I, that I've gone through, but I didn't have a lot of video content. So maybe, okay, I had a good video day. So I want to just put that video card quick in and, and look at the videos and, and maybe use some of those for the next, next thing that I put together. You know what I'm saying? But I, I do like having the video and the, and the, photos on separate cards uh and and in doing that too you could save yourself some money because if you buy um i'm trying to think of the name of the company there you have some companies that make cards that are more than adequate for video but uh where you could save some money mm -hmm. um versus like i i bought two um what pro grade cobalt cards, the same exact size, like 325 gigabyte or whatever. So I had the same size card in both slots, but uh, you could just as easily go out and now maybe have one, one faster card for your photos when you're shooting 20 frames a second, if you're, if you shoot 20 frames per second, because you don't need that same read write speed for video. So you can buy the cheaper card for your slot two to do your video, and you can save yourself a little bit of money that way. And have so even with a higher capacity for the video, correct? Yeah, that's why you yeah you can get higher capacity, but they're slower, it, but and still do the job. You can get them a little bit cheaper, and um, so that's that's another reason why two card slots come handy because you can segregate the, well, you know what you're using them for. And that makes sense for the C9 being the professional camera, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think here's uh, Greg's just kind of supporting my opinion, and that's and believe me, folks, these are just opinions. I, I'm not mm -hmm. a I'm not a proud sponsor of Nikon Corporation or Sony or anybody else. I'm just I'm a talking head, you know. Uh, you could say uh, that I'm uh, 
that this is all fake news, if you want, whatever you want to call it. But it's an opinion. We all have an opinion. We're just sharing an opinion as a friendly group of people that enjoy the hobby. And my, my opinion or comments are not any better than your opinion or comments. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, Greg's saying it speeds six base camera non-starter for users comparing it to current Sony and Canon offerings. And I, and I would agree uh, with that. And uh, I, I think they have no choice but to put that new processor in in the majority, if not all, future uh, upgrades or releases of their cameras. What would so be if weird? Imagine to put out the Z 63 with three X speed six well, processors. Yeah, what if you well, what if you what if you put out one of them with two X speed X speed sevens in it? Wouldn't that be freaky? Uh, <laughs> who would God knows what that would do uh, at that point? Shortage. Yeah, chip shortage. Yeah. <laughs> Instantly, yeah, handing them out like Pringle chips. Oh man, you probably find that uh, two X Speed sixes is more expensive than one X Speed seven when you look at the price That's of cool. the of the card and the and the motherboard and everything else that goes with it. Yeah, sure. You know, Wayne makes good... any of you. Oh, sorry. sorry, no. I was just gonna say Wayne makes a good point. They had to cut some corners on the camera, not to make it an A7R5. However, in Sony fashion, it's all about making money off their cameras. And, and yeah, and they have a right to make money off their cameras. And, uh, and and like I said, it's just interesting. And it's not like Nikon isn't doing a similar thing, you know. You're you're, but they're taking their flagship and they're and they're pulling down stuff from their flagship into their lower level bodies, and. Um, but I think Sony, Sony, I think unfortunately, right, wrong, or indifferent, has a has maybe earned a reputation of not supporting their base with firmware upgrades, and it's, and the only time you get firmware upgrades is if you buy a new camera body, because every time you turn around, they're popping out a new camera body, and 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 that, that's the, and then now see that's the mentality of a company that is it has the mindset based on consumer electronics. OK, whether it be television sets, PlayStations, whatever, that's the mindset. That's their mindset, I think, because it revolves around their paradigm of consumer electronics, whereas Nikon and, and Canon are, are especially Nikon. Nikon's always been a, a photo company. OK, well. they were le they were a lens driven company in the beginning. They made lenses for Canon. They eventually came out with their own bodies. And, you know, therefore, you had the, the war between Canon and Nikon for decades and decades and decades. But Nikon's always had their feet in the photographic universe, like forever and ever, and ever. And I well, think I, Sony, I, I, Sony makes good stuff, but they have that mentality of a consumer electronics uh, company, yeah, and and that's why certainly for us that have been with Nikon for a long time, that kind of backward compatibility with all the other lenses have been so important. <clears throat> uh, it, uh, that that kept us being in the system, correct? And it's only until now that they create a little bit of a transition that is harder, correct? Like we, when we were from the screw lenses to the other type of lenses, but the backward compatibility have been a key piece of the Nikon system. As, as Roy. Yeah. Since the 1959, they've had the same mount until the Z mount. Exactly. Very little difference. Very nice to have. Yeah, when Dave David says when shooting video, you're only writing to one slot. If you if you put one card, if you only put one card in a two slot camera, you're going to be able to put video and photos on that same card, even though it's one slot. When you use when you have two slots, then you can you can tell the camera what slot if you want the slot two to be uh, video only or overflow uh, or or however you want to set it up for. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I prefer to – I just segregate my files. That's that's all I'm trying to do, which, you know, everybody's going to do it their own way, which there is no right or wrong way. It's just whatever way works for you. Yeah, um, so so, so the, now that we're speculating here, correct? So 
we expect two lenses, two S lenses, correct? Coming in the rest of the year yeah. after the after the 180 to 600 and the on the CF, correct? Two lenses at least. Do we expect two additional firmware firmware for the C8 and the C9? I, I suspect that we're going to get something. I wish they used the same firmware. Yeah. yeah. Um you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's it, right now, I think it, I'll just say I'm confused <laughs> with what their plan of attack is with the firmware. I don't know. There, there may be some features that they firmware wise that they would put in a Z9. Uh, well, like auto capture, for example, you know, uh, it, it's that's that's a that's a major battery drain uh, on that, and not that you could not put that feature in a Z8, but then you may have to use a power bank or a secondary power source because your your ENEL 15 isn't going to last a real long time. Uh, but I don't know if if that's a reason why that that feature hasn't propagated down into the Z8, or if they're trying to have some differentiation between more differentiation between the two because maybe I, I made a comment today uh the to ron pollard was texting me and and he sent me a video that somebody did and and i'm personally i'm personally a little bit tired of of people just saying oh the z8 is the same as the z9 no it's not. it's not it's not it's the same processor it's the same sensor okay it's the same color science okay but it's not the same camera Hmm. Doesn't have the grip, doesn't have the battery power, doesn't have two at two CFEB cards, doesn't have auto capture. Okay, so you, so you can look at the Z8 and say, okay, well the Z9 doesn't have, uh, you know, the the extra USB port uh, that's on the Z8, and it doesn't have and it doesn't have skin softening. I could care less about skin softening. You could do that in post. You could do that in your software. You don't have to have that built in your camera. Uh, you know, Love that second port, though. Yeah, so it's like to me, to me, when you can get if if you wanted to have the extra battery capacity in your Z8 and you buy the Z8 grip, now you're up now you're up to forty five hundred dollars. You could buy a refurb Z9 from Nikon mm. for forty five hundred dollars. So I would personally personally for me because i don't have an issue with the size and some people have a big issue with the size and the weight and that's fine uh obviously i have more of a problem with my own weight than i do with the weight of the camera so i don't have an issue with the weight of the camera so i mean when and if i could scrape up enough money i'll probably uh if i was going to do a serious trip where okay this is a once in a lifetime trip which i'm not doing right now but if i was I'd be darn sure I had another a Z8 or a refurb Z9, one or the other. But uh, uh, now maybe that will change if a Z63 or a Z73, if it has uh, very similar autofocus capabilities, where it will be good for wildlife, and I could save myself an extra thousand dollars, and maybe I'll think about one of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Malcolm Walker just joined us. Hello, Malcolm. Um, let's see. Let's see. Trunk wedding photography. Loves the, he says, speaking of weight, I'm in love with the weight of the D700. Just picked one up a week ago. Yeah. Greg also made oh, a David, I saw point. your message. Have a good night, David. Good night. Take care, Dave. Yeah. <clears throat> Have a good one. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, and keep up the great work, fellas. Yeah, we'll try. But, you know, we need you here to keep it going good, too. <laughs> yeah. um, Strength in numbers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, another comment here. Z9's heat dissipation is a valuable feature. That's true. Okay, mm -hmm. you, you, you can only do – you can't do the same video uh, that you can do um, – in a Z8 that you can do in a Z9 because you don't have the, the heat dissipation. So it's all, and you know, then you got more function buttons. You get a bigger body, you get more function buttons. You keep making the body smaller, you get less function buttons. And, and, and a guy, I forget. The guy, 
<laughs> yeah, guy, the, yeah, I love buttons. The, the guy who was made a comment, oh, I still think the ZH too heavy and too big. It's like, well, what, what planet are you on? on? Too big, too heavy? Too big on, a, on, a, on a Z8? On a Z8? Really? Eat your Wheaties, baby. Go eat your Wheaties. Have some, have some <laughs> spinach. Work for Popeye. Have some spinach. <laughs> you know, it ain't hard. You know? That's some spinach, man. Oh, man. Um, also, in some exciting news, guys, I, I it's okay if I plug something real quick, yeah, Jeff. Go right ahead. Awesome. I'm going to just plug it straight in. Oh, the fireworks keep going off. I'm on the weird beta software right now for um, Apple. And the, if you do like a thumbs up, it like does this. It, it's kind of creepy. Anyways, oh. now that everyone's wow. kind of creeped out by my screen. What happens if you do um, that? <laughs> I like to think. <laughs> oh, 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 oh it's kind of cool, actually. Oh, yeah, that's it's funny. Great. Anyways, um, so I've got a new product I'm working on. It's going to be my first ever digital product. I've never made anything ever. Um, I'm going to be making a street photography course. So I've got a photography friend that is based in South Korea, and we're going to be doing a split lesson series. It's going to be cityscape and architecture coming from me, and then street photography and um, getting up in people's grills and taking film photos. From him, so we're going to be launching that probably mid October, and also I will probably be giving a class on it at the camera store here in Calgary. So when that goes live, I will share that with everyone because it will be live casted as well. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And it's not it's not meant to be it's not meant to be a professional course. It's meant to be a motivational course to get you oh, out man. having fun, shooting, and giving you confidence. Because at the end of the day, our tagline is: you sit in the back and relax and watch all these dope street photographers. Why aren't you out doing it too? Because you could do it in your neighborhood. You could do it on your walk to work. And we welcome Timid to the chat. Hello, Timid. We haven't seen you in a while. I'm sure you've been uh, excruciatingly busy, if I had to imagine. Uh, you have been on the run and all over the place. Hi, Timid. Exactly. Yo, yo, you guys, younger guy, had to hustle, correct? Mm -hmm. And David is oh, telling okay. you that, correct? That's the only way for you guys to to progress in in this chosen career that you have. And so I'm trying to retire. Exactly. <laughs> no more time for yeah. you, Roy. But see, but see uh, Roy says he's retiring, but I think he's becoming a uh, a, a follower of every uh, YouTube channel, camera centric channel. Every time I sit down to edit a file or something, there's a there's a chat going on, so I join in. Yeah, I, every time I, I I skip by a chat, I look on the side and I see Roy. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just enjoying your X Speed Six processor right now, Roy. Mm. <laughs> It's so sharp. I like, I like the old Z6, so it's a it's got a nice look to the images. For sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, look how look how long uh the Chuck had his I think it was wasn't it the, the original Z6 that Chuck was using for his uh That's what this is speed, right? That's what I'm using now. Exactly. I was and, too uh, slow to get this plugged in. Yeah, the, th the thing just like the ever ever uh the ever ready uh, bunny there just kept going and going and going, right? He didn't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. I was out shooting with this old thing uh, last week. That was fun. It's my busted Canon power shot. The screen on the back, just look at, like, it was so hard to take photos with this, but I was determined. I don't know why I do this to myself, but it was fun. <laughs> I enjoy it, but you get in there with the, with the camera store. In Calgary, correct? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I will be doing it in conjunction with them. So, it's funny. The way it came up, I was chatting with them about wanting to be an ambassador for a different brand. We're still kind of going back and forth now because we were looking at Panasonic at one point, but then the Panasonic role got filled. So, we were chatting and they said, hey, could you do a, a class on street photography? I said, well, I'm working on this course I'm going to be selling on my website, you know, in mid-October. And they said, okay, we'll just do a class now. So it's actually gonna be really fun. We're going to have the guy that's in Seoul live cast in to the in-store class that I'll be giving. And then we'll live stream the whole thing on the camera stores, uh, YouTube channels. We haven't finalized the date yet, but uh, I've been dealing with, um, Oh, what's Evelyn, Evelyn Drake over at the camera store exactly. there. And she's, she's awesome. She's the one I did the Z seven review with uh, very exactly. easy to work with. Really collaborative. I, I'm, I'm maybe when the C six three shows up, 
you get a, you know, you get it fast. <laughs> Correct. I get a nice little uh, phone call. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Good to good to build some relationships. And they're like, they're like, Joe, Joe, Joe. We'll loan you one, Joe. Try it out. Let us yeah. know what you think. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think Nikon's gonna go for it because she was like, "Oh, maybe we can get Nikon to uh, be involved with the street photography thing." I said, "Hey, uh, that would be great, but I, I don't know if they want me because I'm not really the target audience, right? Like, I, I use old FX glass mounted on my C6. <laughs> like, I have the the most like un target audience camera of." what they're going at least what it seems like what they're going after so i mean well, Nikon, if you're watching this live cast i'm game but please please allow me to use a z8 for a week so i can speak confidently yeah. about its capabilities hey i i applaud you for doing it because in my opinion is is anyone who's willing to to give their time to uh to support photography in any way shape or form uh, it's an honorable thing because I'll tell you, there's, it's, uh, nothing makes me smile more than when I see like a, a 10 year old kid with an old camera around his neck, um, uh, taking pictures of birds and walking around with a bird book, you know, and identifying the bird and trying to get a picture of the bird or, or, or whatever, because I don't see a lot of 10 year olds walking around with cameras anymore, at least not where I live. I mean, maybe, uh, you maybe, maybe, uh, Teenagers, you know, teenagers are doing the uh, uh, the YouTube content or the uh, what's that? Hipsters with film cameras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Fuji uh, but, users. But I but I love seeing a a, a a younger kid with a camera in their hand and well, like Joe Stroud, like Joe. Uh, he uh, emailed me before the show to say that you know he's working tonight and that he might be able to stop in the chat, but. You know, his son has taken some – his son shares the, the pictures when we have the, the photo um, uh, yeah. photo share, and his son takes some great pictures. And right. and I think that's great that, that his son likes to do that and get involved with that. And anything that you could do to get people energized and, and want to maybe try something that they're nervous about doing, that's all good stuff, man. Uh, so good I, – I wish you the best of luck. I hope you have fun putting the course together and I'm sure it's going to work out really well for you and, and the people that go. Oh, I think thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Well, and actually, so it's funny, the only reason like this photog street photography course came together, wasn't really from the hustle size. It was just uh, this guy that he's a really close friend of mine that lives in Seoul. It's a way for us to have a project to work on together. Right. You know, and, and when he was saying, Oh, you should do it. I was like, man, like you're in one of the best street photography places in the world right now. I need you to take care of the the, the, the street aspect of it because uh, that's the other thing as well. It comes down to comfort. You should be taking photos of what you're comfortable of. So if you're not comfortable taking photos in the city you live in, you can just take pictures of buildings, right? It's about adjusting because I used to be a people photographer. That was my thing. But when I came back and got chased by enough homeless people that I, weren't, I wasn't even taking photos of, I, I said, you know what? I'm transitioning to cityscape. I am an urban cityscape guy and uh, no more people. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to ask you guys to keep the show going here for a minute. I got to let my dog out quick. Uh, she's all right. She's we'll talk about Pentax. She's, she's dancing around the carpet, and I don't want her to leave me a gift. So I will be back uh, in a minute. You guys keep the show going and check out what's going on in the chat. Mozman popped back in again. That's great. And uh, he's, he doesn't believe that Roy's retiring or that Chuck's moving. Yeah. I, <laughs> Pretty much retired. I'm doing ten percent what I did last year. This year I did ten percent of what I did last year. Oh, All right, that's gone. All right, now the party can start. Let's talk about things that'll like get this channel banned. I'm kidding. No. Um, <laughs> in the chat, why don't we? Go, let's get some questions that are non Nikon focused. Let, let's just talk about life. What's going on? What are some things you guys maybe have coming up that you're excited about? It doesn't have to be camera focused. It could be maybe a shoot you planned or maybe a trip. Let's 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 turn it around a bit. Oh, my shoots have been really boring lately. Really boring. Unexciting. Nothing new. I like something new that's different. I actually went 
the, actually next week I'm going to head that way to uh, photographing in uh, some high mountains here in Colorado and uh, about 13,000 feet looking for pikas and, and mountain goats. Find out I, 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 that the light at that are a high altitude behave a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Far more contrasting. The, the shadows are so sharp. So, which makes sense, correct? But you forget, correct? You don't go to the high mountains to photograph. Suddenly you're looking at your photos and say, oof, these are very contrasty. So I'm relearning some stuff, Joey, here. That's awesome. That sounds like a ton of fun. Yeah. It's, it's fun. The only thing is you have, working. you have to move slowly, correct? Certainly, because uh, not too much oxygen at that altitude. We don't have high mountains here, only little ones. Yeah. yeah the blue mountains. Yeah, they yeah. yeah, you get snow for 20 Probably minutes. Reason and the same reason. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I don't have any. I don't really have any like big shoots coming up. Like I'm, I'm just doing some of my own stuff. But I've actually been doing some like uh, collaborations with different ones. Like that whiskey one. That was just. Mm -hmm. I didn't get paid for that. Mm -hmm. I just did that for kicks, right? And I, I think that's the thing as well as. Obviously, if photography is your main source of income, it's different, right? Like if you're doing this for your work and like that's really what you're counting on for your living, you can't really necessarily afford to go out and do comp shoots. But if you have the time and you're bored, totally do that. Reach out to some brands to say, like, hey, I'm just wanting to do X, Y, and Z for my portfolio just for a good time. You can have the photos. Give me credit, right? Like that. That's something that a lot of businesses respond well to. And, they, and I mean, obviously, again, if you're a paid professional photographer and you don't have the time capacity to do that, then don't. But if for myself, like I work full time in marketing, the photography, video stuff, I do that at work. But all the stuff I do on my YouTube channel, all of those collaborations I've done, most of them have been just that collaborations just because I want to practice and I want to get out of the house and meet some new people. Right. So, you know, depending on where you're at, that's not necessarily a bad option to consider doing. And the drunk wedding photographer said, I'm still impressed how there's no people in your vlog videos. Thank you. I don't know if that's a good thing. There's no people I vlog. I don't know. I, I just kind of shoot them whenever I get time. Right. So it'll usually just be I'm walking to work or I just got home and I've got like an hour. Right. It's that that's usually why there's not a ton of people. Like most of my buddies here in Calgary aren't photographers. Um, so I think that's the other thing as well is when you're out shooting with people that are actually out to shoot too, you can validate slowing down and getting someone to hold your camera and do all that stuff. But when the majority of your friends maybe aren't those kinds of friends, they're like, oh my God, stop stopping. You're boring. And I'm like, no, there's a raccoon over there and I need a photo of him. He will be the thumbnail. They don't get it. <laughs> Hey, I heard you, Joe, say, let's get the party started now. I I, I, I turned off my mic and my video feed, and I heard you. <laughs> we brought the cat brought videos. You. And yeah. I don't see I don't see no balloons or nothing. You, you got you gotta have the you gotta do your thing there. Get the fireworks going again. <laughs> so so explain that, Joe, Joey. That's a new feature in the next uh in, in Apple uh and so you're you're connected you're connected with Google Chrome or with the with uh, Safari. I'm on a Chrome right now, so yeah, it's the new. Um, uh, let me see which version it is here. System settings about this Mac. Here we go. I can tell you what beta I'm on. Okay. It is the uh, Mac Sonoma. That's the uh, OS I'm on right now. So you can bait. They're doing beta testing right now for that and the uh, new iPad software. So like, I, I like trying out new stuff. So I did it and uh, it's been pretty good. I haven't had any issues with Final Cut. A couple of days there was an update they did that slowed things down a bit. But the um, it seems like whatever calls I'm on FaceTime, this, anything, it, it just picks it up. Like it'll just automatically do like a. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, it didn't work. Look, oh, yes, it did. the fact that it works with the uh, commercial with, uh, break. Google is amazing, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. The integration's really cool. Exactly. <laughs> what have you got in that, Jeff? Jungle juice. Lip Lipton diet green tea citrus. And I'll tell you something interesting about this. We're trying not to get too personal. I had a medical condition. Went to a doc. I went to a doctor. I had this pr uh, problem for 
say three years medical condition. And then I started drinking this and I drink probably two of these a day. It's high in X and antioxidants. Mm. The problem I had went away. Wow. I had an appointment with a doctor and because it takes six months to get an appointment with a doctor, I went anyway. I told them what products my, didn't work. I told them what my problem was, and I told them I'm here, and I don't have the problem anymore because I started drinking this tea, and he didn't believe me. And I says, "Look, the only thing I did different in the last X number of months is I started drinking this tea, and the problem went away." And he says, well, it does have high in, in antioxidants. Mm. But he says, I never heard of that before. He says, well, well, if you have it come back, you'll be priority. You just you could get right in. I'll make a note of it. You know, I go, OK. My health, my that particular health problem went away just from drinking this uh, tea. So oh, it was a I, good thing. I highly recommend it. Drink the tea, man. <laughs> and lots of coffee more. flavored. Oh, great for inflammation. It has different flavors. Yeah. Coffee? A bunch of different flavors. Coffee? <laughs> I don't know about coffee, no. <laughs> I tell you, I, I cannot, I, I, I can, I was never one that could drink coffee. Uh, I, I can't drink coffee. It just, it, it tastes bad to me. My, my wife drank it for many years, so we drank nothing but coffee and ate nothing but pizza. My, my wife drinks two cups a day and that's it. And, uh, I know, I know Chuck was a huge, obviously Chuck was a huge coffee drinker. I don't think he could drink coffee anymore. That must be bad. That's got to be dry. I have two cups a day. I just keep refilling it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have three, you have three cups in different locations in the house and you <laughs> exactly. keep filling them up. <laughs> uh, Roy, you know, when I was living in uh, South Korea, it's the most caffeinated place mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Like I never had a single bad cup of coffee while I was living there. And I one day went to the pharmacy just to get something. Yeah. And this Korean guy came up behind me and he was like, hey, can I get ahead of you? Gets ahead of me. And he gets this over-the-counter energy shot from the pharmacist. Ooh. It was like a, there was a pill, a pouch of vitamins, and then this weird juice. And I tried taking that. And I was like, man, I am awake. Like I was wired for eight hours. So I started doing that instead for, for a bit. And then I stopped because... Uh, my my head started had it was bad. Was it that four hour energy drink that they advertised? Way more powerful than that. It was like yeah, it was some it was some pharmaceutical oh. thing and like oh, wow. it had it had way less chemicals in like an energy drink, but it was basically like an, uh, a vitamin boost to your system that was like so intense that it would just yeah. give you intense amounts oh. of energy, and it, it was great. So I'm back to coffee now. It's the moral of the story. That'd be good to take that before you got to cut the lawn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be the patchiest lawn you get, ever. You get, if the, that lawn, was you get the lawn cut in uh, in a third the time. <laughs> yeah. Good business model. Anyways, guys, I got I got to run here on my end, but it was great seeing y'all. Hey, thanks for coming on and joining in. Hey, my pleasure. We'll, what we'll it's see all about. next week. That's what yeah. it's all about, man. Get hey, get uh, photo of the month uh, September second. Pick something to send in. I can find something now. Yeah. Well, I got lots of I'll weird to photograph. Stuff. I'll send in some of the ones from this camera. <laughs> Great hey, autofocus. We don't care what camera it came out of. <laughs> okay, I'll use a Sony. I'm kidding. All right, good night, guys. You can use a Sony. <laughs> I don't have a problem with using a Sony camera. You can use a good Sony. <laughs> have a good one, man. All right, sounds good, no, guys. No, just a job. Have a good night. Good seeing you. Thanks. Bye. 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 Um, I wonder if anybody in here does. Uh, anybody in the chat do real estate photography on the side? Curious. I've done it. It's not fun. Well, uh, since you've done it, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, one of the things that. Oh, okay. Let me. How do I word this? Let's say, especially down here, uh, you a lot of the houses have a lot of windows in them, a lot of windows. Uh, some of them use uh, plantation shutters, you know. Some of them they don't have anything on them; they're just 
A lot of natural light. He's on a tripod with two. A lot, a lot of natural light coming into the house. But, you know, to me. You take two shots of every frame. Yeah. Do you now, do you use fill in flash? How do you make sure that you capture the real color of the wall paint? Because Ooh. some people get real hung up on wall paint. They see a, a lot of these real estate photography shots. The wall mm -hmm. paint color in the images is not what that wall paint looks like when the people come in and look at the house and they go, that's oh, usually colored color. by the lighting. So, so what if you're using flash, it's usually okay. Yeah. You got a lot of flash. flash. And I use a tripod as well because you expose for the windows and then on the same, take the same frame again, expose for the room. Nice wide lens. So it looks big. Yeah. Good flash. I think it's somebody from the community at one point, Jeff. I remember was mentioning, I don't know who it was, it was Ron or somebody that do this professionally, that he still carry like a bag of incandescent bulbs because when he's doing certain type of you know they, they, oh, yeah. they, they, <laughs> no well not 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 for that, it's just to have like accent lights that look yeah. warm. Correct. So he, he carry an old bag of incandescent bulb because everybody has LED bulbs nowadays, correct? And then he will change it so that it looks nicer the environment where the, he was photographing. But uh, so somebody here in the community mentioned that, so which, which for me was amusing, correct? Yeah. Considering. Well, I'm just wondering, like if you if you had if you had the ability if a, if the place had shutters in it, and you had the the ability to lower the ambient light coming into the house would you just do that and shoot flash and be good or would you say no people are going to want to see that there's a lot of light that comes into the house and leave them open well, and then if the lights are critical you take three shots one's just for the just to just to blend in the lights and you just stack the three images you got the lighting which has to show up then you blend that with the natural light then you have to blend the windows because they're going to always be blown out. Yeah. yeah. And Roy, I know you were there on Seaway yesterday. I actually catch the rerun later I've on. I've forgotten but, already. Yeah. One of the things that I asked uh, him and uh, suggest is that I was surprised that there was no discussion about TTL versus manual flash, correct? TTL worth of versus manual what? flash. Yes, they, they, yeah. they didn't get into that no. discussion, correct? No, uh, TTL is good for starting, but um, if you're using more than one flash, you, TTL doesn't work. It, it's just too messy. Mm. You have to start. You have to expose each flash to where you want it to be. You can't just leave it all to TTL. It just ah. goes everywhere. Jonathan saying, uh, John Ishi, you'd carry exactly. the light. Exactly. Exactly. The, the, exactly. It was John when he did some photography for hotels, correct? That he mentioned that he was doing some photography. It was John indeed. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, they're always. I'm always getting uh, indeed notifications of real estate photography jobs that you know that that pay okay. They're not great. They're okay. I'm not the word for the job. Uh, but the thing is, down here. Everybody wants to ever, you know, it's for whatever reason, even if their house isn't on the water, uh, a lot of a lot of the uh, realtors will say, oh, well, we want drone shots. We, we want the, the high level shot uh, of, of the back of the house, you know, what do you think this is for <laughs> show the big yard. Yeah. But I mean, I, you know, down here, you're, you're close to the airport. I don't know if you could get away with really, you, probably wouldn't. you know. But, the big uh, problem now with light bulbs is they used to have incandescent, which was tungsten, and that was a different right. color to fluorescent, which was different color to daylight, and my battery just died, and I didn't have a chance to set it up. <laughs> <laughs> Roy has now turned into the webcam utility version 1.01. Exactly. With the Nikon logo. Oh, I, must have put the, I, must have, I did a reinstall the other night because I was mucking around with some software, and I must have put an old version in. This is a uh, real Nikon lover says John also had a body bag with a spare dead guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on, where is it? There it is. But you're right, uh, Roy Tungsten. I think it probably what it, it, that's the one that that's shifted towards the 
the it's red, red yellow colors, correct? Yeah, red yellow. You used to have to carry a, a bunch of filters to correct for them. Yeah, and yeah, if it's really mixed together, you really got problems. Green um, filters, and, 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 uh, yeah, and all sorts of fluorescent stuff. and a fluorescent is a pain. Fluorescent is the worst. And then, and then you go, ben, and and the worst thing is if you're shooting in a school, you got everything. If you're like, you could have mercury, you could have mercury vapor lights, and fluorescent lights, and incandescent lights, and everything. It's like, ah, forget it. Well, and the, and the issue being, it. Jeff, as we all know here, correct, that because our brain basically compensate for the different colors, correct? We, we, unless you are a photographer or you are and you're trained to do that or or you actually measure the light, correct? You yeah. it's very difficult to see it. It's only when you check your your photos and say, oh this all look green or this look completely yellow, correct? Yeah, this is another reason I have I, well I, I have no oh. interest in getting into drone photography for too big asshole. For two, for two reasons. One, I'm not even good playing video games, so I would crash any drone that I ever would try to fly. I'm sure I would, unless I get one of those high-end ones where it has all the sensors that that does collision avoidance, I would I would destroy them. And so then the price of the drone goes way up. And like you said, these fees and all the rules and where you can sh where you can fly it, where you can't fly it. I don't think, you know, now that the FAA got involved uh, in the drone overseeing uh, uh, that it's that it to me that it's really worth getting into, uh, especially if you want to I buy a higher end model. All those hassles, but the reason yeah. I, because I live next to a park now, I, they can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an uh, old Phantom 2 over there that I used to use, but I stopped using that because of all the hassles. And my daughter borrowed it, and it doesn't wow. work very well anymore. And it's got pink stickers on it now. <laughs> put, put that one for Malcolm, Jeff. Uh, about the, the insurance oh. for the drones. You have the separate insurance policy. Wow. Yeah. It's Too much hassle. It's it's it's. I tell you, even and and even you know. Um, it's funny. Uh, like down here, you know, a lot of people get their yards cut for them, you know, partly due to the heat. You know, they figure, let the young guy, let the young guy sweat sure. out in the yard rather than me pass out in the yard. But they'll, but they'll say, oh, you know, I got a small yard. And the guy will say, yeah, I want, I'm, I charge $60 to do the yard, you know. So a lot of people say, what, $60? That's way too much, you know. But you got to figure, you know, you're paying, you're paying for them to, to drive the vehicle that has a lawnmower in it. Gas for that vehicle, gas for the lawnmower, labor for the guy cutting the grass, and a profit margin for the guy that owns the bill of the business. So sixty dollars isn't really that unreasonable when you look at the big picture. But you I'd know, love that. but I'd that two fifty. But that's when you know, that's when you get your own lawnmower and deal with the sweat, man. I still cut mm -hmm. my own lawn and die in the heat, and a, and, a, and a young guy was working on my neighbor's house and said. Oh, I'm good to see that you're out there cutting the grass. I go, well, I got to get exercise somehow. It forces me to get outside and get some exercise. So I'm going to do it as long as I can. Do it as long as I can. <laughs> I'll do it when it reaches about two foot tall. <laughs> then I might get lost in the grass. But yeah, all the insurances and everything. And even starting your own, I mean, at least uh, – now, did you have to? Did you choose to uh, when you were doing your business, product photography business? Did you? Was there any kind of insurance to cover you in case your yeah, your sure. shoot went really bad or something? Yeah, and, someone could get hurt or yeah. So you had to get liability insurance and yes. A lot, of, a lot of venues don't allow you to use their AC power for that reason as well. So, 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 Roy, you have to go, so then you have to go to the places where they have the product, correct? Not, not, not everything was done in your studio, correct? Yeah, I had to travel sometimes. Okay. Yeah, because people, people, people like a lot of people that that have had gone on Chuck's, you know, and and hopefully are still on this sidebar channel right now. But 
that had been on Chuck's channel for a long time. You'd get a lot of people, you know, uh, what can I do to be a wedding photographer? How do I make money, you know, in wedding photography? Or how do I right. make money Expand. as a nature photographer and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. And and I believe me, I, I at one time did have a registered business for photography for and it, and it was the name of my channel, Selective Imagery. And I and I used to advertise it as as fine art for your fine art for your home at a fair price. That was my motto. That my motto, right? <laughs> uh, because you know, I, wasn't, I, wasn't catering, I wasn't catering to the one percenters and trying to sell a picture for two thousand dollars. Okay, I was trying to sell a, a image to uh, the uh, lower middle income person that works hard for their money and can't afford no two thousand dollar pictures, and they just want something nice to hang on their wall. So that's what I was marketing to. And then when I came down here, and I thought of maybe you know doing, getting back into that again and looking into it, it's just, it's just so cost prohibitive between the between the insurance you have to have and the, and the tax, you know, the, the state taxes that you have to pay because you got to pay state property tax on your gear. And, and, I, and I can't understand it. And, and every state is pretty much like this. Might be some exceptions. But if, say I owned 10 cameras, <clears throat> but I've owned them for years, then I decide I'm going to start a photo business. The state's going to charge me property tax on something that I owned before I started the business. Mm -hmm. And that's like, you're giving me the business is what you're doing. You're giving me the business, man. It's like, that's insane to me. You're going to make me pay taxes on something that I already bought and pay taxes on already. And now I got to keep paying taxes on it because now I'm using it in a business and I got to pay taxes on my computer desk and my, my computer because that's part of needed for the business and, and my storage devices and all sorts of stuff. And so, you, so, and then you got, so you have that, that at the state level, you have that at the federal level. Then you have obviously your sales tax and you got, you know, a business tax. And, and by the time you're done figuring it out, you can no longer sell affordable art, uh, affordable art for the home anymore. Now, now what you were hoping to sell for, let's say, 60 bucks you'd have to sell for two hundred dollars to make any to make anything really at all to make it worth your well, while most photographers don't have insurance yeah at all and last, uh the year before last i paid under twenty thousand tax it nearly killed me so so i i i decided forget it you know it ain't, it ain't worth it it ain't worth it it doesn't sound fair that you have to pay on taxes on something that you already pay taxes to begin with. Yeah. Double taxing on the same. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it's. I tell you, we we are definitely we are not small business friendly. That's for sure. You know, we're not small business friendly. It's not like you're getting the benefits back either. If you're getting the benefits of the tax back, it'd be a different matter. Yeah, you know, and then and then you got to figure in too with your business, uh, your your what the what you pay for credit card fees for people that want to buy your product using a credit card. Mm. Okay, so okay, do you do you jack up your prices to cover that, or jacking up your prices, you know, two point nine percent or whatever whatever it is, is that going to hurt your business? You know, and uh, it, it just gets it just gets so ridiculous. I mean, there was a uh, you're allowed you're allowed down here once a quarter, once a quarter without being a registered business. Once a quarter, you could sell uh, photographs at you know craft fairs or flea markets, that kind of thing, and not pay taxes on it. Once a quarter, you don't have to have you don't have to have a business license or whatever. But if you're gonna do it any more than that, then you have to be registered. You have to have a business name. You got to be a an LLC or a self proprietorship or whatever it is, and you got to go that whole route. And it's just so cost costly that, uh, like I said, the, the 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 people that make the big bucks with the photography stuff, it's it's an it's a it's it's a certain niche 
you know, fashion photographer, wedding. There, there's always a demand for a good wedding photographer. Okay. And depending on where you live, like Vahagen, Vahagen has a niche because he serves uh, a certain community that uh, okay. in California that spend a lot of money on weddings. Exactly. He's not doing, he's not doing a wedding for $2,000. You know, and he's doing some, he's doing weddings where they want you to take that. You have to shoot for 15 hours. Okay. You're mm -hmm. shooting a wedding for, for 12 to 15 hours. And, you know, he's probably, I'm sure he's probably charging, you know, eight grand for a wedding or maybe even a little bit more than that, but, it, mm -hmm. but he can get it because for, for that, ethnic group that he takes predominantly takes uh, the wedding pictures for uh weddings are a really big thing and they don't they I'm don't, don't, of how much don't I spend it. hard when it comes to cost they 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 really splurge on the weddings and and he's able to to do that market so people a lot of people you know when Vahagen would visit the show would say well how do I make money as a wedding photographer well you got to realize that let's just say let's just say he's in a his niche, he's in an $8,000 market per gig. Somebody in Idaho is maybe going to be lucky if he gets $1,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it is so dependent on where you live and what the cost of living is where you live and what the income level is where you live. You can't generically say... Oh, if I want to be a professional wedding photographer, I, I can make I could charge eight grand every time I do a wedding. It's no. Some people some people are lucky that they can charge two thousand dollars for a wedding because that's that's the market they live in. So that's the homework that a lot of people that ask, that some people that ask these questions they don't they don't dig deep enough and and find out really. Okay, where are you going to live? Are you going to stay where you live now? And what is the market for where you live? Because for the market for where you live, you may not be able to make enough money to make it make it worthwhile. It may be more of a, a side, uh, an, a, an additional income, you know, uh, on top of your uh, regular day job. You know, you do a wedding, you know, one one wedding uh, a weekend, and and you make it and you make some extra extra ching that you can put in the bank or whatever. But uh, it all depends where you live. That's that's a big big thing um and, and same thing even like selling uh, you know if you wanted to sell your your pictures gustavo your nature shots your wildlife shots okay what's the market what are other people charging you know no i uh, I, I never have that uh, aspiration i knew long time ago correct that it was only those selective ones like we were discussing before mm -hmm. art and france yeah. that could make it in the I, I never even entertained that idea. Yeah, it's, it seems like those that have made a successful living at it were uh, those who were fortunate enough and skilled enough to work for a major publication like mm -hmm. National Geographic, um, get a name for themselves, you know, the David Dubelais, the Art Wolfs, the, you know, the handful of people. And uh, or work for, or were uh, contributing editors to photo magazines or stuff like that, and did fine art photography, what have you. Um, that, um, but they still make a good good percentage of their income isn't so much from their photo sales as it is from their workshops. Well, uh, and, and and Jeff, they did it a hundred percent of oh, the yeah. time, right? Well, and photographers cannot do. Uh, good business only working on the weekends, right? And, and oh, until yeah. now, yeah. we were having all the line of business. So you, what what business are you in? And on this or that, you cannot be in both. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you, right. And and, and not everybody had has the wherewithal uh, or the financials to go to enough exotic places to get shots that most people aren't going to get that most people would be willing to pay a premium price for. Um, where they where they worked for a business that would shuttle them to to you're going to go to India next week and you're going to take pictures this that and the other or you're going to go to Africa and you're going to do a safari or you're going to you know you're going to go to Alaska and get the grizzly bear the the brown bears eating salmon 
uh, whatever. But most of us don't have that. Didn't we don't fall into that? And I, and there's a big sacrifice by people who do that because oh, they're on the road so much. Their family wow. life, their family life suffers if they're fortunate enough to even get married and have a family because they're never home. It, it, like uh, never home. I, I think everybody carry their own cross, correct? That's right. Uh, they're they're they they earned what they 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 earned their reputation. They worked hard for it, but it came at a big sacrifice because they they were always on, they were on the road, you know, fifty weeks a year. Well, we're asking <laughs> clients, yeah. clients yeah. Or, or or as Roy, we can tie it very quickly. As Roy, Brody, you had to photograph stuff that you were zero interest on that, correct? Mm. Little plastic things that I have no idea what they do and things Sorry. like that. <laughs> <laughs> if you, <laughs> I just had a bad thought. <laughs> you naughty man. <laughs> He's been bad again. <laughs> I would say uh, the last thing I'd want somebody to say to me is, can, can you take pictures of some of these medical devices. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there, done that. <laughs> so somebody, oh, I'm stop. I got to stop. <laughs> Ava, have a, Ava, have a good night. And, uh, mm -hmm. and thank you very much for stopping by and, uh, Hey, try try to get some more female photographers in here, will, will, will you? You have to tell Chuck about Jeff. He's been naughty. <laughs> oh man, you know He's a you, you Jeff. get you get something stuck in your head and you can't get rid of it. <laughs> Not legally. It's anymore. worse when you're there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm getting hot. <laughs> But uh, oh man. Let's see. No, but but going back to the trade of thought that we were having, it's a business. Greg had to have all the stuff that we have in business. I enjoy mm -hmm. what I did for my business, but it was work, correct? So so you had to you carry the responsibilities of doing that part, correct? Photographer, the type of stuff that we do. Right. Nobody cares, correct? No, it's just a Nobody, job. For your own mental, like uh, Chuck oh. used to say, your own mental mental health, correct? Yeah, so, it's it's a, uh, for me as being, me, me now being retired, and now you're one of the retired folks as well, Gustavo, is you, you need to have a purpose. You need that? to have uh, something to keep you going and keep your mind working and 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 if you can get something that gets you outside get some fresh air uh photography is phenomenal i mean it, it, it's a it's a very is it, it when it when it becomes when it becomes sometimes not fun is when you try to turn it into a job exactly when, well, I, when uh it's like my my uncles i had uncles that were tradesmen okay and i was and technically i was a tradesman i mean i i you know, took a, was in electronics and, and engineering or whatever, and and they were carpenters. and the, And the funny thing is, they did they did so much work for so many other people. They never wanted to fix their own house. <laughs> exactly. You know, because because they were sick of it. It was like it was. I don't want to do something that's like work again. I I do this all day long for everybody else. I don't want to come home and fix my porch. <laughs> this thing about retiring is you can take pictures of what you want. Exactly. What yeah. you have to. I, I, I one one thing for sure, Jeff. Also, now I can move more. I spend less time behind a desk because I go and do this and go and do. So the the uh, the walking amount of walking increases a little bit. So that that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh... I mean, my wife teases me because she says you, you you couldn't find a cheaper hobby is what she'll say to me. You couldn't find a cheaper hobby. <laughs> and, I, and I say, look, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't gamble. I don't do this. I don't do that. You always know. You always know where I am. 
I'm always back around the same time because I shoot at the same hours of the day almost every time I go out. <laughs> so uh, there's some benefit to that too, you know. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm not not out uh, not out doing something I shouldn't be doing. Let's put it that way. That's right. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a uh, but, you know, even having, like I said on, on my last video on my channel, though, it gets, um, <clears throat> it is time consuming and it, uh, it can be exhausting and uh, you need to know when you got to pull the throttle back and slow down a little bit. <laughs> no, absolutely. But, uh, now, yeah, with this one, that's all. At least I can choose the jobs I want to do, which is a big difference. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, like there were a few people that did concert photos. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a tough gig. You're, you're on a road with a band all year round you're, or whatever. And you're, 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 you have to watch your ears. Yeah, you're not, you're not home. You're on the road following a band. You're wherever they go, you go. If if you're doing album covers for a band or you're doing promotional material for a band, you know everybody will say, "Oh man, that's the best job ever." Same thing, you know. Do you even have a place to live? You just live in apartments and hotels or whatever, you know. I'm you're, you're on lucky. the road. You're on the road all the time. You know, tough job. Hmm. Tough job. I couldn't do a wedding. Too much work. Too many people that are unpredictable. Right. Yeah, you you have to have a uh, like I like I've said before. I, I only did four of them for friends, and mm. it could stress it. it I, and I was never more stressed taking pictures and doing a wedding because you you knew there was no redos, and uh, and you're like, what if what if I don't get that one shot that they really wanted and it doesn't come out good or it's blurry or, you know, and, you know, of course this was back in the day where I wasn't shooting with uh, autofocus cameras or anything. everything was manual focus and everything was, everything was full manual back then. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I mean, uh, the drunk wedding photographer, you know, he's shooting, he's shooting old cameras. He's, just, he's shooting film. I give him all yeah, the credit in the world. Tough. To have to have the to have the gumption and the skill set uh, to give a quality product to a customer doing a wedding shooting film, I hit my my I tip my hat my hat off to you and give you a lot of credit for being able to do that and uh, and good for you because you have you have a niche because a lot of your counterparts w would never dream of doing it in film. <laughs> they would just they would just do digital uh much work. quicker and dirtier and uh and and they could, they could yeah they they could they could do more work because they could process everything quicker well, i give you a lot of credit for what you do man uh, when the film uh, goes wrong it's gone wrong unless you uh, recover uh, on digital uh, and you have to have uh these dealing with people correct you have to have the right type of personality mm. too people correct? skills uh, yeah all these issues that the wedding photographers have to do on posing. I mean, that's an, another set of skills. And then you have all the business skills of, you know, getting new jobs and networking. It's, 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 it's a lot of work. You're so not I, dealing I, with business people either. You're dealing with civilians. I take my hats. Yeah. Well, that's, that's hat. why it's hard when people say, well, how do I, how do I make money with my camera? Or how do I, I want to sell pictures or like, say, if I said, I want to sell, uh, nature images or wildlife or whatever. The, pr the problem is, it's like, I enjoy the uh, being outside, capturing that moment, enjoying that moment, even even sometimes when I can't get the image or I don't get the image. It, it, I got the image up here. You know, I saw it. Mm. I'll remember it. You know, Um you, I mean, sometimes some of your best image, like some of the some of the nicest images, are in conditions where there's not enough light to take a picture that's worth a dime. You know, when you're when you're there before when you're there before the sun comes up, okay, before the sun comes up, or just as the sun might start coming up, you'll get flocks of birds flying over your head. 
Well, if you think that you're going to be able to get them sharp, not likely. I mean, you could get some interesting blurry, blurred photos sometimes that have a nice effect, but you're not going to get sharp photos because you don't have enough light to, to crank up your shutter speed enough That's right. without having, you know, ISO 25,000. So, you know, then you're dealing with a noise problem. As good That's as the noise. Weird, Tom. You need a really good camera there. You know, Most cameras would do a good job if there's plenty of light, slow-moving right. subject, any yeah. camera job. It's, it's when things get difficult, you need the good ones. Yeah. So, you know, you gotta, you know, I end up, you know, wait, I know, I know when I could, when I can, uh, uh, start doing the ones in flight and I'm going to get, get them where maybe only a little bit of wingtip is blurry and that's okay. The head's sharp and most of the body sharp, that type of thing. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's always fun, but man, when, but as soon as you make it a business, then you, then now, now you're like 50, 50 because now mm -hmm. your photography's cut in half because half the other half of your time is trying to do marketing, um, do uh, trying to promote your brand, trying to get in customers, trying to get up sales, doing stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, so now you're a regular businessman. Now you're a Jack of all trades and you're not, you're no longer just a photographer. So and you can't expect to make money the first year either. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I prefer the photography part of it more than the <laughs> uh, business part of it. <laughs> Much more fun. <laughs> you know. Now, now why uh, Roy, tell us a story as to now what, what in the world drove you to want to do product photography? I'm not very quick on my feet, sir. <laughs> it's easier and there's more money but i mean you know do it, were there um let's let's say uh, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna talk stupid talk here because i don't know any better but i mean is there is there specialty classes that you could take there wasn't that enough dare you to do product photography no really you just had to learn it as you went most people started off working for other companies and learnt the trade, then moved out to themselves. All right. So you, you, you get a job working as a, as a, like almost an apprentice for someone that's yeah. done, done it for a while. And then you do, then you, then you move out by yourself. Okay. There was no real schools then. I got sick of it for a while and went into programming and software development. Then I came back again when that got too hard. So I'm a coward. <laughs> Back in the day, in the 80s, I did a lot of programming for Sony, all their MSX computers. Then they cancelled it and didn't pay me. That's why I don't like Sony. <laughs> Personal <laughs> grudge. Personal grudge, yeah. <laughs> so, you, so, so, Roy, you started first in, fo in photography, yeah. then moved into programming. Then back into photography again. Back into photography. It's all a, I know nothing about sports or anything. I... That's all I've ever done in all my life is those two things. You know, and, and I'm assuming if you were a, a uh, someone who wanted to get into sports and, and, you know, and you hear the stories and everybody says, well, you got to start off, you start off at your local high school games and you, and you do maybe some sports shots for a local newspaper and you work you know same thing you got to go through the grind work your way up maybe somebody notices you next thing you know eventually maybe you're working for sports illustrated or something but uh uh it's a long it's a long hard road and i i think photography professionals um the ones that that we talk about that come to mind um that's probably one of the most um a job that you have to sacrifice the most to be able to do because you, you're, 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 you're all, you, you know, you're like pushing all the chips on the table. You're all in and you're going a hundred miles an hour all the time. Because if you back off the pedal, if you're in a competitive environment, you back off the pedal, somebody else speeds ahead of you, you know, and you can't, you can't let that happen. You always got to be, top of your game you always got to be one step ahead of the other guy come up with a different way of capturing that 
that you know, whatever. Else. Well, I mean, we'll see there, we'll see there that. I mean, David here, the, the drunk uh, wedding photographer of Bahagen, okay? I guarantee you for every 10 bits that they make of a new wedding, or they probably get two. I don't know what is the proportion, but they, they don't get 100% success, correct? So I, oh, I'm no, sure. no, and uh, and, and, and that's time that they had to dedicate to cultivate those clients, to make proposals, and and only I don't know what is the percentage. David may tell us here. Maybe it's only you know ten percent or twenty percent, but the work is done. Different, but um, most jobs are the are re jobs from the same companies. So if you stuff up one, you lose a lot. You've exactly. got to be reliable and produce the goods, or you lose the work. Exactly. I mean, when you when you look at like a Joe McNally and what he's done in his career and how he sustained that career, and you know, um, it, you know, it's an amazing story. And he's and he's still someone that no one would think twice about hiring. Well, you know, he, he hasn't lost his touch. He hasn't lost a step. And and if he and if we haven't heard a lot from him, I'm, I'm sure that's more uh, personal choice well, on his yeah. part rather than the, the, the demand for his services because you know I mean I mean he was he, he's basically he was like the face behind the creative light, lighting system that night had for so many years I mean he was the guy he was Mr. Speedlight he was the guy that well he had a um, he was on somebody's Oh God, I'm trying to think. I, I've watched him get interviewed on different people's channels and and or or talk about his work maybe on uh, the Nikon, you know, uh, Nikon Learn and Explore. You know, he might have a series or talk about something there. And and uh, there was a magazine. There was there was an inset ad in a magazine or something. I think where he recently, you know, in the last few years, shot a uh, shot a photo where. Everybody was dressed up like in costumes, like uh, like one of those Clue episodes, like a Who Done It, like in an old mansion or something. You know, who killed? Did the butler do it? You know, who killed the person? And he had like a record amount of 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 lighting equipment to to light up different elements of the room and different people in the room uh, a different way. And he talked about how he set everything up and how many lights he used and uh, strobes he used and this, that, and the other. And it was mind boggling. I mean, oh, yeah, the amount of equipment required for some of those oh, big yeah. shoots. Uh, at one time, I had a shot with 17 flashes. Yeah, it was crazy. He found 16 of them. Uh, and Jeff, and still, in, I think it was in one of the interviews from Bergen or somebody else that we watched, he almost lost his business couple of years ago okay? mm -hmm. so it's not like a, I mean you are the top of your industry you know your profession and they're still so vulnerable to I mean the situation correct because yeah. well you're, uh, you're it's, it's, that's what's that saying you're only as good as your last job right exactly and your reputation's everything yeah it's um, that's that that's why I mean we all we all like to think our work is good enough to make some money off of it. But the reality is that the, um, we don't, most of us, because we, because at the time we're thinking this, we're already working a full-time job uh, or, or you're retired now and uh, you don't necessarily have the same resources you had when you were working. Uh, so uh, the real the reality is if if you didn't choose to do it as a profession when you were young, you're probably not going to do it now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> probably not. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the art director might have a total different idea of what needs to be done than you do, and things can go wrong. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not to dissuade anybody uh, in the chat that wants to make a living doing it, but I mean. You really got to do your research. You really got to understand the tax laws in in, in your local, uh, where you live, and uh, and and like I live in Myrtle Beach, and Myrtle Beach, 
because you live in Myrtle Beach, they charge you an extra tax that you wouldn't pay if you didn't live in Myrtle Beach. So you got even more taxes if you live in Myrtle Beach. So it Why'd makes you say it, even, somewhere else? It, it makes it even less uh, attractive to do it. So yeah, I looked up all that stuff. I, I I've got I've got business cards printed that I'll never that I'll hardly that, that I that I hand out when I sell a print privately or something. But uh, it's mm-hmm. few and far between, and I'm and, I, and I'm certainly not paying for any of my gear with what I do. It's uh, I, I give away a lot of prints uh, to friends and family members and stuff like that because I I do like to, I do like to look at a print. I do like to make prints once in a while, and I I give them away basically. <laughs> So well, most of the camera, most of the photographers I know are using old cameras. Half of them are using DSLRs still, because it, it's just no point changing them every. So they can't afford to change them every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know. I've uh, realistically, I've, I've gotten a little foolish. You know, I've got big foolish. You know. No, that's a, that's what they say. They say uh, young man business. <laughs> yeah, very hard time booking clients. Well worth the ones that I do book. Yeah, it's good if you can choose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I give you a thumbs up, my friend. You, I have the highest respect for wedding photographers. Uh, you have to deal with so many different people. So many different situations. People get liquored up. They get stupid. They do stupid things. You got to deal with that. And then where's where, where's cousin Freddie that I want in the picture? And you don't even know who the heck cousin Freddie is. And they they think that you know every member of the family. And you're gonna know where they are. And you're gonna get them all together. And uh, you know and 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 you hardly ever get help from somebody. I know every wedding I did not being a professional, no wedding planner, you know, all, all stuff done on the cheap type of thing. Uh, I'm like, I need a point of contact with the family so that when you say, um, oh, I want the, I, I want my, the grandparents uh, on both sides or whatever. Well, I don't know your grandparents. I don't know what they look like. I don't know what their grandparents look like. I need somebody in the family when when we're ready to do the parents with the grandparents and the bride and groom or whatever, someone could get them because I don't know who they are, you know, and that's the kind of stuff you deal with when you're doing weddings is that you, you don't have someone, uh, you don't have all that stuff, dot your I's, cross your T's, have everything lined up, you know, not kind of getting thrown in and you're doing it as a wedding present for somebody. Uh, that is That is a very difficult job to do. <laughs> The less you get paid, the more you get abused as well. Yeah. Bad enough having people with smartphones jumping in front of you because they think you've got the best shot. Yeah. Or or like uh, the Hagen said there, the the one time that 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 person was um he had that one episode where I think somebody was in insisting that he had to use a Canon camera to shoot yeah, the remember that. good. You know, it's like, where's this person coming from? They watch too many Andre Agassi commercials with the Canon Rebel or something back in the day. And they use the 24 to 70 for their wildlife shots. Yeah, it's like uh, <laughs> you, you don't tell the photographer what they're, what they're going to use for gear. You either like their work based on what you've seen or they've been recommended and, and you don't tell them what to use for the gear. That's that was, the director's job. I mean, I mean, basically he did the right thing. He kind of showed them the door, told them where to go. <laughs> the nightmare taking that wedding there. Yeah. But, uh, and, and then the thing with weddings too, you know, not to pick on wedding photographers, those that want to get into what the problem is, to get started, they'll tell somebody, I'll do your wedding for 300 bucks. Well, you know, they'll eat your lunch, you know, they'll eat your lunch, you know, because they're starting off and they want to just get a few weddings under their bat- belt. So when somebody says, well, how many weddings did you do? You could say, well, I've done 20. You know what I mean? But you're, you may be doing them for, you may be doing them. You're doing them on the cheap. You know, I'll do it for $300, mm-hmm. you know, get the experience. 
Well, then the guy, the guy that's been doing it for 20 years isn't getting those jobs because the people decided they're going to, they can get it done for $300. But, but, <laughs> but, bad but wedding photographers out there too. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, that's good, Greg. That's what comes to be in business. You have to do all these things. It doesn't yeah, matter what type of business you are. You have to do the dice and the ugly and everything, correct? I yeah. guarantee you, Jeff, you have to do a lot of stuff. You know, big corporations, that well, this doesn't make sense, but that's the order coming from headquarters, correct? Yeah. And all that kind of stuff. So, as I said, everybody carry their own cross, and then you just try to get to the finish line. And and those in this community here that are with, that are professional photographers, we take the hats off. Yeah, we have one thing in common: they are professionals. We are amateurs. We all love certain part of this issue of of capturing images for whatever reason. Talk talk about the the issue of of nature photographers, correct? Most of the nature photographers are successful nowadays. It's on this issue of touring with other people, correct? Teaching retirees how to take yeah. pictures, taking them to exotic locations. That, that's how they make the business. Yeah. So well, nowadays, you, you have to have, as a nature photographer, the same type of interpersonal skills that the wedding photographers. Because, can you imagine, Jeff, taking... 10 people to Costa Rica and having to deal with, hey, I don't like the hotel or I don't find this type of food because I guarantee you that's what these people are doing. They are not. I, <laughs> I, I was, uh, let me tell you one thing. I was fortunate enough in my technical career, correct? I progressed very rapidly into uh, being a manager, right? I learned very early that although I was capable of being a, a manager, I didn't like to be a manager because I, I was, you know, thinking I want to do this and I want to promote this technology and all that. That's not what I was doing. I was dealing with somebody got sick and this person told me this and that. But you, it's the, poli the politics of being a manager where exactly. you become, where you become a uh, part-time priest. They used to, when I was a supervisor, exactly. they called me Father Jeff. Oh. They all come to me with their personal problems. Jeff, my wife. Work, is it? Oh. Yeah. The last few years of my career, I worked from home, even before COVID, correct? And my wife and my office, I have this is my downstairs office. I, for for business, I have an upstairs office where I was a little bit more secluded. And my wife was, you know, used to listen to me talking and I say, Hey Gustavo, are you doing therapy again today? Because that's what I was doing. You know, convince people no, you're not seeing so so in all top type of business, it's the same. It's business, correct? And it's people business, correct? So uh, so uh, as I said, everybody carry their own cross, correct? But uh, yeah. but uh, so uh, the 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 people the people here that try to make photography a business, they have nothing. But admiration from us, correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So don't because, feel bad. Don't feel bad we, because we've either we've either tried to do it, researched if we were going to do it, uh, and uh, and for various reasons chose not to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can appreciate uh, everybody, anybody that's doing it professionally. They 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 definitely get. Uh, kudos from I think all of us, and, and and I give kudos to Roy because he did it professionally. So exactly, um, or Ronald. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's it, you know it's just like I I um I mean I don't know <clears throat> when I mentioned Creative Live before I mean you've probably heard of you know uh, Scott Kelby. Yes, and the courses that he does, or or the courses they offer, so uh, the the creative live is is a similar thing. Uh, the the difference is that um, with with Kelby's uh, scenario, you're paying a for you're paying a fee every year, and you you can you can you know you can watch a video or whatever, and it, and it, but as soon as you as soon as you uh, don't pay the fee anymore. You don't have access to the video.
know, with Creative Live, you're actually buying the course. Exactly. So if you go in there and you like the course, then when they have a sale or something, I mean, I, I bought courses for $19. You know, exactly. I bought courses for, you know, I don't think I ever spent more than $130, like for maybe like a, 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 a 40 hour course on how to do Lightroom or how to do something like that. It's very complicated and a lot of chapters and a lot of, a lot of information. You're going to pay more for a course like that, yeah. for like a general course, like, okay, um, tips on uh, landscape photography or how to do this, how to do that. You know, those are most of the time you're, you're getting them for $29, $49. Well, and, and, they're there for, and they're there forever because you're not paying for a subscription. You bought the class. You just log on. You could go watch it anytime you want. It's in your library. And that's what I like about that. But. Uh, but you got great people in there. You got, uh, you know, a lot of professional photographers have done training in there. Now, now Art Wolf got smart and he started putting those, he started putting those things on his own personal, uh, website. Oh, I'm sure. He's now now making the money directly on his site rather than going through another party, you know? And that is Scott Kelby, correct? That's, that's yeah. a good example. Yeah. He's a great businessman. Absolutely. Okay? So he's businessman first, photography second. I can guarantee you, if we have him here for an interview, he will tell us that, correct? Yeah. Businessman first. Yeah. And, and his business, by the way, probably is not fueled by teaching other professional photographers, although he's aim at that. Is by teaching amateurs how to be better amateurs, correct? Right. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. so it, it's uh, the business is not exactly on the photography side. By the way, he's going to be also in the in the BNH uh, event. He he's a trem- His t- talks are very very entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's done. Now it's interesting what he'll do. What what not just him, but other other well known uh, photographers do to make a little extra money too, is sometimes I've seen it where some of them will actually for a for you know an hourly rate, they will critique your work. Wow. <laughs> so there there are some out there where the well where they will set up a one on one. You send me your stuff. It's going to cost you X amount of dollars. And I will give you an honest critique of your portfolio. So you have an idea of where, where you're at, which is, which is, which if you're serious about trying to make money doing it, Hey, who, who better to ask whether, whether your wildlife pictures or uh, are, are good than somebody like, like that, you know, Pay, pay for it. Let the guy tell you what he thinks, you know? Hassle is another hassle, another way of making another yeah. source of revenue. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Look, look. I think uh, David, the the drunk wedding photographer, he said, "I'm a writing first. Correct. Okay? Joe McNally. Correct. Okay? He said he uses writing skills. Okay. The, so they they have the writing, the the you know the uh, tours, the workshops." Uh, whatever mm-hmm. with with the Aramba. so they have they have to have for a decent life all these small sources of revenue. That's the only way they can make it. Well, when you when you look at a photo journalist, right? <laughs> a journalist sheet photo. You wrote the story. Exactly. You didn't. You know. You didn't. You didn't like. Oh, I just I just follow that guy around and I take the pictures and he writes the story for me. Yeah. Now it was like that in the early days, right? Mm-hmm. One you'd have you'd have one guy would write the story and one guy take the pictures to support the story, and then eventually you were a photojournalist. So we no, you gotta you gotta write the story too. You just can't take the pictures. <laughs> Cut backs. The the workload just doubled on you, buddy. Get used to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh Better. But the, what are, what are you now now anybody I don't know that any of us here would are in the market for the ZF I, mean, I could be wrong anybody here in the market for that camera 
No me. <laughs> I think it's going to be a good camera. If it looks as sexy as the one in the photos, I I'd be, could be interested though. It looks like a cross between a DF and an F3. Well, no, 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 nothing to do with the camera. I don't don't need it. I, I don't need it either, but it looks interesting to have. Exactly. But, uh... <laughs> Like I like I said, if I if I had the money and I had my second mirrorless camera, that might be my third. But I got to get to my second. Working at ever Z9 second. Yeah, second yeah, second yeah, Z9. yeah. I just want something different, so I've got Z8 instead. Yeah the the rumor the rumor is that it is. Um, well, let me see. I can't Hold believe on. it's going to be twenty five or thirty megapixels. Yeah. I don't see the sense in that. The, the, the rumor is it's going to be, I mean, uh, a magnesium alloy body. And if that's true. That's going to make it expensive. For that price point, if, if that holds, I mean, that's where it's going to be interesting is if it really truly is going to be a $19.99 camera. Because that's, if you put a X-Speed 7 and a magnesium body and you put some some remnants of, of Z8 and Z9 autofocus capabilities in it, and you know maybe the sensor is super low noise. Who knows? Uh, uh, it's still going to be worth two grand. Easy, mm. easy. May not be for everyone per se, but it will be worth two grand. Exactly. Uh, no, I've got nothing wrong with plastic as long as it's well used and. A good quality plastic. Oh, yeah. Well, as I said, like with the lenses, you know, I mean, some a lot of these third-party lenses are metal, but as I say, you know, uh, I have no problem with the Nikon lenses because, as I say, metal dense. I've, yeah. I've I've never I've never chipped or damaged a uh, a composite uh, Nikon lens uh, to this day. I said no. So yeah. what did you put on top of it, uh, Roy? Oh, what that's is just that thing? a microphone. I found that the in, in, I found the internal microphone's crap. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now I, that that's one thing that Jeff uh, warned me about the uh, the microphone. Yeah. Uh, that if you use an external microphone, particularly the the model that um, actually uh, I think. It, Somebody recommended to me, which ended being the same that Jeff had. Then you're when you get in behind your uh, eyepiece, your head is bouncing in, in top of it. Well, but I managed to I, I managed to get it sorted out. A small rig, exactly. A small rig cage. I put the microphone on the side. Before I had the microphone, I was taking taking videos, and there's just so much noise in the background. Well, I, I bought I bought the mic, and it was a hot shoe mount, right? Because I don't have yeah. a small rig, so I put it on the hot shoe, and then the power cable for the mic plugs into the back, like like Gustavo says, it plugs into the back and it sticks out. So you go and you put the camera up to your eye, and you're you're hitting the cable that's coming out of the back to power the mic, and you're like, why are you guys so stupid? You should put the jack on the side of the doggone thing. So it, it comes right down where you're plugging into the side of the camera to plug it in, and they put it on the, the – the, and this is a road mic. I mean, it wasn't a cheap mic. And then, exactly. And then I'm not even happy with it. I'm not, I ended up not being happy with it because um, I'm reading all the recommendations. I asked That's a lot work. of people other comments. And, the, and I bought the wind, purpose, the, the wind sock for it and everything. And the problem is I tried mm -hmm. to – I, and, and maybe there would be no mic other than a real expensive one in a in a special case because I think uh, Robert Silver told me, oh, you got to get such and such a directional mic. You got to have it with multiple layers of of <coughs> of sound deadening and all this stuff because I complained I was I was uh, I was filming and taking pictures of a where they excavate a turtle nest. So when the turtle okay. the turtles hatch, and and most of them make it to the ocean, they wait x amount of days, and then they excavate the nest 
to inspect and try to figure out how many eggs were in the nest. And sometimes there's maybe, maybe there could be a half a dozen babies that are, couldn't dig their way out. So they'll take them out and they'll put them in a bucket. They'll get to the middle of the beach. They'll take them out and they'll, and they'll, you'll watch them. I've never gotten to see them. Every time I've gone to one, there's no babies left. They've all, one or two may be dead. Few didn't hatch. The rest all made it and they're all gone. But you, you go to it with the hopes that they find a couple and then they, when they release them, you can get a picture of the baby turtle going so, down to the water. So, so that's why we haven't seen that video. Right. Because <laughs> when, I, no, when I was filming it, the wind from the ocean and the sound of the waves okay. was so loud that the person is narrating and telling you about the process of, of, of excavating the, the nest and what they do. And they get DNA samples, and they do this, and they do that, and I'm and I'm trying to record it with that mic, and all you hear is, wow, it was horrible. You, it was you horrible. were your dead cat. I had a dead cat on it, and still you were just wow, useless, totally useless okay. on the beach, totally useless on the beach okay. with a with wind. It was it was yeah, awesome. I'm still learning too. So it's Robert third, Robert right? Silver told me, but then what he's describing, what, what he was describing, and I and I and I don't know for sure, but he he what he was describing to me was probably going to be like a five six hundred dollar mic setup, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not going to spend that. I'm and not, a helper, you uh, know, yeah, I, you know, I don't make I don't make I'm not making no money. I'm not going to spend six hundred dollars on it. And it was a road mic, yes, Greg, a road mic. It was. Let me show you something here. It was. Let's see. Uh, Road aren't what they used to be either, are they? It was a. Uh, I don't know if the model number's on here or not, but this is the mic. Okay. I've seen that a lot. Okay, here's the back of it. You have different different attenuations that you can choose noise reduction all that mm -hmm. sorts of stuff and here's the here's the stupid power cable coming right at your face right at your face when you have it on the hot shoe don't you love engineers here's the here's the dead cat right mm -hmm. here so even with even with even with taking this even with taking this thing off because this this is an om omnidirectional mic not a directional mic. That's the problem. But but you can, you know, and 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 that's the problem. I mean, if you're trying, but but realistically, if you got a bunch of people talking, you're trying to pick up every everybody talking. You know, you need an omnidirectional mic, but the problem is it picks up a lot of noise. Picks up a lot of noise. So then you you put the you put the you put the dead cat on and you know here you go. You got the the mouse the, the giant giant mouse. <laughs> so did you retire that mic now or, or you're still using it? You know when I use it, I use it if I'm recording myself doing one of my photo of the week episodes. Okay. Okay. So I'm using it inside the home. But I didn't, I you know, because the mic, the the internal mic on the Z, on the Z9 is absolutely pitiful. All of them, they all are. They you know, yeah, they're they're totally useless. I, I don't. They could say, oh, you got a stereo mic on your on your Z9. I don't care. It's junk. Audio uh, audio features, That's mic insane. features on a, on the Z9 are not are not very good. Hmm. Um. And and that it, that actually that's something that they should improve if they come out with a Z9 II. Okay. Is is they don't have the amplifiers, <clears throat> the amplifiers are not good enough in a Z9, even for driving, you know, external microphones. Okay. You know, so you need to have um, better electronics for uh, the microphones. Okay. Um, and that, that's that's something that they should, you know, if you're going to take the video side seriously, you have to make sure that you can uh, provide a good um, 
good signal strength or whatever for your for your microphone setup. Mm-hmm. And and somebody said that they had it. They had to do all these weird, buy all these weird contra- contraptions that cost a lot of money to eventually get good enough audio recording uh, from their Z9 that they were happy with. Uh, but they had to spend a lot of money to do that. And yeah, I'm just using a cheap tech star now. Yeah. The dearer ones didn't cut it. What I find out with this microphone that we're talking about is that when I look, listen to the videos after, even with this road mic, mic, there is still a little bit of a, a, a my, my hearing is very bad, and I can still hear some shh hissing. It's, it's never crisp, correct? Oh yeah. When 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 I bring in the, when I bring in my video, I mean this is I'm going to hold it up. This is my mic I use for the stream. Okay. Okay. And this this has this has adjust adjustable uh, directional uh, capabilities mm-hmm. uh, that I can set for uh, whether it's more of a shotgun mic or omnidirectional or or what have you. And and this mic works fine, you know, for this. But when I when I do a video. So when I do a video and I do my uh, voiceovers, I'm using the mic I just showed you for exactly. my voiceovers. But when I go and I start fooling around with the uh, audio track, mm-hmm. okay, I end up um, bumping up the volume a little bit. I end up moving the, the noise reduction slider up a little bit. Uh, and there's a loudness slider as well. And I crank I said I crank that up a little bit, and uh, and eventually I get something that I try to get it where the the volume in the video oh, is is good is good when my keyboard is set like halfway, you know, for volume halfway, mm-hmm. uh, so it doesn't sound too loud or <clears throat> or too soft. But I'm still putzing around with it with the with the software to make the uh, the audio sound good. Yeah, yeah. we we have a, a interesting story from Randall there that you may want to put. He'd be on. the expert on on mics and things, wouldn't he? On his uh, car oh, blog. There you go. Yeah, we'll put it up. Car vlogging had the Rode Wireless Go mic and got hijacked. By a local radio station playing their music. Video was great, but I didn't put the the video up because of a copyright strike. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I was looking for that, but to show you, Jeff. But I ended uh, getting actually it was not that expensive. Uh, I play tried to position that. Row mic in different places. O- obviously, when I'm shooting with the long telephoto, it doesn't matter because I can put it somewhere else. Correct? I, uh, on my w- Wimberley, I have a special place for flash, but you can put it in the flash if you're not using flash. Correct? But actually, it, it was, uh, I don't think it was very expensive. A bellow type of device that, that basically goes in the hot shoe and then it's split into like a V. And then mm-hmm. there is two little hot shoe, but the we you know oh, cold cold shoe cold, connections. Cold. Cold exactly. shoe connections yeah. and, and that brought it away. That's the other thing, correct? Because you know, as a wildlife photographer, you are aiming through the barrel of the lens, correct? So I don't want to have anything. That's when you when you're trying to aim quickly, you're looking through the barrel, or you're looking through the lens to get to where you need to see, correct? So here's here's a different one uh, to look up the road lavalier mic. So I have to look that one up. But that's for your narration in the field, correct, uh, Randall? Yeah. If you're recording birds and that, you need the condenser shotgun. Yeah. You, if you're doing it in the close up, you need a different to- type of mic altogether. Which I've had trouble with finding a good one too. I like I like the, I like this one. He had two he had both mics, 
too close, one clicked, one hissed. <laughs> mm. That's when you say that's the wildlife making those sounds. Oh, I, I, I tell you what drove me crazy when I was trying to, and I, I, eventually we'll put some video. The day I put my first video on Instagram, you guys will know, but uh, I recorded, when I was recording the flickers in the nest, is that I say, okay, let me take some video, okay? And then wait for the parents to come and I'm photographing. Without fail, there was always an airplane passing by at the same time. <laughs> so it should happen to you all the time, uh, Jeff. Well, you know, in uh, Randall saying the mic he, he got there was seventy nine bucks. It's like I think the mic. I think you bought the same mic I I had, and yeah. that mic I think was close to three hundred dollars. Yeah, it is here, like two fifty. Here it is. Yeah, I think yeah, it is. It was like yeah, it was like two hundred fifty bucks or three hundred bucks with the with the dead cat. It was like three hundred dollars, and it's like, exactly. and I'm not happy with it. I mean, I'm happy with it in a controlled environment. Very good in a controlled environment, but but not when you're outside and you got wind blowing. You're 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 out of luck. You're screwed. <laughs> At a very directional condenser mic. Yeah. Shotgun or something. So what yeah. what is that you were using on your C9 there, Roy? I'm using a Tax Star, which is a really cheap and nasty one, but it works. It's good enough for what I want to do. It, and it's, it's, it I've got a road over there and a another one over there but um this is the cheapest one and it's about thirty dollars and uh, it does that's fine and oh, it's out yeah. the way with the small rig cage it's it's really out the way i'm, okay. I'm not good at it but i'm learning so what what it what's what's the small rig cost for the z9 what's the cage run for how much about 120 dollars australian which will probably be 80 american 80 american they're cheap well, relatively cheap, correct? Yeah. But small rig are not the, not the top of the range in that sort of gear, but they're not a ro really right stuff or something, but they're probably better value for money in many things, yeah. a lot of the little bits and pieces. I, I Because obviously they are made for video, Roy. The, my mm -hmm. only disappointment is that obviously working with telephoto doesn't matter because you are rotating your lens on your... You're rotating the mm -hmm. lens on the camera. But if you want to use... a something that doesn't have uh, a rotating color on the lens, then to do a vertical, you cannot do a vertical, correct? Uh, the, the, um, the... It's not this one, no, but an L bracket does. Exactly. So that's that's why I prefer L bracket. Correct? Mm. But Rather the lens the... itself will twist. Uh... Exactly. If you're with the a lens... telephoto lens, it doesn't matter. You rotate no. in the lens, correct? Yeah, you rotate the collar, you loosen the collar, exactly. rotate the whole... Lens, yeah, yeah. There's there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, one, one thing I'm trying, Jeff, lately, I think maybe next week I will know. You know, I'm I'm a tripod person, correct? So I'm tripod and tripod heads, and I, mm. I I told you about the flex shooter, correct? That I like that flex shooter, but I bought uh, one of those, uh, you know, uh, proper video heads. Right? Not super expensive. Just, yeah. to, just to check, just to check if if I want to shoot a video, because I think with a video with a proper fluid head, the, the, and you have a handle, because I, I I am kind of perfectionist. I I these kind of handheld videos, the thing moving up. Uh, got me going. Okay? You're gonna make you're gonna make me show what I got today. Okay. Go for it. If I can. I don't know exactly how I'm going to get it in the on the screen, but we shall see if I can get it on the screen. Ah. Yeah, it's kind of like hard to do it with it. Uh, it'll be hard to do it with it already mounted. Okay. But. Yeah, I do like a tripod. Yeah. 
I call it the right tripod discipline. Mm. You, correct? You, you. Yes, you, you, you have to think more clearly when you use tripods. Exactly. Actually, my very worst tripod is one I use the most, which is this Vanguard with the trigger. Oh. Is that just so quick to use? Yeah, I remember when those came out. Mm. Not good for long telephoto lenses. It's not very well made, but and it's no good for long telephotos, but for general use. Ah, he comes. He's a lens. Blue head. <laughs> so which one is that one, Jeff? This is the uh, Manfrotto 608 Nitro Tech. Okay. It's a, it's a continuous... It's a it's a continuous counterbalance uh, where okay. you don't have a number that you click. Okay, okay. It, it has infinite uh, adjustments. Inf infinite adjustments based on turning this knob that's over here. Okay. So if you uh, let me. Unlock this. So okay. it doesn't drop. Pretty much balanced right now. Okay, very good, very good. Okay. There we so go. So what? What type of mount is that? Is Arca Swiss or Manfrotto? This is Manfrotto. Oh, so yeah. you had to buy an adapter? No, well, I didn't. I got. The, I put the Manfrotto plate on my lens. Okay. But. Eventually, I'll get a adapter, okay. Mark a Swiss, but for now, I I did not. But okay. this is this thing glides, okay. Like is it glides perfectly? Go to a video, exactly. So and uh, and it's like I mean, even if you were, um. It's, you know, it, it's got, you know, there's, and what I did is I bought a, uh, let me get the box, because I'll forget the name of it. Oh, Not so good for tracking the. I bought an, an uh, it's only 75 bucks. I bought a, let's see if I can get it here. I bought a. Oh, leveling, leveling base. Quick leveler. Yeah. So that I don't have to sit there if the. If the legs aren't perfect, I'm not fooling around with the legs. So I guess have one one lever here. I swing that lever out. It's got, um, you know, of course I have a uh, a level on the actual Manfrotto, yeah. which is I can't see from behind here. Yeah, I got I got a level right here. So, okay. so you ha you haven't taken that to the field already or not? I did no. I just set this up like a, like an hour before the show. Oh, fantastic! You no, know? so so so, so my, mine is arriving next week. <laughs> so, but I figured I would get the the quick adjust because it gives you like fifteen degrees of rotation where you're not fooling around with the legs because now you got a pretty heavy heavy setup. You don't want to be you know, uh, screwing around with the legs a lot. So if you're just a little bit off, it's it's nice to be able to just flip no, the lever, sure. adjust it, lock it, keep on going. But um, it's a – we shall see how it does, but I think the videos, when I'm tracking a bird, you know, walking no. around, getting food or whatever, or even even I could pick one up in flight with this if I have the rear display down. Exactly. You know, I could pick the bird up, or um, I think it'll make the video quality um, much, much better. Now, sure. should I have should I have bought it when I'm making so much money doing it? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> it's not about that, but uh, no, I agree. I, I I think you, but but you see what that reveals, Jeff. Talking about what the, what we started at the beginning of the day, correct? You, as many, are becoming more of a hybrid, correct? Some videos and some photos, and to do good videos, you probably need these type of heads, correct? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, what I was using before was my, uh, I had an, an Acrotec. Exactly. I had an Acrotec ball head that had, uh, you know, full numbering, you know, zero to 360 yeah. degrees for doing panoramas and had, had a, uh, a, a fine, excuse me, a fine, a, a rough adjust knob to lock the head and a fine adjust knob to just put enough friction on it. Exactly. And it was a really, really nice, it's really, really nice ball head. But the problem with a ball head is every time you move it, oh, you gotta, you got, if you're talking, uh, um, landscapes or something, you have to you have to level it. You move it a little bit, you got to level it. Yes, of course. Hate ball heads unless you're doing little tiny things with them. I mean, too much trouble. Good, you know, good for macro. Good for macro yeah. unless you want to get a uh, unless you want to get a geared uh, a geared head for mm -hmm. macro. You could do that too. Um. But yeah, so that's the that's the new toy that has has to be tried out. Well, yeah, I've got the ancient version, the five hundred one. So that's going to be that's going to hopefully be sometime sometime this week. I hope. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's a, definitely you need to pan out, correct? Pan around. Oh yeah, it's it very yeah. difficult to do it with uh, without a fluid head. Well, I I have the gimbal. I have a gimbal. Problem with the gimbal is unless you even, you know, it's, it's even if you have the real expensive ones, which I don't, but, you know, in terms of the panning action, usually it's either super loose, you know, super loose or locked. There's exactly. no in between. There's not yeah. much of an in between. There's no, no, good, a problem. no good friction adjustment for it. Yeah. Now the other, the other way, yeah, that's you know that's pretty good friction adjustment going up and down, just really no friction adjustment going going left to right, and you know and sometimes it'll get jerky. It could be jerky, and you don't want that with video. You don't want exactly. to be, you don't want to be panning and all of a sudden oop there it goes oh uh, now it's smooth up there it goes you know <laughs> exactly that that actually I can tell you I even tried to you know. MacGyver by trying to adapt some handles to my Wemberley, correct? And see whether I can pan better. And it's impossible. It's just not the right tool. That's that your body is the right tool. That's yeah, I mean, it was, I did a lot of research on him and, and uh, um, I'm trying to think of his channel name, but his name's Scott Keys. Uh, yeah. on youtube he has done a series about fluid heads versus gimbals and he's done like three three episodes and he is he's really 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 uh good for information and i and i wrote to him and i said i'm thinking about one of these uh continuous uh, models mm -hmm. uh, because because actually you could buy you could buy a cheap Manfrotto one for like probably 150 bucks mm -hmm. you could buy you could buy a cheap one and basically it's like a spring action okay because because when you when you when you dip down the lens when you dip down the lens you basically have the counterbalance as a spring on some of them that just wants to bring the lens back up that's right you know, and then you're trying to, uh, uh, and some of them don't have an adjustable setting. Some of them just have a setting. And then others have, you know, that may, may have a three click stop setting or a five click stop setting. And the advantage of the continuous um, counterbalance is sometimes what you end up doing when you just have a, a switch selection you got to between you got to get between the four and the five and you and obviously you can't do it because you're either at four or you're at five so what you uh -huh. end up doing to compensate is you got to change your friction adjustment to make your friction harder so that it won't try to go up when oh, you got it pointed like this so it won't try to make it go up so it stays where you want it to stay 
but with the continuous one, you don't have you don't have to lock the position at all. Exactly. You just you just you just move the handle. It stays right where where you want it. You don't have to lock it. You could if you want to, but you don't have to because you may want to all of a sudden change the direction depending on what you're filming. So you, so you don't want to lock it. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. Uh, I agree. I agree. The, the definitely Scott provide good uh, good uh, information about uh, tripod heads and uh, you know gimbals and all that stuff. But uh, you can see even uh, Moose Peterson is using uh, nowadays uh, 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 you know uh, this type of rig, correct? With uh, yeah, yeah. With Hudson, head. Hudson Henry. Hudson, Hudson Henry got rid of his. It doesn't use his gimbal anymore. He uses the fluid head for everything. Exactly. Yeah, but he's landscape. He's not wildlife. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And uh, real Nikon lovers asked me if I'll do a review of this, and yeah, I, I plan on doing a review of what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a. I'm just going to talk about. No unboxing, please. You already unboxed it. No, no me. unboxing. I'm just going to talk about types of heads, you know? Exactly. I'm going to talk about the different kinds of heads, the different styles of heads, uh, why you might use one or the, over the other, and lots of times a lot of it has to do with cost savings and weight, to be honest with you. you know, And, and, and usually most people's first tripod that they buy is going to be something they buy at Best Buy or whatever, and it's going to be, you know, a hundred dollar tripod with a very inexpensive ball head on it. And and I remember my first tripod when I was real young. And you can hide it. Is a slick U two twelve tripod, <laughs> which the which, which the top plate everything was plastic, everything mm -hmm. was cheap plastic, and that was my first tripod. And the uh, and the uh, and and the 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 part you put your your camera on, you'd loosen up a knob, and, and, it, was, and it was plastic, and you and it would just lift up when you wanted to do, do a vertical. It was so cheap, but it's all I could afford at the time. It was better than not having one, right? But not by a lot. But it was a little bit better than not having one. Uh, and then I actually I actually bought this one, believe it or not, this uh, Oban. Mm -hmm. which is which is actually pretty nice for the money it's like 75 bucks 85 bucks i bought this to put on a monopod and this was if when i was planning to go on a trip to africa okay i was going to put this on the monopod and hold and put it and hang it down off the safari vehicle to get low shots of the lions mm-hmm so I didn't want to buy a super expensive mono, uh, head, but I bought one that could easily handle the weight. You know, you got to make sure you get the right weight capacity. Yes. And then to my opinion is your, your weight capacity should always be 30% more than what you need. Safety you, margin. Safety margin, right? <laughs> Give yourself 30%. And and that's what that's the only thing I bought this for. So now I, I haven't gone on a safari, so I don't know if we even use this thing. But I, I do I do like the uh, I do like this model, the uh, Acrotech, which most people never heard of, but it gets great reviews. And very it, good brand. But, but it's still but it's still a ball head. You still got to constantly level it. You know, you move it, you got to level. You move it, you got to level. Fluid head. Once you once you got everything set up on it, you're good to go. You're good to go. Okay. So, good try for the last your lifetime. Yeah, I mean, I that I got um, a very heavy legged uh, Manfrotto tripod um, that I've had for fifteen years, I think. Mm -hmm. Now I. Now, lots of times I, I I wasn't using that. I was bringing a travel tripod with me to save weight, you know. But uh, if I'm doing video, I'm going to bring the heavy duty one. I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to use. Well, this it's like tripod. everything, yeah, correct. So, so if you if you travel by car, you can take as much as you want. If you're going to work out of the car, if you're going to work 
that uh, that you need to do some walking, you have to take certain type of if you're going to fly, right? So it's good to have a variety of systems for the subject or the type of thing, but also for the, the transport, correct? Now, um, Randall's saying when doing landscape, you also need the cable remote firing solution. I use the wireless one. I use the uh, Velo trigger, oh. Velo remote trigger, which is very inexpensive compared to the Nikon brand. I, I do have that one. It Don't works worry. very, very well. You know, you put it, you screw one in on the 10 pin connector on the camera and uh, they talk to each other and it's just a shutter release. That's all it is. It doesn't do anything. It's not an intervometer or whatever. It doesn't do all this other stuff. It's just take a picture. But for what it costs, no cables, works good. Never had a problem with it. Inexpensive. Yeah. I Recommend agree. it. Recommend it. So, so uh, Roy, you were showing one of those window mount. Yeah, this is just a window mount. You have a you, you tripod head on top of it, mounts onto it. Exactly. I'm going to put you on the bigger side, Roy. That's okay. It's just okay. a window mount. So this is what the real right stuff? It goes like that on the – no, this one, I don't know what this is. Could be. Yeah. I, I you got many, where, where am I? There. Yeah. Yeah. It just fits over your window. You have a ball head there. And off you go. Yeah, I do like that. I, uh, that, I that have... <laughs> nice and stable. That one's made by really wrong stuff. Yeah, it probably <laughs> really is. Really wrong stuff. I've got some really right stuff too, but um, I don't, that probably isn't one of them. Yeah, a couple but of ball those, heads. Those, are, really those, right are, stuff. those are good. If you shoot for the car. I actually have yeah. one as well. Oh. But it's either you. You. By the way, Jeff, that one that really. So, so in my, in my car, which is a Jeep, correct? Yeah. I use a, I use a, a bean bag. I, in my Jeep, there is a bean bag. That's good too. For photography, is the best, correct? You just mm. very good. Roll down Although your bags. window, put the, and then you can, it can, you can hold everything. But mm. if you want to do video from the car, that's the that thing that Roy has. Yeah, is that's the right. way to go because then you can put a proper head, correct, in you top of it. Put a tripod head on it. It, it, with a bean, I tried to do video with a bean bag. No, <laughs> it doesn't work well. well. All you, all you, all you hear as you move is you hear the beans crunching. Well, and also <laughs> be, depend where you're supporting your lens. But for the eight hundred or the six hundred, then as you rotate on the bean bag, which you can do, then it, it, it engages sometimes the, the the manual focus. So you have to disable the manual focus ring. Otherwise, you you start on focusing, correct? So, yeah. uh, but but that Roy, I use it. I actually probably this year when I go and start photographing the uh, turkeys again. Yeah. That's that that's that's the way to go. Yeah, well, so much you, uh, you should go to Jeff and Leslie uh, Wildlife Channel. Jeff and Leslie's channel. He he is very good uh, carpenter. He has a wood shop. And he built a window. That was Greg Wilson. Uh, was it Greg Wilson? Yes. He, he built a, a window mount, which was really cool. Oh, very good. Good job. Yes. Yeah. I'm getting my I'm getting my uh, my friends mixed up here. Greg exactly. Wilson. Exactly. Not right. Greg. I... But uh, yeah, he did a nice job. And well, that was where he duplicated himself on the uh, exactly the video where there were two Gregs. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I, that, thought, I thought that was hilarious. I'm, I don't know how he did that. That was so funny. Yeah. But that that one that Roy has is, is is good because you can put a proper. And it's nice and solid. Exactly, and you can put a proper uh, mm. head in top of it. Great. That's what I do. I'm, it's not really what I do mostly. I'm I'm normal studio stuff with clamps and and that sort of thing. I normally work out why I do it with a clamp. So Roy has a, like a secret curtain. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Roy, I tell you, the guy's got everything. It's incredible. It's incredible. If you, if you say if you say to him, you got a 52 Studebaker back there, Roy would say, wait a minute, I'll find the 52 Studebaker. But, um, that's, uh, that normally goes on that bracket. Exactly. <laughs> but um, I'd normally start with something like this, 
a mafer or a super clamp, okay. clamps to something. Then I'd have a magic arm or something hanging off that. Then another clamp at the other end, and that's how I'd get the job done. That's how I'm doing it with the microphone and everything. Okay. <laughs> I, it's, it's the way I do things. You just get used to doing it like that. Those old clamps are useful, for sure. I got dozens of these. Magic arms and... Magic arm, magic arm. That's all. You want to see the magic arms. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try to do a, I'll try to do a review on it, but I'm going to wait till I use it for a little bit. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it, uh, I feel comfortable explaining it uh, right now, but I want to take it out in the field and use it so I can, I can show some video first and then say, mm -hmm. this is what I use to take the video. And then I could talk about it and then talk about some of the other heads that that people would buy um and but like i said lots of times the, the head cost that the the uh the head mm -hmm. choices lots of times have a lot to do with a lot to do with you know this is that you know i mean you, you can't tell i mean something like something like i bought here for what i paid what i paid for this was cheap enough where a, a new photographer can afford to buy it and put it on a tripod and and it would be it would work oh it no work. and that that type of head with a 70 to 200 or something like that it will work fantastic yeah right? yeah it's, it's when you get into these very heavy uh, uh, telephotos that you get into trouble okay this this one i think uh this this one has a this one here has a maximum load of 17.6 pounds. That's a lot. That's a lot. Your your 800 with your Z9 weighs about nine pounds. Yeah. Or a little less than that. So you could put your 800 on your Z9 and use this this small head for that, and it would work. Yeah, it's actually I I I looked up the weight eight eight point two one pounds for the eight hundred p kilograms with the Z nine kilograms nah <laughs> no ain't going there <laughs> hard to ask <laughs> no. and I got to get Nikon to add feet to that doggone auto capture but you see. <laughs> Uh, Jeff, when you were talking the other day about the videos, right? So now that you go to your local park again, now you go with a different outlook because you're going to go with this new toy, correct? So it doesn't matter the same birds, but you're going to to, to be able to do new things, right? Well, if if I'm bringing a setup that that's heavy, then I'm to me at that point for that day, I'm just doing video. Or you know what I mean? Or I'm doing video for the first two hours. I, actually, I like doing the video the earliest hours of the morning because one, I don't have an ND filter that I could put on the 800. You know what I'm saying? When it starts yeah. getting a little too sunny out, yeah. And and that and actually, when we were talking about things that you'd like to see in a camera, I would love for them to put in an ND ND built in. Uh, simulated ND filters in the in the cameras. Exactly the software. The right? software. Give me a built-in something that acts as an ND filter uh, inside the body of the camera. That cannot be that be difficult, correct? Because, because well, I think there is a camera that does it. I don't know. I can't remember which one it is, but I think there is a camera that does it now. My guess would probably be an Olympus if I had to bet any money, but. <laughs> Uh, but the, but the, the thing is, it's like, you know, what are you, what are you going to put on the end of that? I mean, seriously, you know, what are you, I'm, that, that with that ND filter at the end of the 800, you can buy another big lens. Correct? Right. Right. For what it would cost to rig that up, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't know if they sell. Roy, do they sell a, a drop in? Do they sell uh, multiple uh, 
power ND filters, drop-in filters for these big lenses? Uh, or do they only do uh, circular polarizers and... Uh, I haven't seen them. I've only seen the circular polarizers. Yeah. See, that that you could put one... You know, if, you, if we could put one in the drop-in, then that's, that would be great. That's true. I got to look down. Now you gave me something to look up. I'm going to look up drop-in fil drop ND filters for the 800. That that is super, super expensive, Jeff. Mm. I, I use them for the wider lenses, so the long, long lenses. I don't normally need a ND filter. Yeah. It always polarizes. Yeah. Those things are super expensive, right? They're not cheap. The I think the Nikon one's about two fifty Australian. If a, for, about probably one eighty or something. Or what it is, you know, the little drop-in filter. They're, uh, they're very good filters, but they're they're way overpriced. I have to design my own. Yeah, not the. So if you go ND or circular polarizing, sometimes you get color cast yeah. if they're too cheap. So, so Jeff, when you when you were to take your dog out, I was telling that I was photographing in in one of the mountain lakes here at almost thirteen thousand feet, correct? And one of the things that I noticed is that the light was so harsh, correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I, and, and I'm, I cannot, I entered the park very early in the morning, but it, I mean, it was still like 8.30 in the morning, so just because of the high altitude, correct? All the uh, uh, shadows were super, super, super sharp, correct? And I, ha I encountered a problem, correct? I said, what is going on here? I cannot get the right exposure. It's because I already, you know, Stop down a little bit, but I was already at you know ISO 64, and, and the light was too bright, correct? So so I actually ended having to put the polarizer filter that actually helped a lot because mm -hmm. I cut in the light in order that I could shoot the way I wanted. Right? Yeah, I like polarizers; they deepen the colors and yeah, yeah, yeah. I I in my bag, you have my bag here. I actually, th this is also relatively expensive. Because I ended buying, but I bought one many years ago. One of those Nikon proper polarized filters. Right? Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll like uh, you'll like Mozman's comment here. Ah, see, Luke, uh, everybody's leaving me. I'm a ma I'm a man on an I'm on an island now. <laughs> Luke, I guessed right. I thought it would be Olympus. Olympus does a lot of things first. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Doesn't work in the background for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, Luke, Luke told me, uh, Luke says that Olympus is the one, uh, like I guess, I took a guess. I guess I guessed right. They, ha they have a simulated ND filter. <clears throat> Hey, Gustavo, I guessed right. Luke says Olympus is the company that has the simulated ND filter. Exactly. That, that yeah. makes sense. So you could do it. So, um, okay, you're saying software driven, I think. Yeah, probably a, yeah, a, exactly. a firmware That's thing. Firmware, or whatever. Though, isn't it? Yeah. So the, this is a, a, a Nikon proper 77 millimeter. Has to be circular, not linear as well. The old linear ones don't work digital very well. Exactly. So, so this this one is the kind of I bought so many, and then I said, okay, let me buy the Nikon proper, and then that's the last one I bought several years ago. And it works very nice. Eh? Yeah, I mean, I got if I you know if I'm shooting with the if I was shooting with the one to four. Or whatever, I got a three-stop ND that would be perfect for you know when it just starts getting a little bit too uh, bright. Uh, magnetic one that I could just slap right on the front of the lens, you know. But uh, eight hundred, you know, you, these big lenses becomes a big problem, money-wise. Yeah. No, yeah, real Nikon lovers, right? He said Heli Heliopan, that's a brand that makes those filters too. They might have a ND. He says like 250. Yeah. 
but but indeed the the Olympus solutions seem to be uh, and, and you're correct Jeff Olympus have been one that have been creating a lot of innovation okay the pre capture or also came from Olympus okay or the all in one system yeah I look okay. I look at Olympus now Olympus now uh kind of reminds me of Minolta in the old days exactly because Minolta used to be used to innovate a lot of things that would then be mimicked or copied by by Nikon and everybody else and I think now you know Olympus okay now Olympus does the the pre-capture uh that the Nikon does with JPEGs, but Olympus can do it with RAW. But the difference is, you got to remember that they're you're talking micro four thirds. You're talking a lot smaller megapixel sensor. So that's probably why they can do the pre capture with RAW because you're only talking, I think, twenty four mega twenty four megapixel exactly. models. Um, but uh, but they they come out with some really cool things, and they and they did the pixel shift, I think, before anybody else too. Exactly. So, uh, for people that for people that want a light kit, quality product, innovative, don't rule out the Olympus brand, the OM Systems <laughs> brand at all. I mean, I know a guy that that has had Olympus for. You know, before they before they got renamed OM Systems, and he takes extraordinary wildlife photos with it, and he loves it. And then the, the latest uh, OM System camera that came out, uh, they they basically acid tested it in the Arctic in very cold temperatures to make sure the weather and had a robust weather sealing, and they basically made sure that. It could go toe to toe, uh, you know, really with the quality of a Nikon camera, you know, in a harsh environment. And I think they proved that it could do that. So do not rule one out. I mean, unless you're totally anti micro four thirds, but you want a light kit, stuff's getting a little too heavy, getting older, you know, you're getting older, you don't want to have all that weight, you want to have shorter lenses uh, that don't. <laughs> don't knock it till you tried it. You no, know, absolutely. absolutely. Hey, by the way, Greg Wilson is here today. He, uh, he just arrived. He was saying that he's late. Today, Greg, you are very late. <laughs> yeah, but we were talking about you, Greg. Yeah, we. I, I got you confused with Jeff from Jeff and Leslie. Uh, Greg, I talked about you making your... Uh, Window when, you, when you had the two of you, your twin with you, and you were videoing making your window mount um you know for your for your car mount for your window for uh taking pictures with out of wood and uh what a good video that was and how funny it was where you had uh your your twin come in uh saying what's going on when are you done yet you know <laughs> that was good <laughs> very good but but for sure going back to the OM system uh, definitely for wildlife, correct? It's a, it, it's an attractive uh, system. Yes, right? yes, it is. The, yes, the it thing is. is, obviously, it has the disadvantage of being a smaller sensor. Yeah, correct. But but uh, and that's why. So, so I mean, but I think it's a great thing. I mean, you know that. Per I think you mentioned him the other day, Mike Lane from the UK. Correct. That does all these. He's a used to be a professional. He's still a very professional uh, bird photographer. He, he, I like his videos. Uh, he used the OM system. Correct. Yeah. There's, you know, there's uh, where the see. You know, I, I, I hate to, I hate to steal somebody else's uh, phrase. Yes, uh, like my catchphrase, or I, I don't even call it a catchphrase. My my thing is enjoy life, capture some of it. Everybody hears me say that every video. Enjoy life, capture some of it. Uh, now, Matt Irwin is uh, one of his lines is uh, it all depends on your use case. 
Exactly. And that is a that is such a true line in a lot of uh, situations. If you're the the size of your sensor doesn't matter if you're primarily um, using your images well in YouTube content. It doesn't matter, you know, that it's micro four thirds for YouTube content, of course, or for uh, sharing images on Instagram or Facebook. Doesn't matter. Okay, it's only going to matter if you want to make, you know, really really big prints. You know, if you're, you know, that that's the only time it's really going to matter. Uh, so, I, I know a handful of people that have Olympus. I got an OM one. I owned an OM one when I was well. A few years younger than I am now. <laughs> very, very, I'll lie and say it's a few years younger. Uh, but I got one on the back of me I, I, that I bought uh, again to reminisce about my uh, my youth. I, I was the worst photo person being young because I had no no, no brand. Uh, I didn't stick to any one brand. I bounced around all the time. I mean, I probably had more Minoltas than anything else, but I mean, I jumped around. I had Fujikas. I had Olympus. I had, you know, Pentax. I had, you know, I mean, I was always like, oh, that's on sale. And as I used to say, oh, on sale with the 50 millimeter, you know, 1.8. I got to get it, you know. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. Randall listed a whole bunch of companies here for those filters. I never heard of HADA, H-A-I-D-A. -A. Yeah. But with film cameras, it was a lens that did 90% of the work. The camera just held the film. I've heard, obviously heard of Coke, and they've been around forever. Yeah. Got some of them still. French, weren't they? Yeah, I used to, I used to buy their filters a lot. Back in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, about that. Hey, Greg, have a good night, man. Glad you uh, came on the show. Um, Greg Corker, that is. Yes. Uh, I don't want to get confused with Greg Wilson. Greg Corker, have a good night. Thank you very much for coming on. Well, yeah, it looks like I got a lot of filter brands I can look up, but, man, I'd hate to have to spend 300 bucks for an ND filter. But variable and these are just, just two polarizers twisting together anyway. I like mm -hmm. polarizers. I'm not a big ND fan. I don't see much use or anything apart from a protective filter. Protective filters are good. I've lost a few. Stones hit well, them and things. Yeah, I, I, I only use the ND filter for, well, I shouldn't say only. I use, I use it for waterfalls. Yeah. Use it for waterfalls. And I and you you almost need to have it for video unless you're just shooting the first few hours of the morning light. Then it gets too bright out, and you need to you need to knock it down. You need to knock it down a lot. <laughs> Even for waterfalls, there's too many blurry waterfalls out there. You don't. I don't like them that blurry anymore. I've seen too many. Yeah. Well, there was there was a guy who, who at a craft fair, and it was kind of neat. And uh, there's a there is a beach area down here that you can only get to by boat. You know, you got to pay pay the fee, mm -hmm. like a tourist thing. You got to you okay. got to pay a fee. I've never been to it. I want to go to it. Um, you have to be real careful when you go because of the tides, because you could actually get trapped on the island when the tide is high. Ooh. So you have to time it right. But anyway. The whole, the whole, the beach doesn't have people laying on it, sunning on the beach. The beach is really uh, for photographers. The beach is is all huge pieces of driftwood. Oh, wow! So I met this photographer that would go there, and and I looked at his images, and I says, "Yeah, you're using an ND filter, blah blah blah," because he would he would get the ocean waves coming in to the driftwood where they were very milky, you know, very, very soft. And you, and you had, you know, the sky, the sky in the background or a sunrise in the background with the milky way, milky uh, uh, waves coming in with the piece of driftwood on the beach. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pictures. And uh, I would, I would love to try to emulate 
uh, some of the shots he got. They were really, really nice. But uh, but that that sounds like an interesting place. Uh, yeah, I have not have not um, done a trip there yet. Um, it's probably two hours from my house, and then you got to you know pay for the boat to go out. And hope that they that they come and pick you up. <laughs> well, and, and for sure, all the texture on the driftwood, correct? You, for yeah. sure, there is a lot of potential there. <laughs> yeah, the, this place that I have that have been going to, at the this high altitude lake is above the tree line. But as you cross to the to the tree line, you get through an area where there are some bristle cone pine. Those are also very interesting. So mm -hmm. I had done some photography with a friend many years ago, but that's a good thing. When you change your camera system and say, oh, I'm going to try to do the same photo, but now with this new equipment that has more versatility, correct? So, uh, so I, I have been trying to get there uh, to get some great photos. And I, I know where the trees are, correct? And those trees are thousand year old, so it's not that they're going to go away. <laughs> Well, if they if they haven't gone away yet, they probably aren't going to exactly. go away. <laughs> they are very photogenic those uh, bristle cone pines because they are all so all these driftwood probably has the same characteristic, right? They are all twisted with a lot of texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I love driftwood. I mean, I used to there. There's a there's a few people like they have a they call it arts in the park uh, down here oh. and. and it's really, really nice because they'll have people that met one guy that one, he takes wonderful photos of, of wildlife and birds and stuff. But what he does is he, he, he doesn't sell the photos. He mm. takes the photos and then he does paintings of the birds and he does the, he doesn't do the paintings on uh, canvas. He does it on some other material that's very, very smooth. Okay. And when he does the paintings, they look, they look exactly like a photo of the bird. The detail wow. is so phenomenal that you would swear it's a photograph. So he takes the photographs and he says, well, what I do is I take the photographs and then because I'm, I'm doing the painting, I can make the background anything I want because oh, I'm, I'm a painter. I could I could change the background, and then I have the pictures to use as a reference, so I accurately paint the rendition of particular birds, and I can put as many birds in the photo as I want. And but but I make sure I'm technically accurate with the birds because I've taken photos of the birds from all different angles, and. Uh, and the and the oh, the paintings were so phenomenal, but there are so many talented people uh, oh, cool. at these craft shows. You know, uh, you know, one guy one guy gets driftwood, and then he, um, you know, he puts he does you know uh, where people make fish out of out of metal, you know oh, that you can hang on the wall. But he he makes it and he has it where. It, it's hanging off the wood, you know, hanging off the wood in different places, and you're hanging on the wall. Oh, okay. uh, but uh, it, I, I just love watching what how creative people can be, not just with photography, but just with uh, you know other ways of expressing uh, art. Um, it, it's it's really a lot of fun. I like going to those kind of shows. And uh, yeah, there are a few people now. I now I remember they're talking about uh, case. Case sells a, a multi-filter multi kit with, that you can buy that I think has their own drop-in holder for their filters, if I remember right. Um, I forgot about that. Mm. I like uh, the Canon one where the adapter has a filter in it, a drop-in. The FTZ version of their adapter has a drop-in filter in it. Wow. I thought that was a clever idea. Ooh, 399.95. <laughs> I don't use filters. Now you know why I don't use filters much anymore. Well, I, I shouldn't do this after what I just spent for that fluid head. Yeah. <laughs> that, 
Yeah, I got I got fluid in my head, all right, because to buy that. I got a lot of fluid on the temporal lobe, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay, so so Yeah, so it's I for the eight hundred and the four hundred two eight T C V R, yeah. And then how you rotate them? Do you have the they have a little wheel on top of the Holder? Well, the, the polarizer would have a, would have where part of it sticks, or where it has a wheel to move it, if it's a polarizer. And yes, obviously that's the what ND, they found out. ND just dropped in. The uh, fluid, the fluid head retail. Oh wow, 20, 12 to twenty-four. The um, the old, fourteen to twenty-four. The old one had to have a special. <laughs> a special adapter. And, so how, how many millimeters that one? Uh, Sir? So that's what? Uh, 150 that's what How many millimeters? I think it's about 200. Okay. Wow. It's probably at least 150. I'm not sure. So that would fit in, in, in front of the... <laughs> it's a one-off for the 24. Uh, that's almost like the size of a Frisbee. <laughs> you only get... You only get one lens you can use it on. Yeah, unfortunately, that that fluid head retail retail oh. at B and H is like six oh eight, and uh, I bought it directly from Manfrotto for five fifty, uh, and got free shipping and no tax. I like Manfrotto, but they're not cheap. No, no. I got three or so four. Of them. It was very. It was a very painful purchase. Like I said, you could buy a low end Manfrotto that goes on sale at B and H for 150 bucks, but you're probably not going to be happy with it because it's just too limiting, lim limited. And uh, I think if you want, well, put it this way: if you want continuous counterbalance, a continuous counterbalance mechanism, you're gonna, there's no way you're gonna get that for under 500 dollars. You're gonna be 500 and up. Uh, and there are some fluid heads out there that cost thousands of dollars. So yeah, by no means is it the most expensive fluid head you could buy. But it's the uh, it was my uh, it was my compromise. I think it's a good choice, but they're not cheap. Yeah, yeah. I think you have solid legs and a very a very flexible head. Yeah. Not necessarily from the same company. Yeah, it's. Uh, there are so many choices out there. I mean, my God, you know, it's like, uh, like I said, I don't review, I don't review something I don't own and use when I do a review. If I own it, I use it, I'll review it. Now, I'll be honest with you, if I own it, I use it, and I hate it, I don't talk about it. <laughs> because my job isn't, my job isn't to destroy a company. Or just that's, destroy a brand, you know. That's a nice, good one, Manfrotto, with a nice, really right stuff head. <laughs> the fifty-five, nice big one. That I'm weighs a big bit. head. That, that weighs a bit. It does. <laughs> I got a traveler one, but I don't like it. It's too light. But, um, and I got the big brother over there. The big when it goes up to about eight foot. The thing that you got to watch out for with the with the continuous continuous um, fluid heads there is the um, continuous counterbalance fluid heads is they've got different ranges at different price points. So there's there's um, I think I'm just guessing. I'd have to look it up. I think this one's from zero pounds to seventeen, maybe. And now there's a they'll give you two two weight ratings. They'll give you a weight rating for how much the gear can weigh. Because you could also use this tripod where you just put it. You just put the the lens on it, and you put it in position and you lock it where you're not using the counterbalance mechanism at all. So you may you may have a maximum load rating. Let's I'll just make up a number. You may have a, a maximum load rating of twenty five or thirty pounds, but your counterbalance low your counterbalance rating is going to be lower. 
Hmm. So if you want to counterbalance it, mine might be zero to 17 pounds. Then I think they make one that's that starts at eight pounds and maybe it goes to 25. But the problem is if you go to the eight to 25 and let's say you were going to put a Sony, a small, lighter weight Sony A7R4 or A7R5 with a, I don't know, say a 70 to 200 lens or something. Okay. You probably wouldn't meet that eight minimum eight pound you buy the, 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 the next one up, you, if you don't meet the eight pound um, minimum counterweight figure, it's useless to you. It's exactly. not going to, it's not going to work. It's just, you're, you're just going to basically use it to adjust it, lock it, take a picture. So, so, but, so Jeff, if you heard, if you mentioned Scott, one of the things that he mentioned in his videos is this ability, he called it uh, lens drift. Correct, which is when you lock it and you tighten it up, that it doesn't move. Correct, so you have it in position, you lock it, because that that happened even with the best quality uh, of the of the gimbals. Correct, that you that when you okay, I'm in position, I want to lock it, and then you try to lock it, and then your image is not what you wanted. It's either up or above. Correct, so you have to calculate how much of a some sort of drift happen as you lock the system. But apparently with these fluid heads, right? One of the characteristics is that you can lock it and the image will stay where you are focused. Right? Yeah, you don't even have to lock it because if you have a good counterbalance system and you and you balance everything right, let's let's say let's let's say um, you tilt the you tilt the lens down like this. Mm -hmm. If you balance it right, it's not going to move at all. You don't even have to use the lock, mm. okay? Because you, in a way, you don't want to use the lock. If you're doing video, if it's you're cool. if you're using it for a still mode, yeah, lock it. If you're using it for video, your subject's moving. You don't want to lock it. You want to aim it down, but next thing you know, you might be like this or like this, exactly. you know, and you're moving it side to side. So you want to, but the but the thing that you could do. If, if you're having a little trouble balancing it, but you don't want to hang your hat on doing it this way, is you adjust the drag. You, you adjust the friction control a little bit. And so let's say you put it down, and then you, and then you count to 10, and ever so slightly, ever so slightly, it's moving, and you're sitting there pulling your teeth out, saying you're pulling your hair out, saying, I've been fooling around with this for a half hour trying to get it absolutely perfect. Just just change your friction a little bit, and it ain't gonna move. You know, <laughs> it ain't gonna move. Six oh one got the same problem as this one. No Arca Swiss plate. It has no okay. Arca Swiss. It just has the Manfrotto plate. I've got a a small rig plate and a Arca Swiss on mine because it used to drive me nuts changing the 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 plate every time. Yeah, I gotta I get saying, a. I know I Scott. The with these. Scott Scott Keys had a had a setup where he bought a probably bought a separate. Well, I don't know if he bought a separate one. He had the Manfrotto plate, and then and then he just mounted an Arca Swiss plate on top of it, you know, with the knob to tighten it up. And I, and he said in his videos, he says, "Well, I left the link below for all the stuff I used, and I went through the three videos that he did." And I couldn't find the link for that oh, part. Yeah. So I don't know what he bought, but um well, that's just a, a small rig plate with a normal clamp on it. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, which yeah, makes right. it more convenient. Um yeah, yeah, I'd like to find that, but uh I, I think he mentioned it again to, uh, when he put his videos on Friday. I think he mentioned on Friday too again. You should ask him because he he, he, that's one of the reasons that he talked about uh, being a hybrid shooter that you oh, are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I told, I told him what I was considering buying. And I said, I don't know if you plan on reviewing. I mean, there's, there's, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of, of these. He's never going to do them all. So I, I just said, this is what I'm considering buying. And it's a, it's a continuous uh, type. 
of counterbalance. And he said, oh, well, then he mentioned some other brand that was a continuous type. And he says, well, I should try to get the two of those and, and talk about those. But I don't know, you know when he's going to do it. So I, I said, oh, I'm not going to wait for him to. I went and I watched some other videos that other people did on that model. And I read a lot of reviews about it, and I decided that it sounded like the right thing for me. But, um, yeah. you know, it's uh, I will do a video on it, but I'm going to wait until I've used it a few times before I before I do it. And plus, I'm supposed to be slowing down on my videos. Remember, I got everybody asking me to do videos. Exactly. I, I'm just telling everybody I'm trying to back off on that a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> but but you you should do that uh, you know turtle or the nest if you ever manage to get one where they actually get some of the the little the little ones out of the nest that that sounds like an interesting topic mm. for you Jeff. Oh yeah, I I mean I I was very disappointed that there wasn't one or two. Because um, the pr the problem is with the the problem is the turtles. 90 probably 90 percent of the time the turtles hatch in the moonlight that's right they hatch you know midnight very of them. very very or very 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 early in the morning midnight one in the morning two in the morning type of thing and and most of these beach areas especially if the nests are like in a state park well the state parks are closed you can't go on the beach areas in the state park and and what they do in the on the um on, on the Myrtle Beach, um, let's say where the where the tourists where the hotels are against the uh, the ocean um, in the tourist zone, it's not safe for the for the nests to be there, and so they're monitoring. And when the turtles lay the eggs, okay, they remove them and they move them to another location that's not where they're not going to get harmed by people running around on the beach. Oh, and 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 doing normal beach activities. So they, okay. I don't know exactly where they move them to, but I was told that anything that's laid near all the hotels, that all those eggs get moved somewhere else. And oh. um, whereas the ones in the state park, what they'll do is they they normally have a. Last year they had like a mat on top of the sand and then they had a cage above that so that raccoons couldn't get in there and dig out the because the raccoons will will try to dig out the sand and and it eat is. the eggs. So so what you see on the top of the sand is a cage, but that the bars of that cage sink way into the way into the sand uh, so that the raccoons can dig and dig and dig and they can't get in there and get at them. Uh, so, like I said, when they, they wait, I think I think they got to wait four to seven days, I think, after after they know that. The, so they take the cage before they hatch? Well, the, 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 the slits in the cage are narrow enough where the turtles can get through it. Oh, OK, OK. But not but not wide enough where a raccoon could get in there. OK. And. Uh, and 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 they and they have people that volunteer to do that that monitor the uh, the nests. And once in a once in a rare rare time, you might get one that might hatch at sunrise. Okay. But it's so so rare, and you would have to like go every day, know where all the nests are, and maybe before you croak, you might see it happen. <laughs> So, so, so the the ones that you were filming or videoing were after they know a particular nest nest hatch. Correct. They still look for stragglers. Correct. Correct. There could be uh, actually my my the guy I shoot with uh, Bob from Bob Our Photos. His wife went to one okay. like two weeks ago, and there were eight that that didn't make it out. So okay. they, they picked them all out. They dug it all out. They had eight baby turtles. They then they put them on the on the beach and <laughs> basically watched them all go in the water. And it's like, man, you know, 
Of course, I don't see it when I do it, but she goes with no camera. She doesn't use it, doesn't have a camera, and she gets to see it. So I don't know. <laughs> That's it's that's it. I mean, I I would love to get that kind of shot and basically just plop myself down in the sand, lay in the sand, you know, eye level with the turtle, and mm. get it get it going down. And and luckily, if you had the sun, if you had the sun there above the water, it would be even nicer. But then you're now I'm asking for a lot of wonderful things to happen. Uh, no, no, for sure. You know. Oh, Jim, you're taking off. Have a good one, man. Go out there and get, hey, go out there and enjoy your 800. I hope you send, hey, send a picture. Uh, send a picture taken with that 800 that you just got for next month's photo review on uh, September 2nd. I'll remind you. I'll remind you. And, uh, Greg, Chuck's doing fairly, you know, he's doing pretty good. I mean, he's, uh, He's fully mobile. He's getting around. He's changing cat litter. He's <laughs> uh, he's not happy with the food he has to eat. Um, Who is? You know, he, he has a he has a few a few things that have to improve, but he's uh, you know he's not in dire straits health wise where you know his health's at risk or anything bad's going to happen to him in terms of that. <clears throat> it's just that he's not able to do his show right now, but. Uh, he, he is improving every day and, um, that, that's the main thing. And, uh, he, hopefully, hopefully he, um, you know, I'm hoping he gets back as soon as he can, but at the same time, I don't want him to, uh, to rush it. And then sometimes you try to rush a recovery, then, then you get worse. You, you take two steps forward and three steps backwards. So you gotta be yeah. careful. I hope one day he surprises us when he joins one of these and then there's the official handover back. Yeah. 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 Jeff, back to the little squares, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to take a while. You know, it's like, yeah. uh, it's going to take a while. you know, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll kindly move to the smaller, uh, to the smaller uh, screen. No problem. Leave it to the expert. You know, um, Yeah. So let's see what else. Do we, so, I mean, that's, that's, you know, I, we talked about a little bit of what's coming out. We talked about, um, Filters, actually, tripods, heads. tripods, heads, the Hasselblad medium format coming out, a couple Sony cameras. Uh, the, uh, uh I mentioned that that TT artisan hundred millimeter two to one macro that I talked about last week. I, I'm watching that. I'm on the uh, the list for when that becomes available. I am going to buy it, try it out, and write a review about it. Uh, to try price, it. price point, it's hard to mm. hard to not buy it for the yeah, price. I've done that before. Then got caught. Um, and uh, and the ZF. Hey, you know, I think within within two weeks we're gonna. Mm -hmm. two, two weeks or less we'll know exactly what it's going to be like and uh, i think and we will have the full specs out there and we'll know when they're going to start satisfying orders um we are at two o'clock in the morning we're down to 18 people i think we should probably call it a night um so that we can get some rest i have to cut the lawn in the morning And I want to not chop my feet off. <laughs> so thank, thank you, gentlemen, and everyone who was uh, was a guest on the panel tonight. Uh, can't do it without you. Appreciate it very, very much. Um, and I thank the obviously everybody in the chat that came came in. I think we had a I think we had a pretty good discussion tonight. Um, And I think even though uh, we were prodded a little about looking at the chat, I think we did a pretty good job at following the chat. Uh, It's not easy, is it? Yeah, I, I don't feel that we really ignored anybody. I, I think we no, did a good job. Um, you know, we're, we're going to miss one here or there, and you guys have to forgive us for that. But, I mean, if 
If you want a show where, I mean, some people do it, you know, you want a show where you just read everything everybody says and you answer, read it, answer, read it, answer. Well, we, we try to mix it up and have both. And some people don't mix it up at all. And some people don't talk to the audience at all. So we try to be somewhere in the middle. No, no, I, not, I, 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 Jeff, I mean, uh, you obviously bring continuity to the to the talking, correct? So that's why Roy and David and myself we're a little bit watching uh, the, the the chat, correct? So, yeah. so so that's uh, I think that's I think that's what we're trying to tell Wayne. But you can the person that is basically the narrator and they're. The mm -hmm. director of the orchestra cannot be doing both, <laughs> correct? So no, I mean, worry, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I am look, I am looking. I do see some of it, but I don't see all of it because uh, it's like uh, maybe I'm not good at chewing gum and walking at the same time. What can I say? Right? You do the best yeah, you look, can do. Look at boss man here. <clears throat> we can probably ignore him anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, we looked to see who it was, and we said, "Ah, it's just Tim." Well, well, it's it's just Tim. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for that. Yeah, I cl I clicked on you just as you disappeared. You can ask my witnesses. I clicked on you. Is that right? And 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 I tried. I didn't see you right away. I clicked on you, and you were gone. You have and the two seconds. Uh, it was kind of like uh, you know um, the Titanic, you know where. She reaches out to grab him, and she just misses, and he goes away. <laughs> she not she tried, but it just didn't work out. Uh, but hey, everybody in the chat, thank you very much. Have a great night. Uh, enjoy life. Capture some of it. Get out there. Get some images for the next photo review on September second. Start sending me pictures. Start sending me the pictures. So uh, we're not getting them all three days before the show. And um, and Mozman, I hope that you do not have any water issues and that you don't have a Sharknado event where you end up with sharks coming into your house due to uh, flooding. Uh, so l let's hope everything is safe and sound and, and all your precautions... Uh, did not need to be exercised, let's say. Exactly. Um, All those there in the in California, please take care. Yep, take it easy. We're calling it a night, folks. Thanks again. Let's see.